now called to order. And before I acknowledge the senators present uh, today, uh, let me just go over the preliminaries. Uh, for the record, the Committee on Basic Education, as provided under the amendment, amended Rule 10, Section 13 of the Rules of the Senate, has the following jurisdiction. All matters directly and principally relating to early childhood care and education, preschool, kindergarten, elementary, and secondary education, science high schools, except the Philippine science high school system, sports high schools, teachers and students, welfare, teacher education, and competency, non-formal, informal, indigenous learning systems, special needs education, and community adult education, inclusive education, scholarship, grants, subsidies, and incentives to deserving students, the national language, and the establishment and maintenance of libraries. Uh, just to take note, uh, the Senate um, separated arts and culture from this committee. So this committee will exclusively deal and tackle uh, legislative matters concerning basic education. So uh, just take note to our uh, counterparts. Pursuant to the same, the committee is composed of 15 members. During the plenary session last August 16, 2022, the following members were elected. Yours truly as a chairperson and Senator Francis Chis Escudero as the vice chairperson. As members, Senator Sani Angara, Senator Nancy Binay, Senator Pia Caetano, Senator uh, Bato de la Rosa, Senator Jingoy Ercito Estrada, uh, Senator Bongo, Senator Aimi Marcos, Senator Robin Hood Padilla, who's with us today, Senator Grace Poe, Senator Tol Tolentino, Senator J.V. Ercito, Senator Mark Villar, Senator Risa Ontiveros. And the following officers of the Senate are ex officio members, Senator Lauren Legarda, Senator Joel Villanueva, and Senator Coco Pimentel. The Committee on, and before I continue, let me again recognize the fiscal presence of Senator Robin Hood Padilla. And uh, with us virtually is Senator Binay, Senator Cayetano, and Senator Tolentino. And uh, I wish uh, Senator Binay the best of health. Uh, I heard the uh, shocking news this morning, but I wish you all the best. The Committee on Basic Education will adopt and subscribe to the pertinent provisions of the rules of the Senate and the rules of procedure governing increase in aid of legislation as the rules of the committee. I'd like to welcome a motion from any senator in that uh, direction. Any motion from our colleagues? Move, Mr. Chair. To adopt and subscribe. I move to, to adopt and subscribe to the pertinent provisions of the rules of the Senate and the rules of procedure governing inquiries in aid of legislation as the rules of the committee. Any second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none. The rules of the Senate and the rules of procedure governing inquiries in aid of legislation are hereby adopted as the rules of the Senate on basic education. The rules shall, shall guide the operation and conduct of meetings, hearings, and investigation of the committee. So with that, um, let me also recognize the virtual presence of Senator Francis Tolentino. So with that, um, let me direct the committee secretary to acknowledge our guest and resource persons uh, for this morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. For the organizational meeting and briefing this morning, we'd like to acknowledge our resource persons. First, from the Department of Education, we acknowledge the virtual presence of uh, Vice President Sara Z. Duterte, the physical presence of uh, Yusek Epimaco Vidensing, Yusek Annalyn M. Sevilla, Yusek Rev. C. A. Escobedo, Director Roger Masapol, and Director Laila P. Ariola. Also, uh, also logged in from DepEd, 
is USEC Gloria Humamil Mercado and ASEC Dexter Agelblad. From the Early Childhood Care and Development Council, or ECCD, ECCD Council, the OIC Office of the Vice Chairperson and Execu Executive Director, Mr. Romel J. Isip, is here with us. Also logged in is the Dr. Teresita G. Insong, Insong, Senior Consultant. From the National Academy of Sports, logged in is Professor Josephine Joy B. Reyes and Attorney Denia Gracia J. Uy Anastasio. From the National Book Development Board, here with us is Executive Director Charisse Aquino Tugade and Director Anthony John R. Balisi. From the National Council for Children's Television or NCCT, here with us is Dr. Luis P. Gatmaitan and Executive Director Desideria M. Atienza. Last but not the least, from the Philippine High School for the Arts, we have the Executive Director, Prof. Josue Greg M. Zuniega and Mr. Ariel D. Austria. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Committee Secretary. Uh, once again, uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, welcome to the Senate. Pagpasensyahan nyo na, amoy Clorox ang buong Senate. Uh, nag -ano ho ngayon, nag disinfect because we have a few senators who uh, tested positive this last few days. So our Senate President uh, immediately called for the disinfection of the entire building. But don't worry, I'm, I'm negative this morning. I tested negative and I believe Senator Padiles also negative. Opo, mahal na chairman, tayo po ay negative din, alhamdulillah. Yeah, so wala hong, uh, ano tayo, wala, hindi ho tayo dapat uh, kabahan. To the members of the Committee on Basic Education, the Vice President and the Secretary of the Department of Education, Her Excellency Sarah Z. Duterte, members of the Executive Committee, and the other officials of the DepEd, our teachers, parents, learners, and the rest of our stakeholders, a pleasant day to you all. I assume leadership of the Senate Committee on Basic Education, Arts and Culture in July 2019 with, the, with a legislative policy that focused on equitable access to education and quality education. Such policy became the trademark of our legislative initiatives in, 20, in the 18th Congress as this committee passed landmark laws including Republic Act Number 11510 or the Alternative Learning System Act, Republic Act Number 11650, also known as the Instituting a Policy of Inclusion and Services for Learners with Disabilities in Support of Inclusive Education, Republic Act Number 11713 or the Excellence in Teacher Education Act, and Republic Act Number 11899 or, or the Second Congressional Commission on Education Act. The complement, to complement these major legislative reforms, this committee also passed two critical laws that would have an impact on building the character of Filipino learners and giving Filipino athletes robust training in world-class facilities with holistic quality education. These are Republic Act Number 11476 or the Good Manners and Right Conduct and Values Education Act and Republic Act Number 11470, or the National Academy of Sports Act, which were both enacted in June 2020. This 19th Congress, our committee will continue pursuing a legislative agenda for quality and excellence in the education sector. The current state of basic education in the country, recently being described as an education crisis, and further exacerbated by the massive learning and long-term economic losses brought about by the pandemic school closures, poses an urgent need for, legis for the legislature to intensify its role in crafting policy recommendations and strategic solutions and initiating complementary and remedial legislation to avert such crises and improve the quality of basic education. It is my hope that with the cooperation of all education stakeholders, this committee will be able to perform its goal in helping to achieve quality in the basic education sector as we prioritize the passage of urgent measures on academic recovery and improving basic competencies in reading, mathematics, and science, conducting a joint congressional oversight review of the K-12 program, and convening the, the EDCOM-2, which will undertake a comprehensive national assessment and evaluation of the Philippine education sector's performance in order to recommend transformative, concrete, and targeted reforms to make Filipinos globally competitive in both education and labor markets. I hope, 
I can count on your support as we embark on a new fight for the best possible education for the younger generation. Marami maraming salamat po. With that, I would like to ask our uh, senators if they have any opening statements. Senator Padilla? Uh, nais ko lamang pong uh, batiin ang chairman sa napakaganda po ninyong talumpati. At uh, ito po ay talagang uh, pinag-uukulan po ninyo ng uh, atensyon ang uh, nangyaring pananalanta ng pandemya at ang tinamaan po nito ay ang edukasyon ng ating mga kabataan. At uh, narinig ko rin po yung patungkol sa pagsasaayos ng uh, K-12. <laughs> Napakahalaga po nun. At uh, siyempre po, katulad po ninyo, ako po ay uh, nananawagan din sa ating uh, mga kasama sa edukasyon na atin pong uh, suportahan ang sinasabi ng uh, chairman po. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Padilla. Uh, Senator Pia and then Senator Binay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. Good good morning. Good morning also to our Vice President, uh, the Secretary of um, the, the uh, Department of Education. Um, Mr. Chairman, very short statement. I am extremely excited about the opening of face-to-face -face classes. As uh, the Chairman knows, I have been pushing for this um, months after we went into um, uh, uh, into the pandemic. Our children have suffered greatly because of the closure. Uh, there are no ways to really make up for the loss of time. Um, to a certain extent, it was beyond their control. But to another extent, I regret that uh, we did not move fast enough to really give them uh, the opportunity to go back to school. And now that, that uh, mo many private schools have opened, I am very happy to see uh, anyone who has young children, who has friends with young children, uh, the joy in their face is apparent. Just to see their friends, their mental well-being um, is um, addressed and to be able to understand their teachers more because of the face-to-face -face setting uh, is, 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 um, uh, cannot be compared no, with, with uh, the, the online um, uh, environment that sadly has been the reality for almost two years, Mr. President. So I'm looking forward to the opening of uh, the public school as well. And um, i just like to put on record, um, I have not heard any report, but I just wanted the uh, Secretary to know that um, the Senate put in $2.6 billion for the, to cover the expenses of the implementation of face-to-face. -face, no? So, wala naman ako narinig na, na may problema on that note, but of course, we'd like to hear if, if there are. Um, but th that amount has, has, I hope, it has been made available to the department and to the schools. And we also put in additional $100 million for public school health facilities which includes hand washing. Not sure if it would be covered in the presentation, but uh, one of the recommendations of both DepEd and DOH was to improve the, the health facilities in the schools, mm -hmm. no, yung hand washing and even the bathroom facilities, which are sorely lacking in many schools. So we would be happy to help in that regard, um, uh, given the, the clear uh, um, scenario that we are facing. Um, there's much more to say, but I will I will hold my um, I will I will hold my my comments, which really are are comments from the last few years uh, that we've been um, overseeing the the development of the education sector. Uh, suffice it to say that we are looking forward to the opening of school. And one more point, um, as your chairman of the committee on the SDGs, innovation and futures thinking, it is always my job to ensure that we see the bigger picture. Uh, I'd like to put on record that um, Secretary Carl Chua uh, of the previous administration had mentioned that 1.9 trillion pesos in losses are incurred each year because of the closure of school. I'll repeat, uh, 1.9 trillion, because the schools are, tech are actually economic hubs. So when the schools were closed, all the food outlets, the carinderia, the carts that sell, you know, whatever snacks the kids eat and uh, the small suppliers, the school supplies, ball pen, notebook, paper, and all, all up the supply chain were all affected. So this, the opening of schools would also um, be good for our economy, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Anyway, on that note, I will end here and look forward to the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. With the indulgence of Senator Binay and Senator Francis, 
uh, we would like to uh, call on first, uh, with your permission, uh, Vice President uh, Sara Duterte, and we're very honored and privileged that uh, she's with us today, virtually. Uh, she is uh, performing three jobs at all at the same time, as our Vice President, as our Secretary of Education, and as a mother, also monitoring the opening of uh, classes this coming Monday. So um, we call on um, Vice President uh, Sara Duterte. Uh, VP, you're on mute. Vice President, as our Secretary of Education, and as a mother, so monitoring the opening of uh, classes this coming Monday. So uh, we call on um, Vice President uh, Sara Duterte. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Tolentino and Senator Binay. I'm now. Yes. yes, BP, we can see, we can, we can hear you and see you. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Senator Binay and uh, Senator Tolentino. Sorry, I have to go first because I have another equally important meeting for education at uh, 11 a.m. Uh, and get well soon to uh, Senator Binay. To our distinguished members of uh, this committee headed by the staunch supporter for education, Senator Sherwin Gachalian, my team from the Department of Education, ladies and gentlemen, my buntag sa inyong tanan, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Allow us to thank Senator Win and the members of the Committee on Basic Education, Arts and Culture for inviting us in this Senate hearing. We in the Department of Education are grateful for this opportunity to share with you our preparations for the school opening and to gather your suggestions and advice for the Department of Education. We are pleased to inform you that the, despite the challenges we are ready for this year's school opening as articulated in the Department Order 34 or the school calendar and activities for school year 2022-2023. Since I assumed the office last July 1 of this year, we immediately prepared and put the task at my execom to focus on ensuring a smooth opening of the in-person classes come August 2022. Nandyan pa rin po yung mga problema ng mga nakaraang taon Pero hindi po tayo titigil sa paghanap ng mga solusyon sa mga problema na yan sa susunod na anim na taon. With all your help in the Senate, I think we will be able to turn around the quality of basic education in our country in the next six years. Despite the long-standing issues that DepEd faces, especially on the shortage of classrooms and teachers and the effects, of calamities such as typhoons and the recent earthquakes, we are doing everything to address these within our means together with your support and the entire Filipino community. We take comfort with the knowledge that our frontliners in the field, our teachers, school heads, school division superintendents, and regional directors are making their utmost efforts to allow our learners to return safely in schools by August 2022. In fact, many of our private schools have already opened last uh, July and are continuing to open every day before August 2022. Consequently, as part of the transition to in-person classes, blended learning shall still be implemented and we are continuing to study the implementation of blended learning as a permanent mode of instruction for basic education. However, come November 2, the full implementation of five days in-person classes is expected as well for all public and private school, schools. We assure our parents that as we participate in the Transforming Education Summit 2022 in the United Nations, Hopefully, with the presence of uh, President Marcos in the Leaders' Day, we will be doubling our efforts to provide your children the kind of education they deserve. Tagan salamat. Maraming salamat. Mayang buntag usab sa inyong tanan. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President uh, Sara. And uh, thank you very much for assuring the public of uh, our 
a smooth and safe opening of schools. Uh, we're all waiting for that. And uh, the survey will show that almost as high as 90% of our parents want to open our schools. But thank you. Thank you very much for your, your presence. Mr. Chair, permission to leave. Yes, yes, VP. Uh, you're represented ably by uh, the whole team. I can, I can all see them here physically. So uh, we'll be fielding questions and, and uh, getting briefings from them. Yes, and we truly appreciate advice and suggestions uh, from the honorable senators. Thank you, Senator Pia, Senator uh, Francis, Senator Binay, and Senator Gachalian. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. At sa oras po ninyo para sa basic education ngayong araw na ito. Thank you. Thank you very much. With that, we uh, uh, continue with our opening statements. We call on Senator Binay. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, magandang umaga sa ating uh, Vice President Sara Duterte. And maraming salamat dun sa concern sa atin. Um, to the whole DepEd family, um, Mr. Chairman, if you remember it correctly, yung last, uh, two years ago, Yung first time na tayo nag tayo nag quarantine, it was also a basic education uh, hearing. At ngayon naman, first hearing na basic education, eh, uh, uh, naka quarantine tayo alat pero positive na. Uh, but moving forward, um, just a short manifestation, uh, Mr. Chairman. Alam nat, uh, I think. Um, during the previous Congress, we've attended almost all your committee hearings. And together with Senator Pia Caetano, we've been pushing for the face-to-face uh, -face, um, classes of our students. And finally, nandito na tayo ngayon. Uh, kumbaga, sigurado na na matutuloy na itong face-to-face. -face. Gusto lang din natin malaban kung gano kahanda ang ating DepEd family pagdating dito sa uh, pagpapasok ng uh, pagpasok ng ating mga estudyante na face-to-face -face na yung module. And um, I think malaking advantage din na alam naman natin na napakalaki ng problema uh, ng ating educational system even before the pandemic uh, malaki na yung problema, lalo pa itong uh, nadagdagan because of COVID-19. But sa aking tingin, the mere fact that the Vice President of the Philippines is on top of our uh, problems in education, eh, malaking uh, kumbaga, tulong ito para unti-unti na natin mabigyan ng solusyon ang problema natin sa edukasyon. Yun lang po, Mr. Chairman, and maraming salamat. Thank you, Senator Nancy, and the uh... I can attest that Senator Pia and Senator Nancy Binay were never absent in any of our basic education hearings. And uh, they were also staunch um, uh, supporters of uh, going back to face-to-face -face classes. So uh, later on, we'll hear the preparation of DepEd. Of course, uh, we all want to go back to face-to-face, -to -face, but we also want to see and be comforted with the uh, preparation uh, conducted by DepEd, so we would like to hear that later on. Uh, before we go into the meat of our discussion, let me call on Senator Francis Tolentino for his opening remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have no more opening statement. Uh, I understand you have a full load today, so we just let the other resource person say the piece, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Senator uh, Francis. Uh, so we go to the meat of our uh, discussion today. We have two Mr. items on... Mr. Chairman. Mr. Ah, yes, Chairman. Senator Pia. Go yeah. ahead. Just a clarification, ano, kasi when I was reading my notes, um, I know that we pushed for $2.6 billion for the uh, safe uh, opening of the classes, but my staff just informed me that na move pala yon sa unprogram. Baka mamaya maghanap si Secretary at yung team niya, no? Nung amount na yun, uh, eh, yun na nga. Um, but it, it still has a chance, no, of being available to them because it's in the unprogram funds. So, um, just to just to clarify that statement that I made, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the uh, veteran finance uh, person of DepEd, uh, Yusek Ann is here, so she can enlighten us yeah. later on on that uh, on that account. Okay. So, with that, uh, we have two items. Uh, one is uh, the basic education organizational meeting in which, uh, of course, DepEd uh, will uh, introduce to us the new team uh, that will uh, move our basic education uh, system. And then later on, we'll call on to the 
to the attached agencies to give a snapshot. No? A snapshot lang ho dahil uh, naamoy nyo naman ng Clorox. No? So uh, I don't think we have the luxury of time uh, to stay here for a long time. And uh, the Senate doctor actually advised me this morning to uh, try to be brief today no? so that we won't be confined in this room uh, for a very long time. So uh, we'll call on the different uh, agencies under DepEd to give us a snapshot of your plans and programs. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman? Want... Yes, Senator Binay. Oh, just a suggestion kasi I've been attending yung mga organiz organizational meetings. Can we do away yung mga sinasabi pa nila yung RA mandate, yung mga ganyan-ganyan? Can we just kumbaga go straight siguro dun sa updates, dun sa mga concerned agencies? Um, yes. Just a suggestion, Mr. Chairman. Good suggestion, Senator yes, Binay, because uh, they can... Suggestion, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, just plans and programs lang, no? what you intend to do uh, in the next six years. And then the second part will be the school opening, and we'll, uh, we want to hear from the, uh, the preparation uh, for the school opening. So with that, we I turn over the floor uh, to you, Sek uh, Densing. I think you're the designated... Uh, uh, spokesperson to introduce everyone and then after that we'll go on to the uh, different departments. Uh, maraming salamat po uh, good morning chairman ng uh, Kumite ng Pangunahing Edukasyon to all honorable members of the committee uh, a warm good morning from all of us from the Dep Ed family uh, in behalf of uh, Secretary and Vice President Saro Duterte we thank the committee for inviting us to give you a brief on what we'll be doing for the past uh, uh, one and a half months in preparation for the projected school opening on August 22, which is already this coming Monday, uh, Your Honors. Uh, uh, today we have uh, members or members of the uh, Executive Committee of the uh, DepEd. Uh, we have the Undersecretary for F Finance, uh, Yusek Ansevilia. Uh, uh, Undersecretary for Field Operations, Yusek uh, Revsi Escobedo, and Undersecretary for Legislative Affairs, uh, Yusek Revsi, uh, uh, Jared Chan, sorry, Jared Chan, and uh, members and the directors of our service and bu service bureaus. We also have this morning representatives from uh, uh, five of the touch agencies of DepEd from the Early Childhood Care and Development Council, National Book Development Board, National Council for Children's Television, Philippine High School for the Arts, and the National Academy of Sports. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, most probably before we move on to the uh, uh, to the attached agencies for the brief snapshots or updates from their from the attached agencies, we'll go directly from your instructions to update you on what we have been doing in preparation for the opening of classes on August 22. The Bible that we are holding right now. Uh, since uh, since the uh, assumption of office of the Vice President and Secretary Sara Duterte is uh, Department Order 34 Series of 2022, which is the school calendar and activities for school year 2022 to 2023. And uh, I could personally say that this the Department Order 34 was personally reviewed and the major provisions of the Department Order was written by the Vice President herself. And it was she who have mentioned that uh, we have to start with the face-to-face -face classes as this, as the previous two years uh, have already suffered a number or a large number of uh, uh, measuring, uh, measuring uh, uh, learning loss for the children uh, for the last two years. And this has been uh, seen in many studies from the local uh, academicians and of course uh, some World Bank studies that there was significant learning loss from our children. It's very critical that we go back to face-to-face -to -face learning, and this is the major provision that Department Order 34 has mentioned, that uh, we start with full face-to-face -face learning, whether private or public, starting November 2. However, so that uh, some schools, uh, specifically in the private sector, can adjust uh, going towards full in-person face-to-face uh, learning, uh, provided in Department Order 34 is that from June, August 22 to o October 31, they will still be allowed to do online uh, online uh, teaching, blended teaching, and of course, if they are, some of them are already can do this face-to-face -face teaching. For the public school, uh, as of today, we can already say that at least 65 percent of the public schools will do a full face-to-face in-person learning 
and together with some blended learning in uh, some public schools, it will go to as high as 90%. So we're only expecting around 10% will still continue with the online learning because of some challenging situations brought about by uh, lack of classrooms uh, and, of course, uh, the devastation of uh, uh, calamities, uh, especially in uh, areas in uh, the North Luzon. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the major challenge that we are experiencing right now is really the lack of classrooms. Uh, in one of our uh, management committee meetings at the DepEd, I requested our regional directors to do an actual inventory on the spot of the shortage of classrooms all over the country. And we found out, uh, based on the total, that more or less there is uh, around 91,000 shortage of classrooms, around 10% of the required classrooms uh, this country would be needing. And with this, we ask of them interventions or strategies to be able to reduce of, or zero out the shortage in, of classrooms. And part of the strategies that we will be imploring is uh, to build temporary learning spaces, uh, 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 do shifting of schedules of classes, uh, two or three shifts, uh, uh, coordination with non-government organizations, civil society organizations, and some private entities to be able to uh, uh, to be able to produce or create classrooms uh, temporarily outside of the temporary learning uh, spaces. And with that, those interventions, uh, Your Honor, we will be able to reduce by more than half the, the projected shortage from 91,000 to around 40,000. But still, uh, in the last week or so, we've been instructing our regional offices to do more interventions to zero out the potential shortages of classroom come August 22. And this is the major challenge. Uh, Your Honor, just to, to brief also the, the committee of the situation of DepEd in terms of classrooms, uh, based on the figures that we have on hand since 2015, because of the calamities that uh, we've been experiencing, the total shortage of classrooms brought about by the calamities has gone up uh, to a total budget requirement of close to 40 billion, uh, 16 billion of which is uh, most immediate. This already includes the damage created uh, by, uh, uh, by the last uh, earthquake in Abra, and of course, the uh, typhoons Odette and Agaton. Uh, and Your Honor, uh, if, you mentioned, if you heard one of the statements of the Vice President in her uh, statements in the, a few weeks back, we are in a quicksand. Because uh, every year, based on records, actual records, Your Honor, uh, calamity hit areas would create around four, five to six billion worth of damages in school facilities every year. And the uh, budget for the quick response fund for the DepEd is only two billion. So there's immediately a shortage of three billion a year. So if we, we would uh, have that kind of shortage in budget for our, for, to address the disaster stricken areas, then we are talking about 40 billion continuously growing every year. And we will not go up, go up of that quicksand if we do not address those, that shortage in funding because of uh, calamity uh, hit areas every year. Uh, right now, uh, if I may disclose also in our discussions with the uh, Department of Budget and Management, as of the previous, as, as of last week, we are expecting that DBM will only be allotting us around 5.9 billion in school buildings, new construction, 1.5 billion only for repairs, and again, around 2 billion for quick response fund. Again, uh, uh, amounts that would again uh, create uh, additional shortage in classroom year in, year out. So therefore, right now, for purposes of availability of facilities for our, for our learners, we are very much short of this. But however, more important to this, Your Honor, is our preparation to ensure that there is quality education amongst our children. So what we're addressing right now, Your Honor, is to ensure that our teachers are focusing their attention in teaching. For many years in the past, many of the complaints of our teaching personnel is that there has been a heavy load of, uh, of uh, administrative work on the part of the teacher. So that was the first thing on our mind when we assumed office uh, this July, Your Honor, and we are about we are in the process of addressing that issue by hiring more non-teaching personnel uh, to be able to declug or deburden our teachers of the administrative work. And uh, more importantly, uh, just in our recent uh, Manco meeting again, uh, we asked our 
uh, regional directors and members of and uh, our service and bureau directors to identify workload requested by many national government agencies and local government agencies that are given to the teachers. And we've already have a two-page uh, two page summary of these workloads given to our teachers not related to teaching. And we intend to communicate this to our national government agencies. We also intend to communicate to the local government units so that these uh, additional workload that they are requesting our teaching personnel will be struck out of their regular daily, uh, daily administrative work. So these are ways for us to be able to declug and deburden or deload our teachers of this uh, workload that is not related to teaching. And many of what we are doing right now, uh, Your Honor, is really to address this issue of having quality uh, and imposing standard education to our learners. And uh, we are already very uh, uh, conscious that uh, many of the international evaluation of the uh, uh, of our assessment of our children has already been fully in the negative. In fact, in the latest PISA evaluation, as you already will uh, all know, that uh, we have been evaluated last in terms of our reading comprehension and second to the last in terms of mathematics and science. And this we intend to, to address your honor. In fact, one of the directives of Secretary and Vice President Sara is for us to continue to be evaluated by, by these international evaluation and assessment uh, agencies. And we, the directive, of course, is for us to improve our placing uh, moving forward, uh, Your Honor. Um, and uh, these challenges is something that we're trying to address and we would like to address. We are now very focused on what we call management by exception, uh, focusing our attention on major issues that uh, impede the learning process of our children. Uh, the, the Vice President and our Secretary Sara was very clear on that directive. The focus of DepEd for the next six years is to improve the quality of our students, improve their learning capabilities, improve our placings in the evaluation and assessment, improve the quality and standard of our teaching personnel and adapting advanced technologies. And as mentioned earlier by the Vice President, we may look into some instances of blended learning to form part of the whole process or the whole learning process of our learners. And uh, legislation is key to this, Your, Your Honor, as part of our presentation. Uh, yeah, key legislation here is put Amendment of Republic Act 10533, which is the K-12 law. And if you look at uh, Section 4 of the K-12 law, it says there that the medium of instruction uh, spe specifically for children in K-3 is the, uh, is the uh, mother tongue. And based on the many discussions we have in the last uh, few weeks, and this was also part of the pronouncement of the President uh, Bongbong Marcos during his uh, uh, State of the Nation address, that we intend to shift uh, the, the uh, uh, initial language of instruction from uh, mother tongue to English and Filipino. Uh, in other words, Your Honor, instead of the mother tongue being the general language of instruction, we intend, or through legislation, we would want that English and Filipino be the media of instruction uh, in our learning, and the mother tongue become the exception to the rule. Because we all know that there are certain areas in the country, especially in the far-flung rural areas, that many of the communities, including their children, are not introduced to English and Filipino thereby using the mother tongue as their initial language. We can use the mother tongue as the language of instruction or initial language of instruction in that area. But in the major areas, in highly urbanized cities, uh, in the major areas and local governments in the Philippines, I would think we can already start using English and Filipinos, the media of instruction, and the mother tongue, again, as the exception to the rule. Second legislative agenda, Your Honor, is... Uh, uh, the use of the Special Education Fund, which requires an amendment to the Local Government Code. At present, Your Honor, the Local Government Code provides that the Special Education Fund would be 1% of total real property uh, taxes collected by the local government. To be able to enhance this, we are requesting legislation that this provision of the Local Government Code be amended to increase the SEF to 2% of taxes collected from real estate and expand the, the menu where this uh, special, ex, uh, special education fund will be used, most probably to include 
uh, payment of uh, salaries of teachers in the local governments. Thirdly, Your Honor, uh, and this was pronounced by the President in his State of the Nation address, is the return of the ROTC in education. However, at the present moment, Your Honor, we are in discussion with the Commission on Higher Education whether or not ROTC should be returned either in senior high school, which is in basic education, or, uh, or in, the, in the higher education. And uh, fourth and last, Your Honor, is uh, the priority legislative agenda is uh, an amendment to Republic Act 8545, which is the uh, GASPE law, uh, Government Assistance to Students, Teachers, uh, and Private Education, to which we may want to expand the financial assistance to include uh, uh, giving assistance to the elementary uh, level, uh, Your Honor. Uh, but uh, 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 part of the legislative agenda, which we just simply uh, uh, tried to discuss in the past week, Your Honor, which may also consider is that uh, I believe we are only the only country in the region, almost probably in the world, which has a which has three different agencies focusing on edu education, basic education until senior high school, uh, commission on higher education, which is uh, college education, and TESDA for vocational education. Your Honor, uh, we would want to think that uh, most probably it's time for us to study to have this trifocal uh, three bodies blended into one uh, educational agency focusing both on uh, focusing on basic education, higher education, and even uh, 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 vocational as, as being handled by one agency. And Your Honor, just for your uh, information, this is something that we're already doing right now. Uh, we're already fast-tracking all these preparations. Uh, by Monday, we, we have already done our usual Oplan Balik Escuela and Oplan uh, Brigada and the Brigada Escuela, preparing all our uh, school facilities for the opening of schools this, uh, this coming Monday. At uh, masisigurado po natin ang ating kumite at ang ating mataong bayan na ready na po ang ating ang mga eskwelahan. Meron pong uh, hamon po ito sa pagbubukas ng ating uh, eskwela pero sinisigurado po namin na itong hamon na ito ay kaya po naming bantayan at kaya po naming uh, bigyan ng tuon. At uh, sa tulong po ng ating mga kasama po sa, sa, sa Kongreso, sa Senado, sana po mabigyan tuon po natin itong mga uh, pinapanokala namin dahil sa pananaw po namin, ito ang tanging paraan para mapaganda po natin ang antas ng ating edukasyon, ang standard of education of our country. And uh, we are very focused in these areas, uh, Your Honor. This was the clear directives given to us by uh, Vice President and uh, Secretary uh, Sara Duterte. At uh, ito sa administrasyon ni Secretary Duterte, makakakita po tayo ng tunay na pagbabago sa antas ng ating edukasyon sa bansa. Ito yung tinatawag nating tunay na reforma. At uh, with your guidance, uh, Your Honors, with your experience in the sector, this is something that we look forward to. Uh, the, the, the working hand in hand between the executive and legislative to ensure that quality education, quality of our learners is improved in the next six years. Uh, Your Honor, uh, ito po ang aming uh, uh, paunang salita para po sa preparasyon namin sa pagbubukas ng klase. Handa po kaming uh, uh, sagutin ang mga katanungan nyo mamaya. Pero pansamanda lang po, Your Honor, uh, gusto na namin uh, uh, tawagin na po ang ating mga kasama sa attach agencies na magbigay ng konting uh, pagbabalangkas ng kanilang nagawa at ginagawa sa susunod. Ilang minuto lang po, simulan po natin sa representative ng Early Childhood Care and Development Council. Uh, Yusek, before we go with the uh, uh, other departments, since you've already opened up the school opening, uh, let's focus on that, no? so we won't uh, lose uh, uh, track of that. I know our, our senators have a lot of questions no, uh, on, on, on that matter. So we'll focus on that and then, and then Actually, reverse yun yung 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 agenda. Eh. Dapat na una sila pero na una na ito. So, but that's okay. That's okay uh, because this is really an important matter. So uh, we will uh, open the floor to questions. But before that, let, let me recognize uh, Senator Pimentel, the virtual presence of Senator Pimentel. So we'll open Good morning, the floor. Mr. Chairman. Good morning. To Mr. Chairman. Questions? Yes, uh, Senator Binay and then Senator Pia. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just an inquiry. Um, may submission who by you, DepEd? Because I know that the devil is in the details. Um, do they have a submission? Dun sa ano talaga yung detalye when it comes to the face-to-face -face, um, opening? 
like yung mga protocols. Um, for example, uh, Mr. Chairman, dun sa skwela ng mga anak ko, um, part of the orientation that was given to us parents na parang pag, kunyari, X number yung nag-positive, balik ulit kami dun, shift ulit to um, hybrid or online ulit yung, yung classes. May ganun bang... Uh, Uh, kumbaga, protocol na binalangkas ang ating DepEd. Your Honor. Go ahead, yes. You said... uh, uh, Honorable Senator Binay, uh, Your Honor. Uh, nandun po sa Department Order 34, malinaw po doon ang pagbabalangkas or the clear guidelines on the opening of class, specifically health protocols. So in other words, uh, the protocols, if ever there will be some students who will end up to become positive, there are protocols that has been... Uh, Uh, summarized in the provisions of Department Order 34. Uh, kasama na po yun, halimbawa may nagka, nag-positive or nagpakita lamang po ng symptoms, he or she will be asked to go home. And uh, in the meantime, while the symptoms are there, these children uh, who profess or uh, uh, these, uh, these symptoms will be allowed to do blended learning. So these are the protocols included uh, in detail in Department Order 34. Uh, Your Honor, uh, Madam uh, Senator Binay. And then, you said, Nancy, kasama din ho doon kung ano yung magtitrigger na kailangan, ano muna, shutdown muna yung eskwelahan or shutdown muna yung classroom. Kasama po ba yun? Or hindi nyo nakikita yung scenario na uh, magde-declare ng no classes? Uh, ma Madam Chair, uh, dun sa Department Order 34, malinaw po, uh, it was clearly mentioned there that regardless of the alert level in any area, uh, classes will continue. Uh, I, I mean, this COVID-19, as uh, mentioned by Secretary uh, Sarah uh, during our discussions, is something that is already almost endemic, although it is not declared endemic yet. It's already something that we will have to uh, be with in our everyday lives. So regardless of the alert level system, we will continue with the opening of classes, with the classes, and uh, I, I believe the protocols are there. Uh, including uh, protections of our children uh, while they are in 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 person classes uh, your honor okay siguro you said nothing just a suggestion baka mas maigi na meron ding mekanismo yung DepEd or baka may may leeway ang ating principal or teacher na uh, magdesisyon kung kailangan magdeclare ng um, no classes lalong lalo na pag uh, madami na dun sa mga estudyante ang oh. nagkakasakit. Siguro, side ko na example itong nangyayari sa amin ngayon sa Senado na uh, seven yung positive, yung positive kaya pinag-aaralan na ngayon kung um, dapat bang uh, uh, isara muna at uh, magkaroon ng kumbaga, general cleaning ngayon sa Senate. Um, um, yun lang naman, music dancing. And then, um, Meron din ba kayong mekanismo na kung saan yung mga teachers natin, even the students, can avail of um, free testing, whether antigen or PCR? Uh, Mr. Chair, may I refer the uh, response to the question to you, Sir Yes, Please. go ahead, uh, Sir. Uh, magandang umaga po, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, Senator Binay. Uh, Since uh, yung uh, ating uh, magiging uh, kundukta ng klase itong August 22, lahat na po ng mga teachers natin ay uh, papasok sa eskwela and uh, uh, they can uh, engage with our learners. Um, yung mga teachers kapag ay naging, may, uh, nag, nag positive, then uh, they will uh, advise to stay at home and uh, Uh, pwede nilang i-avail yung COVID leave with pay po yun. And then, uh, sa, dahil mandatory yung wearing of face masks and we will strictly enforce the minimum public health uh, standards, uh, kasama din po yung uh, mga learners, ang advice po ay uh, uh, yung mga teachers na uh, kung merong flu-like symptoms ay Uh, kailangan magpa-test and uh, ang mga schools and division offices natin ay nakikipag-usap uh, uh, na sa mga local government units para sa free testing dun sa mga exposed and uh, merong flu-like symptoms na mga teachers and non-teaching personnel. 
And uh, for example, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, sa Region 7, uh, sa Cebu, ang uh, local government unit ng uh, uh, Cebu province ay nagbigay ng 10,000 uh, kits, antigen kits for teachers. So, ang um, ating mga division offices, uh, regional offices, and uh, schools ay nakikipag-usap sa local government units and other private sectors nang sa gayon ay magkaroon ng mga magkaroon sila ng enough uh, supply ng antigen uh, kits uh, para sa testing ng ating mga uh, teaching and non-teaching personnel. Okay. Yun, uh, uh, yeah, pero you say Krebsy, kung walang capability yung LGU, I would assume na walang budget ng DepEd no for for COVID testing. Tama po ba? Po. Ang uh, uh, meron pong inalat, although uh, maliit po na uh, pondo coming from our uh, uh, USEC for Finance, dinownload na po ito sa mga division offices. Uh, kung sakaling wala na po talagang uh, maibigay yung ating local government unit o yung mga health units natin sa baba, then uh, pwedeng kuhanin sa MOE ng ating mga schools and division offices. Okay. Um, um, siguro, Mr. Chairman, uh, baka this is something that uh, siguro kailangan din natin pag-aralan, baka kailangan bigyan din natin ng allocation itong uh, pagbibigay ng free testing, lalong-lalo na sa ating mga mga teachers. Um, siguro, just uh, a last question dahil marami pa tayong kasama na gusto magtanong. Yung pagdating din sa orientation sa ating mga magulang, meron bang pinreduce yung um, DepEd na materiales para mas madaling maintindihan ng ating mga magulang itong department order kung saan nakasaad yung mga protocols when it comes to face-to-face uh, -face, uh, classes ng ating mga estudyante? Mr. Chair. And FAQs. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, uh, for response. Po. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Mr. Chair, uh, right now, sa website po ng uh, DepEd, initially, nilagay po namin doon ang frequently asked questions sa Department Order 34. At uh, isa sa gagawin po namin para ma-orient din ang ating mga magulang ay uh, gagawa po ng isang video presentation na madaling maintindihan ng ating magulang through our public affairs service. So ginagawa na po ito ngayon. Uh, Napaka-importante po yung Department Order 34 dahil dito po nilalaman. Banggit ko nga sa inyo, ito po ang pinaka-biblia natin sa calendar or school year calendar year 2022 to 2023. So kailangan maintindihan ito ng mga magulang uh, ng maayos. Kaya po may, mayroon tayong ganong klaseng komunikasyon. Wait, so you said then, Singh, magsisimula na yung klase sa Monday, di ba? Uh, tama po yan. Magkakaroon po ng mga asemblea yung ating mga magulang at teacher through, sa, through the PTA Association at doon po ilalahad ng maayos itong mga komunikasyon na ito para sa ating mga magulang. So, so based from your answer, uh, mag-uumbisa na tayo by Monday. Hindi pa natin na-orient yung ating mga magulang kung ano yung, what will be the new norm kumbaga pagdating doon sa face-to-face -face, uh, classes ng kanilang mga anak? Uh, madam, doon po sa, Madam Senator, doon po sa ating uh, tinatawag nating uh, Brigade Eskwela, nagkakaroon ng uh, pagpunta yung ating mga magulang sa mga eskwelahan. So napapag-usapan din po ito dahan-dahan ng ating mga teacher at mga magulang ukol dito sa nilalaman ng uh, Department Order 34 at pagbabalangkas din na itong new normal po. Kagaya po halimbawa, kasama na talaga sa new normal natin ang talagang pagsusuot ng face mask pagpapasok sa eskwela. Uh, in fact, hindi, na, hindi magpo-provide ang ating skwela ng face mask. Talagang dala-dala po ito ng ating mga estudyante. Kaya lang, uh, meron tayong nilagay na provision na naka-reserve sa ating mga skwelahan na in kaso lamang kung masira ang face mask o makalimutan ng estudyante yung face mask, pero naka-reserve po sa skwelahan. Pero general rule is kailangan na, kasama na sa uniforme ang pagsusot ng face mask bago pumasok ng skwelahan. Yusak Tensi, babalikan ko lang yung tanong ko. Um, kasi I will cite, well, as a mother, isa-cite ko lang yung uh, nangyari sa akin doon sa skwelahan ng aking mga anak. Parang bago nag-umpisa yung face-to-face classes nila, 
ni nagkaroon kami ng orientation kung saan uh, ipinala, ipinaliwanag yung do's and don'ts, pinakita sa amin kung ano na yung magiging itsura ng classroom. Um, meron po bang ganitong uh, pakikipag-dialogo uh, daya, sa ating mga magulang o wala? Uh, Ma-sure namin sa mga, sa mga skwelahan po, na, sa public school na amin na manage po ng DepEd, sigurado po itong sa, kasama sa orientation, yung set up ng klase sa buong taon at uh, hinikayat din namin ang mga private school na gawin din po ito. Uh, 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 so yung orientation niya will start when school start, parang gano'n, hindi before, before... Sa before po, dahil po sa brigade ng eskwela, nagkaroon na pong, uh, meron pong orientation, konti, pero yung... Konting orientation lang. Apo, Parang apo. Ganun. Okay. Apo. Ne, siguro, using, using then, just to um, reiterate, kasi nga, di ba, marami pa rin magulang ang, ano eh, may apprehension na papasukin yung kanilang mga anak. So, siguro, um, just to emphasize yung need, yung kailangan natin turuan, kailangan natin i... kumaga... Um, Uh, ano yun, yung mas mas confident sila na na papasukin yung ating mga anak. E yung yung maituro sa kanila at mapakita sa kanila na talagang may 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 ginawang uh, uh, paghahanda ang ating uh, DepEd pagdating doon sa uh, pagprevent ng pagkalat ng COVID among um, our students. Y yun lang po Mr. Chairman. Thank you po. Po Madam Senator, bibigyan po namin din po ang inyong session sa ating para sa ating mga magulang. Thank you. Th thank you, uh, Senator Binay. Uh, next is Senator Pia and then Senator uh, Padilla. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman. A few a few quick reactions to um, the presentations, the points raised in the presentation. Um, on, the, um, on the switch to English and Filipino um, and the use of mother tongue as an exception rather than the rule, um, I would just like to to share and I've um, perhaps most of the the uh, key officials in DepEd have heard this no, in, in previous hearings. Um, from my experience when I visit we visit the far flung areas and the countryside, a lot of the um, teachers would even complain that ipinipilit sa kanila to use mother tongue terms uh, for math or science subjects na wala namang ganung term. No? So parang sabi nila, They're, they're really comfortable using English. So this move is consistent with the information that I have been receiving on the ground. And another example that I, sh I may have shared in the past, um, for example, Masbate is considered part of the Bicol region, but they speak Bisaya there. So binibigyan sila ng materials on, uh, uh, in Bicolano, pero Bisaya naman ang salita nila. So um, it's just a little bit... Um, Uh, at this point, it is um, it's a uh, welcome to hear that uh, there is going to be these changes, Mr. Chairman. I just want to be clear that you can hear me because I cannot see yeah. any. Okay, yeah. I you're thought, very I you're coming in very loud and clear. Because, Mr. Chairman, I don't see a video of the Senate. Ayon, uh, nakafocus yata siya sa sa. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, I don't see it. Eh. So that's my cue na I'm still online sana. Sana yung video is naka-focus dun sa Senate hearing room because the last time we had the hearing, um, nawala din ako. And wala akong way to know eh kung hindi ko nakikita yung video ng Senate, Mr. Chairman. Anyway. Well, we'll um, get it fixed. I also can see you twice. Okay. <laughs> so I think uh, we'll get it fixed. No? So Thank you. We can Are hear you. you. Or your reassuring uh, um, uh, uh, comments like "yes, no, Ted" <laughs> will will uh, help me know that I am still being heard out there. Anyway, um, so Mr. Chairman, let me continue. So, um, nung sinabi na yung magiging exception to the rule itong mother tongue, ako ako lang yung and and I know that the dis the discussions on this have been lengthy, no? So I am not going to pretend by by making this simple suggestion na hindi naman ito na pag-usapan, but just to clarify. I think the proper term instead of exception might be should be used as um, supplementary because uh, we are a, a multi-language country speaking people and it's very common um, to speak in English even even ourselves in, in the Senate hall we would speak in 
English and then say a sentence in Filipino for emphasis or the other way around. So maybe, uh, and, and you know, quick response, or we can discuss this later at a later, at a later time all on, on uh, this issue on, on uh, the, the use of the national language. Um, supplementary sana yung mother tongue, hindi naman yung exception because obviously there would be areas that um, it's really, in a way, it's an exception because they're very uncomfortable, unfamiliar maybe with Filipino and English. But I think all throughout the country, supplementary yan. Kasi uh, you would always shift to that, that language that you're comfortable in. So I, I happen to be comfortable in both. Um, but when I go to the Visayas, I love to dabble in in uh, Visaya um, or Ilongo. Uh, those are the two that I'm most comfortable with. And uh, I, I like to think of it as not an exception, but a supplementary language that I'm learning. So that's the other point. I'll just I'll just run through my points and then um a quick response after. Um on the um I'll join Senator B9 no, on clarity, just on clarity for the peace of mind of the parents on what are the protocols. We don't want to have any parents panicking. And sadly, Mr. Chairman, from my own um experience, um sadly, sadly, a lot of parents pick up their news and or rely on news that are on TikTok, on Facebook. And I hope DepEd is is coming up with creative ways to to not just balance this out, but to overcome no, the reliance on those kind of informations. Like there will be an outbreak, that's for sure. But I think DepEd should be very clear. Uh, your PR persons who are speaking to and and um I, I have no I'm, make, I'm not making any comment on your existing PR person. No, I'm just saying that um uh be very creative in addressing parents. No, on on what they should be concerned about, what they should not worry about, assuring them because sadly people are picking up news on on TikTok. And I'll join I'll join um I'll add to this um because I didn't hear this mentioned uh, when um when Senator Binay was was expounding on the importance of of uh, explaining to the parents i also didn't i didn't i don't think i heard i may have missed it um the inclusion of more um um i'll use the word marketing <laughs> marketing on the importance of vaccination um with both the children and the the teachers and the school personnel uh that is so important because when we worry about uh, the effect on our children, wala namang magulang, I think, unless you're a new parent, tapos bagong, bago kang panganak, mahatsig lang yung anak mo, kakabahan ka. But by the time your child is five years old, sanay na sanay na tayo, nasisiponin, uubuhin, lagnat, wag lang yung mataas na lagnat, medyo kahit ako, magpapanik ako, pag mataas yung lagnat, pero yung konting ibusipon, sanay na sanay na tayo doon. And all over the world, that is how they are treating COVID. No masking pa. No masking pa sila, okay? Pinaglalaban pa nila yung karapatan nila na mag no mask. Tayo nga, nakamask pa tayo, which I support, ha? I fully support masking. But we need more information. How do you protect your child? You protect your child by vaccinating them, by getting the full full shots, kung qualified man yung anak niyo sa booster, whatever, and also the teacher. So I have to harp on this because that is the best form of protection. Um, no amount of testing. Testing is already on the end, diba? So I support that too, but we have to start in the beginning, which is the protection. And um, my last one or two points is on the shortage of classrooms. Let me clarify, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, again, this is not the, the time to go into all the details, but um, I did not hear from the report of DepEd, which should have been included for clarity, that uh, one of the reasons for um, the lowering of the national budget for classrooms is the Mandanas ruling. So during the lengthy discussions and eventually the hearing and the plenary debates we had on the floor, um, itong Mandanas ruling uh, was really the dominant, predominant reason why walang walang budget. And even DepEd did not ask for that budget to be clear. Ha? You know naman na marami kayong champion dito sa amen, no? Um, our chairman, Senator Nancy and I, and a few others were, were always present here trying to help. So walang hiningi because, and I'm not blaming anyone, I'm just stating the facts as I know it. Walang hiningi because the Mandanas ruling states that the LGUs will now take care of their classroom budget. And I recall even DepEd was concerned about that. It may, it may, I think it was a policy decision overall, not just DepEd, no, but um, 
even DepEd was concerned kasi pag hindi ginawa ng LGU, di kayo rin naman ang tatanungin kung bakit walang budget. Kaya ako pinapaliwanag because that's also helps you explain bakit nagkaganito na na ang baba, ang liit na ng budget. So whatever budget is there in the GAA, my understanding is that is just for the 5th and 6th class municipalities who cannot be expected to to take care of their budget for classrooms dahil maliit ang kanilang budget, ang kanilang sariling budget. So, yun yun. So, idagdag natin sa conversation yun kasi kung kailangan i-revisit itong effect ng mandana sa inyo, sabihin nyo na agad-agad, di ba? Um, I am really saddened because um, when I was a new senator, ito yung senaryo na 3 classrooms per day. And then na-address na natin yan. Na-address na natin yan. So I am so sad that we reverted to that. No, that's where we are. Um, it is a reality and um, I'm happy that, that, the, that the department under um, uh, Secretary Vice President uh, Sara Duterte is prioritizing this. But I just feel really bad because as your chairman of the Committee on SDGs, Innovations, Futures Thinking, I have been discussing this. Budgetan natin yan. In fact, sinabi ko pa nung pandemic, ngayon nga yung tamang time na magpagawa ng classroom kasi walang pumapasok para next year, pagpasok nila nandyan na. Well, it is a collective decision of the Senate. There are 24 senators and we decide collectively what we will propose um, in the BICAM. <clears throat> And then the BICAM, both House and Senate, make that decision. So I am repeating my call. We have a chance within the next six years to make up for the classroom's shortage. It's a choice that we will make. Otherwise, we just have this discussion. We have a new Congress um, after three years, and we're back, if not in the same place, in a similar situation. So we have a choice. We have the chance to, to um, um, solve this problem. Now, Classrooms, they are physical structures, yes. And many times the debate revolves around, yes, but we're talking about quality of education. Bali, wala naman ang classroom. Pwede naman mag-aaral ang bata sa ilalim ng puno. Ang dami nagsasabi niya na, ang dami nagsasabi niyan, o oh, yan, during the pandemic, nakapag-aaral ba sila ng maayos sa ilalim ng puno? Nagawa ba natin ng maayos yon? I guess not, mainly because hindi naman pwedeng mag-gather. No? So it's not a matter, it wasn't really... Um, not having a physical structure, but there there were um, health reasons why they couldn't gather. But my point is, clearly the classroom still plays a very important role in the delivery of education, in the delivery of quality education. So this must really be part of the discussion. And I, I leave it to, to DepEd to make your appeal to Congress on how we can help you um, address this. Um, I'll end there, Mr. Chairman. I have a few other points, but I'm just addressing those those key points that I picked up. Sorry, I remembered my last point. My last point was um, on the state of uh, USEC dancing, no? included the um, um, idea that let's put back together under one roof all the education agencies, Department of Education, CHED, and uh, TESDA. And uh, it will be recalled, it is on record, that I have also called for that. Uh, in fact, even within the Senate, I have said that the committees should be heard as one so that there is more coordination. Um, so I, I support that, and I'd like to uh, find out from the department how we can help um, make this happen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. You said uh, then sing. Yeah, May respond? Our response, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Honorable Senator Pia Cayetano. Uh, well, first of all, on the issue of the mother tongue, we, we recognize your position that uh, uh, mother tongue should be the exception. But uh, the term exception means that we're only recognizing certain areas in the country where I, I mentioned a while ago that they are not using English or they are not, the community and the children are not familiar with English and Filipino, thereby using mother tongue as the uh, as the uh, medium of instruction in those areas. I also agree that uh, for purposes of teaching, uh, while the, what we propose the media of instruction should be English and Filipino, uh, the local vernacular should be supplementary or an auxiliary language to emphasize and uh, uh, the teaching points of the teacher to the learner. So we agree, but what is important, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, your honor, is that uh, the Honorable Senator Pia is supportive of our position to make that major change in the media of, or medium of instruction of our learners. Second, on the issue of communication, we take note, uh, your, your, 
uh, suggestion, including that of Senator Binay, na uh, paigdingin pa natin ang komunikasyon sa ating publiko, sa ating mga magulang, at kasama na rin sa ating mga kabataan o mga mag-aaral itong mga protocols natin sa COVID-19. Uh, dito po sa Department Order 34, na mayroon po tayong provision na nilagay dyan na ang, pagtat ang pagtatawag ng tinatawag nating vaccination counseling ay papagpatuloy po natin. In fact, nakikipag-ugnayan na kami sa Department of Health. Ang kausap ko po dito diretso si Assistant Secretary uh, Beverly Ho at ang aming pag-uusap ay magkakaroon po ng... Uh, counseling sa at uh, vaccination counseling sa ating mga bagulang para kumbinsihin sila na magpagbakuna hindi lamang pa ang mga bagulang pati po ang ating mga anak ang kanilang mga anak at uh, kung mayroon pong sapat na numero na mga estudyante at mga magulang magpapabakuna magkakaroon po tayo ng vaccination sites dun sa mga eskwelahan na yon for our teachers for the information of uh, the committee uh, out of the 883,000 teachers uh, only 37,000 uh, of these teachers have not been fully vaccinated, uh, 17,000 of which, uh, 20,000 of which is scheduled for registered for full vaccination. So what will be left is just 17,000 who still refuse to be vaccinated. On the, uh, on the shortages of classroom, Your Honor, uh, Vice President Sara has already written the Department of Budget and Management, copy furnished the Department of Interior and Local Government, that her position is that school buildings or the school buildings program is not part of the devolved function for purposes of the Bandanas and Garcia ruling. And in one of conversa in our conversations, siya mismo nagsabi, e ako nga, mayor na ng Davao City, hindi talaga ako maglalagay ng budget para sa school buildings dahil yan po ay responsibilidad ng pambansang gobyerno. So this has been already communicated uh, to the Department of Budget and Management and the DILG. And uh, for purposes of 2023 budget, uh, Maybe uh, Yusek Ann can disclose to us our proposed budget uh, with, uh, with the House and uh, what was given to us as part of the NEP by the DBM. Mr. Chair, uh, Yusek Ann, just to disclose. Yes, yeah, Yusek, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good afternoon, uh, everyone po, sa ating mga strong supporters na mga senators and to the Basic uh, Education Committee. We just want to disclose that we have proposed 86.5 billion for 2023, and this includes all levels of cities and municipalities. So despite the instruction of the Department of Budget and Management to only include fifth and sixth class municipalities, what we submitted is the overall requirement that we can implement next year. So that's 86.5 billion is actually not the overall shortage. This is just uh, what we think should be implemented in 2023. And the NEP level 2023 NEP is only 5.9 billion. So this is 5.9 billion versus the 86.5 billion in the proposal of the Department of Education. And in terms of repair, we already have a 40 billion backlog, 16 billion of which is for the ODET, but we're only requesting 7.6 billion for 2023. And the NEP 2023 for the ed for repair is only 1.5 billion. And uh, we already had the official communication from DBM on this. This is the print copy or the ready to be printed NEP levels. And that is the problem that we will face in 2023. Because even if we want to consider the other levels of cities and municipalities with this given budget, we have to just prioritize the fifth and sixth class municipalities for repair and new con. In terms of the quick response fund, we want to uh, remove the backlog of the, uh, the damages, disaster, especially the Odette and the recent earthquake. We requested 16 billion and 4 billion sana po yung every year. Kasi ang nangyayari dun sa 2 billion na binibigay every year ay nakalaan na sa mga nangyaring disaster of the previous year. At kung may darating na bagong calamity or, or disaster, wala po talaga kaming mabibigay na quick response. So I think the definition of quick response fund in the DepEd is uh, not anymore quick and not anymore responsive if we will be in this quicksand situation. And so for NEP 2023, we are informed that we will still have only 2 billion pesos, which means that we have to prioritize and only choose among the 40 billion in line uh, in the repair. 
uh, that that your honor is the situation in terms of finance thank yeah. you po mr chair may i finish uh, on the last item uh, response to uh, senator Cayetano's comments uh, we welcome uh, the support of uh, senator pia uh, of putting under one roof uh, the three different education agencies uh, under one agency education agency and hopefully we can also meet the ideal unesco uh, provisions for budget uh, UNESCO has been saying that the budget for education should be between 4 to 6% of gross domestic product and or 16 to 20% of the national budget. As of 2022, uh, the budget for education, which includes basic education, commission higher education, SUCs, and, and uh, TESDA is, uh, is I think, 2.9% of GDP and 14.5% of the national budget. So we're far away from the ideal uh, standard set by UNESCO for purposes of budgeting uh, uh, the, uh, the education sector of our country. Uh, thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you, you said. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I just make a request? Yeah, yes, Senator Pia. Yeah. Can, I, can I just ask, um, you sec an no to send us that info just very informally just so that we can start working on it i know we'll have our presentation soon um but um in the meantime um i'd also like her to include later no longer in this presentation what is the carrying capacity uh, mr chairman you'll remember no we've had lengthy dis discussions on this right like ano ba yung kinaka i mean in as much as me personally i will i will support 86 billion pero Ni, ni one fourth, one fifth niyan, in never payata tayo nakapag construct ng ganyang kalaki, kaya bayan ng DPWH. Remember this discussion, Mr. Chairman? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, yes Senator Pia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, remember, you remember this discussion, Mr. Chairman, na ano ba yung kayang i ano, i um, ano ba talagang kayang i, i patayo? Kasi, Ibigay man natin to, tapos ang mangyayari dyan, an, an, um, hindi magagalaw yung pondong yan, then sayang, di ba? But I want to give it, no? I mean, we'll have that discussion at the right time, in the right place. But um, these are things that we have to find out. Kasi it's it's one thing to know the numbers. It's another thing to know that can it, kaya bang implement ng national government yan? Uh, Yusek Densing yeah. and then Yusek... Yusek An has a disclosure on the, the absorptive capacity of DepEd on the school buildings program. It's Dep it's, but it's not DepEd who implements. It's DPWH. So when you say the absorptive capacity of... Uh, I know it's a joint effort, but there's, there's CEC. Yes. DepEd um, identifies it with the local government and then si DPW. Hindi magagawa ni DPWH yung trabaho nila. Last time, sabi ni Secretary Mark, hindi nila magagawa yung trabaho nila hanggat hindi nyo nagawa yung part na yun. Ang alam ko, naayos na yan eh. But sadly, the numbers that we were looking at were very small na. So because nobody wanted to put in the, um, the those kind of um, investments during the pandemic no, against my own recommendation. So I don't know where, where we're getting the figures on yung capacity kasi we have not tested the waters on those kind of capacities, on, on that amount. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yeah. Thank you, Senator Pia. Uh, in 2017, there's a 100 billion new construction funding given to DepEd. Uh, it took time to be implemented because you're right, uh, 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 Senator Pia, the implementation is on the uh, hand or the ball of DPWH. But uh, in the last uh, administration, we had a very strong uh, partnership with the PWH with a uh, memorandum of agreement, and we are now doing it with the new secretary of the PWH. But really, it it really it it is part of the absorptive capacity of the DPWH. What is different from 2017 to 2022 and the succeeding years is that we have developed the pre-detailed engineering already. In 2017, we didn't have that. And right now, we also had the soil testing uh, done in all of the schools. So we are ready with the school building inventory with this data on the soil test and the pre-detailed engineering. So the list of backlog that we have for this 86 billion is actually the result of this preparatory engineering work we have done with the PWHO. Madam Senator, we are ready with the 86 billion uh, list. And that's the reason why we're only uh, disclosing only this uh, amount, proposing and disclosing only this amount. So that's the answer for the absorptive capacity. 
Okay, I'm very happy to hear that. And in fairness naman, uh, Yusek Ann, I know um, under Secretary Liling, no, they really were putting this in place kasi nakakaturuan yun eh, in, the, in the early years. So I'm really happy to hear that. And you have my support um, just, just as long as we have those justifications that those are in place. I, I'm very happy to hear that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm done with my questions. And I'm happy okay. to Mr. Chair. I forgot to also inform the committee and Senator Pia and Senator Wynn that you have the details on the Mandanas ruling already sent to your staff. Thank you, Po. Thank you, Sen uh, thank you, uh, Yusek and uh, Senator Padilla. Ayos. Maraming salamat po, uh, Chairman. Uh, gusto ko lamang pong balikan kasi yung pagpasukan na eh. Pasukan na. Uh, isa pong napakahalagang yung narinig ko kay Undersecretary. Kasi po, ito po ang usapin ng pasukan na ito, hindi na lang po ito patungkol lang sa edukasyon. Sapagkat so, ang kadukto po nito ay yung kanulugan, yung safety ng ating mga uh, mag-aaral. At ako naman po ay sumusuporta sa kagustuhan ng ating uh, bisi presidente ang ating kalihim ng edukasyon na dapat na po talagang pumasok. Dahil ang buong mundo po ay pumapasok na. Ang lahat po, may mga bagong protocol nga po, ang DOH, ang World Health ano, Organization patungkol dito sa COVID-19. Hindi na rin po talaga ito binibaby. Ito po talaga yung nilalabanan na. Ang gusto ko lamang pong marinig sa DepEd, Yung bang partnership nyo ng DOH, e eh, gano'n po kalalim? Ito po ba ay eh, usapin lang ng bakuna? Ito po ba ay eh, mula pasukan hanggang nangyayari yung eskwela, hanggang matapos ang eskwela, yun po ba ay eh, binabantayan ng DOH? Kasi po, hindi naman po po pwede na ang reaksyon natin dito Katulad po ng reaksyon namin dito sa Senado, dahil katulad nga po ng sinabi ni Senator Binay, kami po ngayon ay may pinagdadaanan dito sa Senado. Marami po sa aming mga senador ang may COVID sa mga staff, lahat. Kami ngayon ay nagdidesisyon ngayon pa lang kung ano ba ang gagawin natin, tayo ba ay magpapatuloy o hindi. Eh siguro po kami ko konti lang dito. Eh kayo po ang may pinakamalaking kagawaran dito sa gobyerno, gusto lang po namin malaman kung ano yung plano po ninyo. Kayo po ba pag nagkaroon po ba ng epidemya dito, hihinto po ba kayo? O kayo po ba eh, mapupunta uli online? Kailangan lang po talaga uh, ang gusto ko po kung ano po yung inyong plano dito. Yung lamang po. Mr. Chair? Yeah. Uh, pinapasa ko po kay Yusek Rev. Si Escobedo ang pagsagot po sa katanungan ni Senator Padilla. Uh, maraming salamat po, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, Senator uh, Padilla. Uh, with regard to the partnership with the DOH, uh, mula pa nung nakaraang dalawang taon, nung nag-pilot tayo ng face-to-face -face classes, uh, mahigpit po ang ugnayan natin with the uh, Department of Health. At uh, yung mga pulisiya natin hinggil sa kalusugan, well-being and protection ng ating mga teachers and mag-aaral, ay uh, closely coordinated yung mga uh, guidelines natin. And in fact, meron tayong uh, DepEd DOH uh, Joint Memorandum Circular kung ano ang magiging uh, guidelines o magiging mga panuntunan na susundin ng ating mga uh, school heads, teachers, at uh, mga learners. Nang sa gayon matiyak na ang ating mga teachers, uh, ang ating mga uh, estudyante, ay tumatalima sa sinasabi nating minimum public health standards. At uh, sa katunayan, meron po kaming ilalabas ngayon dahil uh, ito ay magbubukas tayo ng uh, klase uh, ngayong uh, lunes, August 22. Uh, ito naman ay meron din tayong pakikiugnayan ulit with the DOH. At... Uh, Uh, nagbigay uh, na sila ng inputs kung ano ang uh, dapat na maging uh, o nandun sa mga panuntunan na hindi dapat kaligtaan ng DepEd, hindi dapat kaligtaan ng mga guro, hindi dapat kaligtaan ng mga DepEd officials. Uh, laging pinapaalala po sa amin yung uh, uh, mga basic na panuntunan na 
pagbibigay uh, ng uh, pagsusuot ng face mask, yung uh, sanitation bago bago pumasok sa eskwelahan. Uh, ito po ay ano na, ito na ito po ay established na sa schools dahil uh, sa nakaraang dalawang taon nga po ay uh, yung mga pinayagan natin na uh, mag face to face classes ay naghanda sila. Merong mga uh, sanitation uh, facilities and equipment doon sa mga uh, entrance ng mga schools, uh, meron mga signages at meron silang mga calls na. Alam na nila na kapag merong isang estudyante nag-positive, ano ang gagawin nila? At kung merong teacher na nag-positive or exposed, uh, ano ang gagawin nila? So ito po ay ano na, established po Apo, sa school level. Sa sundang ko lang po. Kasi uh, dito naman po sa Senado, lahat eh, sinusunod ng protocol. Pero meron pa rin po talaga. Tinamaan pa rin po kami. Ano, ang talong ko lang po, ano po ang backup plan? Halimbawa po ay dumami. Kayo po ba eh, magbabalik sa online? Gano, meron po bang ganong klaseng plano? Opo. Uh, opo. Uh, dahil nga po face-to-face uh, -face tayo, uh, sakaling po na merong ang isang uh, klase o klas, merong pumasok na COVID positive pala, at uh, na-expose yung mga estudyante. Kung karamihan po ng mga estudyante ay uh, uh, nag-positive o na-expose na rin at merong flu-like symptoms, agad-agad tayo ay uh, from face to face ay magbe-blended na uli tayo. Ibig sabihin, uh, isasarapan samantala yung uh, eskulahan o classroom na yon uh, hanggat sa matiyak natin na safe na uli silang bumalik ng uh, paaralan. So ano po tayo, uh, uh, nag adjust nag adapt base sa ano ang status ng uh, uh, kalusugan ng ating mga paguruan at uh, estudyante. Ayan po ay nasabi po yan sa mga magulang. Yan po ay uh, uh, nasabi nitong uh, Oplan Brigade Eskwela at itong first to two weeks. <laughs> Pero paano niyo po masisigurado kung hindi naman nagdadahilan lang? Kasi nung bata ako, mahilig ako magdahilan na may sakit ako eh. Opo. Pero pa, paano niyo po malalaman kung tulay na yan? Opo. Oh. Ang mga teachers po ay uh, reminded po sila na bantayan nila yung uh, kalusugan at well-being ng mga bata. In fact, sa first two weeks ay uh, ang gagawing mga activities, ito ay mga psychosocial activity at uh, paalala sa ano ang mga protocols uh, dahil nga po nandito, uh, nandito pa rin sa atin yung banta ng uh, pandemic. So, first two weeks ay uh, orientation pa rin yan. Ano ang protocols at, at ano yung mga uh, activities na gagawin in relation to the promotion ng mental health and uh, psychosocial okay. support. Napakaganda po nun kasi talagang ang mga bata ay tinamaan yung mental health. Saan tanong ba po? Uh, Ang sinabi niyo pong full blast na, eh, hindi na mo, katulad po ng mga tanong ng ating mga mahal na senador din, ano? eh, di ba po parang congested na rin, punong-pulo na rin ng mga classroom. Pa, paano po natin ma-address kaya yung sinasabi nating protocol? Thank you po. Uh, bilang paghanda sa uh, five days in-person classes, ang ating mga regional directors, superintendents at school heads ay nagkaroon ng class programming. Ibig sabihin, uh, yung class programming para matiyak na safe yung ating mga bata ay uh, yung binabanggit ni Yusek uh, Densing kanina, kung dati-rati ay uh, pumapasok sila sa isang araw, ay pwede hinahati natin yung uh, klase. May pang-umaga at may pang-hapon. Nang sa gayon ay matiyak natin na itong oras na ito ay uh, ito yung class A tapos sa hapon ay yung class B. Nang sa gayon, matiyak natin na uh, safe lagi yung ating mga uh, kabataan. Maliban pa po yung talagang mandatory na wearing of face mask and sabi nga ng DOH, uh, kailangan yung mga classrooms natin well-ventilated, bukas talaga yung mga uh, bintana, yung mga pintuan, at kung sakaling magbubukas yung mga kantin, o dahil pinapayagan na rin natin magbukas yung mga kantin, dapat observe uh, proper physical distancing, dapat hindi mag 
hindi magkumpulan yung mga estudyante habang kumakain at hindi dapat nag-uusap habang uh, kumakain. Yan po na ipaalala na po lahat yan, mangyayari po lahat. So masasabi nyo po na handang-handa na ang DepEd at ang DOH sa mangyayari nito. Uh, uh, opo, hindi naman po sinasabi ko na perfect but nandun na po yung mga mekanismo po. In English, eh, we can take the risk. Uh, we can take the challenge. Uh, challenge, ha? Challenge. Oh, ba, talagang, ano, ha? you're fighting me with your English, ha? <laughs> siya na lang po, siya na lang po. Nabanggit kanina kasi puro bilyon. Medyo, siya na lang to, Chairman. Opo. Noong nakaraang administrasyon, nagtayo po ng anti-corruption committees ang DepEd. Kamusta po ito? Ito po ba ay ipagpapatuloy pa rin? Ito po ba ay nandiyan pa? Uh, magandang umaga po, uh, Senator uh, Padilla. Uh, balak po namin i-revive ito at paigtingin uh, para ma ma masabi natin sa kabuang uh, byurokrasya ng DepEd na malinaw sa amin na hindi namin papayagan ang anumang korupsyon sa DepEd. Sa paunang salita ni Secretary and VP Sara sa DepEd, ang una niyang binanggit sa aming lahat sa DepEd na kami po ay nasa DepEd para hindi gumawa ng pera at uh, para hindi manguha ng pera. Kung kailangan daw nilang pera, umalis na lang po sila sa DepEd. Uh, hindi ko nga alam kung sinabi niyang magpapautang na lang si VP. No? <laughs> Pero malinaw po yan sa kanya. At uh, ang aking karanasan sa anti-corruption ay malalim po dahil ako po yung naging uh, supervising officer ng bantay corruption ng DLG kung saan marami kami kinasuwang mga mayors at mga uh, empleyado ng lokal na gobyerno sa ombudsman, balak namin ipagpatuloy ito para malinaw ang mensahe na hindi pwedeng magnakaw, magkorupsyon at gumawa ng pera gamit ang pondo ng DepEd. Pagka uh, tungkol pala sa korupsyon, gumagaling sa Tagalog si Boss ha. Okay, maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, Chairman. Thank you, Senator Padilla, for the very uh, important questions. Uh, how about the other senators? Uh, let me recognize Senator Bongo, uh, his virtual presence. Uh, I open the floor to our other senators. They have other questions. Um, hearing none, I'll, I'll continue where um, Senator Pia left off in so far as the mother tongue is concerned, no? because this is actually a very interesting as well as very controversial topic. Controversial because a lot of talk about this issue. Uh, personally, I in the last three years, I've conducted um, consultations both with the academe as well as uh, practitioners, our teachers, our principals. And personally, I went to also observe. You know, and admittedly, the uh, implementation of the mother tongue and the concept beside mother tongue is not as aligned as what as as what we envision. No? Um, I remember visiting a town, in border town ng Pangasinan, um, and uh, they speak Pangasinan there. They speak Tagalog. They also speak Ilocano. Uh, so in one classroom, you have kids speaking three different uh, languages. No, and the teacher, to make it more complex, come from a different place. I think it. She she uses Ibanag or some other dialect. No? So, in, in theory, uh, the mother tongue promotes confidence. It's uh, a, a language that uh, the student can e easily understand and absorb. Uh, but in practice, it's also quite complicated, no? especially in some areas. I'm going to reserve my position whether uh, I support the... Uh, re removal of mother tongue or not, no? Because I just want to request from the department through USEC, then Singh, is to before we make any uh, any policy decision, is to conduct uh, conduct a re conduct research and also make sure that the research are uh, well established, no? Because in my experience, this last three years, uh, there's only one most recent. Uh, research that was conducted, and this is the Lubuagan project no? uh, in 1999 to 2012. Uh, Lubuagan is a municipality in Kalinga, Kalinga. Uh, it's a monolinguistic community, 
and uh, in that research, it uh, uh, it it um, it uh, they concluded that uh, mother tongue works no in a monolinguistic community. In fact, if you talk to the academe, uh, the academe will say it's a it's a tried and tested concept no because the the uh, absorption as well as the uh, the uh, uh, the the way students will understand uh, in their mother tongue is made more easy for them no but i admit there are complications implementing it on the ground so my request is uh, before we make any policy decisions is to conduct uh, heavy research on this concept no? because uh, it's going to be um, uh, we need to make sure that any policy decision is well established in terms of research because there are also adverse effects. For example, if we teach uh, students in their non-native tongue or non-mother tongue, comprehension may not be as deep. You know? And that's the consequence. So we need to just make sure that we uh, conduct research. You know, no? I, there's only one research that I've seen in most recent history. The other ones... 1954, 1966, 1964. So, may matagal tagal na. So, let's let's do that. Um, on a separate note, no, I was looking at the vaccination rate. I'll go with the vaccination rate, uh, Yusek. Uh, would like to ask the vaccination rates for the five to eleven years year olds and the twelve to seventeen year olds because these are school age children. And what are the recent vaccination rates of these children? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, based on the learners' vaccination data coming from the Department of Health as of April 2022, for 5 to 11 years old, uh, of the 14 million identified target population, 5 to 11 years old, 18.86% 18 have been vaccinated with at least one dose and 10.65% coverage of fully vaccinated. For 12 to 17 years old, it's 86.57 for at least one dose and fully vaccinated 79.42% uh, for a population of 11.4 million for the 12 and 17 years old. This is from the Department of Health data as of April 22. However, we have our own data coming from our learners' information system and based on our, inf our learners information system uh, fully vaccinated learners as of august 18 2022 is at 19.18 uh, percent uh, and learners with at least first dose as of august 18 2022 is at 20.55 percent so these are the uh, statistics your honor Thank you, uh, Yusek. And this ties up with uh, the comments and the question of Senator Padilla on the DOH-DEPED uh, partnership. Because uh, if we're looking at only 19% of our total, this is 5 to 17-year-olds, itong 19. So if we're looking at only 19.8% fully vaccinated um, for our 5 to 17-year-olds, um, you know, common sense will dictate they're exposed. And uh, I, I know for a fact that it's uh, very difficult no, to convince our parents to uh, get their children vaccinated. I, I think the, the department has been trying to encourage their par the parents to vaccinate their children uh, over the last many, many months, no, almost probably close to about six to eight months. Um, doon sa mga 11 to 12... 12 to 17 year olds, uh, based on your report, it's about 80 percent. So we're not, uh, tama, no? We're not. Uh, I think that's a good number, and we're not seeing any problems with that. The problem is the um, 11 to 5 to 11 year olds, no? And uh, based on your information, it's 10 percent, tama ba? No, 10 percent. So that's where the challenge comes in, no? uh, the, the 5 to 11 year olds. And uh, tama si Senator Padilla, what projects are we doing to encourage? No? Um, of course, the vaccination is a DOH activity, but what, are we doing anything to encourage and to uh, push vaccination among 5 to 11 year olds? 
Mr. Chair, uh, if I may, that's why it's very clear in Department Order 34 that part of the regular protocols uh, during the school days will be the continuous vaccination counseling. Again, continuous uh, convincing of the parents to let themselves and their children be vaccinated. And, and when we reach a certain number of vaccinees at a specific uh, school, it's at, it's at that point where we will be bringing in what we call vaccine, uh, bringing in vaccination, uh, mobile vaccination uh, equipment and vaccination sites. Uh, in my experience at the IETF and this work coming from our health experts, what is very critical for purposes of health protocol and the prevention of the spread of COVID-19 is really making sure that we follow health protocols. And here we talk about wearing of face masks and ventilations in, school, in, in rooms. Uh, in, in our conversations there, when we were doing with the travel protocols, it, uh, the Department of Health mentioned that it's very critical that we practice the minimum health standards because 90% 90, 90 of the time, if you are infected, you will not be able to spread the COVID-19. Or uh, if you are using, uh, if you're doing minimum public health standards, you will not be infected uh, otherwise. So it's really the practice that we will be emphasizing during the, the whole uh, school year. And again, ventilation in key and uh, the whole process of uh, health protocols were already summarized in DO34, plus another department order which will be released later on uh, through uh, USEC REBSI on uh, additional protocols uh, to prevent the spread of COVID-19 amongst learners, Your Honor. Are we going to allow LGUs to set up vaccination uh, uh, activities inside schools? Is that something that uh, the department uh, is uh, in partnering with the ILG and the LGUs? Uh, we will be communicating with the DILG with respect to local governments who would want to promote vaccination in schools. But again, uh, we will start doing it when we, we, uh, we have the uh, sufficient numbers to bring in vaccination sites. Kung kukunti pa lamang po, maaari natin i-refer o magpunta doon pa minsan-minsan. Pero kung marami-rami po ang pwedeng magbakunang mga magulang, uh, makumbinsi yung ibang mga guro at uh, yung mga marami sa ating mga mag-aaral, eh maglalagay na po talaga tayo ng vaccination site. Yun po ang usapan namin ng Department of Health. Yeah, because uh, of course we cannot, uh, uh, let, me just, ano, let me just flash yung slide on vaccination. I'll, I'll, uh, I also gathered some data on vaccination. Yeah. So for um, five to eleven year olds, it's uh, this is based on the most latest uh, um, DOH. It's twenty six percent. No, and uh, for ele twelve to seventeen year olds, it's uh, seventy six percent. So more or less, mga eighty. No, and uh, that's why uh, I was thinking that uh, since the schools there, no, since the schools are already open and students are coming in. Uh, it, it, I think it's good to explore with our LGUs to set up vaccination sites there, no? both for the parents and the students. No? Um, because in the last six months of uh, pushing uh, vaccination, it seems to me that uh, the take up for five to 11 years olds are not so um, encouraging. No? So let's uh, come up with innovative ways, partner with um, the DOH and see if we can... Uh, uh, set up vaccination sites uh, on site you know, and uh, encourage more children to get their vaccines. You know. Yeah. Another issue is um, I'll go to another topic, you know, which is um, uh, enrollment. And I, I've seen a phenomena, and it's good that Center uh, Padilla is here because uh, this is a cause of concern, but we need to um, address this. Is the I was looking at the regional enrollment figures, and uh, on a system-wide, it's quite encouraging. Um, let's let's just flash the slide. No? It's quite encouraging. It's about 99% nationwide, but uh, BARM is an outlier. No, uh, BARM is below 89% um, in terms of enrollment. And uh, if you look at the enrollment figures for the last uh, 10 years, uh, enrollment in BARM has been dropping, you know, has been going down. You know? uh, the trend for elementary, for junior high school uh, is going down. Um, uh, there's a work, I know there's a working relationship between DepEd and uh, BARM under the BARM law. Uh, 
Uh, however, uh, we need to put special emphasis to BARM no? because uh, a way to achieve peace in the region is to educate our children, no? to make sure that they are in school, to make sure that uh, they're given the best education possible. It's a way also for them to gain meaningful jobs. Uh, but uh, if the enrollment is going down and uh, enrollment uh, across region is uh, they're, they're, they're the least, um, uh, then we're not fulfilling that uh, that uh, mandate to to uh, educate them and deliver peace in that area. So, what is the department doing to 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 assist uh, the BARM region? Uh, the BARM has their own Ministry of Education, of course. But DEPED has uh, a working relationship, definitely in terms of curriculum and, and standards. But uh, we also have a moral obligation to assist them in terms of um, uh, maybe concept and uh, best practices. So may I ask the department what uh, move are they doing to assist the BARM area? Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Nung mga nakarang linggo, nagkaroon po kami ng dialogo kasama po si VP and Secretary Sara at uh, uh, ang buong team ng uh, Ministry of Education ng uh, BARM na pinamumunuan po ni Minister Iqbal. At doon po nagkaroon ng mga pag-uusap at humihingi nga po ng tulong ang BARM sa kanilang mga pangangailangan uh, sa BARM, specifically kanilang mga educational facilities at mga assistance. At doon po lumabas na ang aming sinisigurado lamang po ay tuloy naming pakikipag-usap sa kanila para masigurado lang na ang kanilang curriculum and instruction ay naka-align sa DepEd. Dahil kailangan po pare-pareho po ang curriculum and instruction sa buong Pilipinas. Siguro po sa BARM ang madadagdag lamang po na doon ay kanilang pagtuturo ng, uh, ng uh, kanilang reliyon at uh, uh, ng uh, Arabic language. Yun po ang magiging pagkakaiba. Pero ang napaka-importanteng... Uh, uh, pakiusap ni ni Minister Iqbal na gusto namin makuha officially through a written note from him ay humingi siya ng tulong na bigyan po sila ng pondo para sa kanilang school buildings dahil ilang taon na ramang po huli, ay, kung hindi ako nagkakamali huli silang nagbigyan ng pondo para sa kanilang school buildings ay nung 2020 at ang banggit kasi dito ng Department of Budget and Management at Department of Finance na dahil meron na silang one-time, big-time na pondo, doon na nila dapat kinukuha ang kanilang pondo para maitayo ang kanilang school buildings. Sa aming pananaw, yung kanilang 75 billion more or less a year is not enough to be able to fund uh, their school buildings, at least in my perspective, Your Honor. But we have to formalize this when they write us formally about this request. The other one is the GASPE program or under the Government Assistance uh, for students, teachers, and private uh, education, uh, I believe uh, a certain a portion of this gas pay, which was given to uh, for the management of DepEd and Payak, has not been allocated as has no allocation for BARM, and the BARM is very insistent that they are part of uh, uh, the fund of gas pay. Uh, in my opinion, because uh, the Republic Act 8545 is a law that encompasses everybody, I don't think. Uh, the, the position of the DBM or the DOF that gas for gas pay purposes, BARM is excluded because they have their 75 billion. Since Republic Act 8545 is a national law applicable to everybody, in my opinion, uh, Your Honor, I would think uh, gas pay should also be used or at least a portion of it be allocated for BARM. But again, we are restricted with the opinion of DBM and DOF on this. So, Your Honor, maybe this is something that uh, Congress should... Uh, should intervene and clarify. And I think this is the, a major request coming from BARM. At tama po kayo, napaka-importante po na makapag-aral yung mga kapatid natin, mga Muslim, dahil ito ang pagkakataon para ma maibaliktad nila ang kanilang buhay nung nakaraan magpahanggang ngayon. At uh, uh, marami po tayong mga kapatid na Muslim na ito po ang uh, nagiging problema na hindi sila nabibigyan ng pagkakataon mag-aral dahil sa kakulangan ng mga pasilidad at kakulangan ng ng pera or assistance para ho sila ay makapag-aral. So ito po ang two or uh, three major concerns uh, when during our dialogue with uh, Minister Iqbal. Tama ba you said that uh, uh, the primary reason why enrollment is decreasing and it's not uh, uh, comparative to national average is because the lack of classrooms yung ba ang nagiging dahilan? Um, uh, yung, yung classroom po is, uh, is, a, is a very important 
facility to be able to facilitate education. So the, the environment in the education uh, the, uh, uh, education environment is the facilities is the very very first critical uh, important role to be able to to assimilate learning. So if the environment for education is not there, like the lack of classrooms, children tend not ch children tend not to be able to focus on learning. But uh, kung baga nagiging hindi sila uh, mapakale pag nagaaral kasi hindi po sila komportable sa nakapalibot nilang sitwasyon sa pag-aaral. Kaya po napaka-importante ang mga school facilities sa learning uh, capability or uh, assimilation ng ating mga kabataan. Okay. Uh, in, on, on my part, uh, Yusek, uh, while we're fixing the... Of course, building classrooms is not as easy as, as uh, we can do overnight. But uh, I would like to encourage again the department to look at other ways to improve um, enrollment. No, because it's quite concerning that uh, the region that we are trying to to deliver peace, no, the region we're trying to develop, uh, is the region that we have the lowest enrollment. No? And uh, there's there's far-reaching consequences to that because if you don't have an educated populace, uh, they cannot find jobs. And if you cannot find jobs, then you know, the, the vicious cycle of uh, instability will happen again. So... Uh, we'll work hard. I'll work with um, Senator Padilla in looking for ways to increase the monetary assistance to BARM, especially on classroom. But the other non the other non tangibles. Now, for example, uh, yung mga brigada escuela or encouraging parents to bring their, their their students to school or even using the LGUs. The LGUs has a lot of persuading powers on the ground. No and. Uh, uh, let's let's use them to encourage more students to go into uh, to go to to enroll and go to school. Okay. We we note of your suggestions, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, we will uh, go back to the our boardroom to talk about this in detail, uh -huh. and uh, we will coordinate with the NESISA, uh, with the agency concerned, the DALG in particular, Your Honor. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, point of inquiry. Yes, go ahead, uh, Senator Pimentel. Uh, before you leave the matter of young enrollment rate. Uh, 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 mabilis kasi yung pag-flash nung uh, ano ba tawag mo doon? Bar chart. Um, uh, may nakita ko mga, may mga 101%, 106%. Can we explain how come some of the percentages are above 100%? Yeah, Mr. Chair, can I ask uh, Director Roger of our planning service to explain why? Actually, that's my chart uh... Because this this can artificially bring the total average at 99 because may 100 may 110 percent. How can we explain that, uh, Mr. Chairman? Uh, yeah, that's my chart, but that's from the Ed LIS, the Learner uh, Information System. Can we ask uh, you to explain? Yeah, Director Roger of our planning service, Your Honor. Um. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, um, the the hundred percent, um, more than hundred percent net enrollment rate in this uh, in this slide is brought about by the uh, surge of enrollment in some of the areas. Um, in it's mostly in the cities. Like for example, uh, in small cities, there are uh, there are deludes of transferees from other regions or other divisions to next divisions. And also, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, isa sa mga natitingnan namin dito ng mga sa mga problema is that the population data that we are using for this uh, to compute the net enrollment rate is based on the 2010 population census. So, I guess there is now a need for us, with the help of PSA to provide that ed, with the latest data on population so that we can get the most uh, accurate computation for the net enrollment. But 100%, uh, more than 100% net enrollment is possible because of migration of learners. Uh, well, dapat, dapat bumaba naman yung <laughs> rate. Bumaba yung percentage dun sa pinanggalingan. But uh, just a warning, uh, Mr. Chairman, because we always look at the total, 99%, baka we get the misimpression na, oh, yan taas. Yung pala may mga 110%, which is, uh, you know, uh, a strange uh, figure if we want to measure uh, enrollment rate. Diba? Ang, ang, ibig sabihin na, ang ibig sabihin kasi niyan, uh, 
Gawin nating uh, for example 100,000 ang expected enrollees natin sa lugar, 110,000 ang nag-enroll. Uh, so there's something wrong with the denominator actually the the uh, base the base number that we are uh, computing the rate on. So I hope the DepEd reviews this para mas accurate po yung ating uh, figure lalo na yung total figure po natin. Yes, go ahead uh, Director Masapol. Um I clarified with the staff of Senator Win. Uh, the figures being uh, shown in the the slide is just a comparison of the uh, enrollment right now and then the previous enrollment. This is not um, this is not a net enrollment ratio, uh, Senator Pimentel. Okay, so para sa akin, I can completely disregard this chart kung wala palang meaning ito. Tama pa ba yun, Mr. Chairman? Ganun po ba ang gagawin natin? No, the, the, what uh, I wanted to point out is the BARM enrollment. Um, because compared to last year, it's uh, only 89% uh, compared to last year. And if you look at the other slide, which is the trend of the enrollment, uh, you can see that for all, almost all um, school levels, it's going down. No? So the trend there is uh, we're not getting uh, the number of students in BARM enrolling. Oh, oh yes, I get it. So para pala inflation ito year on year, parang ganon. Mm. Yes, yes, correct. Uh, so, so yung presyo ng isang uh, bagay, uh, this year kinumpare natin sa last year. Opa. So uh, naiintindi ako na. So maybe the heading should be changed, Mr. Chairman, kasi sa bilis nung uh, pag-flash, eh, na-alarma lang po ako kasi uh, maganda naman yung basic education din na naibigay sa atin noong panahon natin pagdating sa mathematics. Eh. <laughs> We will uh, 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 gladly comply with the suggestion of Senator Pimentel who graduated uh, and concentrated in math in his uh, undergraduate uh, course. So uh, talagang alam namin kayo ang expert sa math. Uh, is it my time now to to, to ask questions, Mr. Mr. Chairman? Summa cum laude yan, Mr. Chairman. Oo, summa cum laude pa sa math rin. <laughs> Uh, is it my turn, Mr. Chairman, to ask questions? Yes, yes, go ahead, Senator Pimentel. Okay, good, good. Well, uh, let me uh, commend and congratulate the DepEd because I have read DO34. At least doon, uh, the uh, right of parents and of uh, students not to be vaccinated is respected. Uh, so, Parang there, there is, I, I, have, I don't read anything in the department order which gives the impression that they are, uh, they are trying to force or mandate the vaccination of the parents and the students. Wala po doon. So congratulations for that. I, know that I, I agree with such a position. And then it, there is just a paragraph there na uh, there will be a team which will move around to encourage vaccination, to to lecture on the benefits of vaccination. So on that point, uh, am I correct on that point, uh, Yusek Dinsing? And if I am correct, let me now let me congratulate and commend the DepEd on that. You're very right, Mr. Chair. Uh, Your Honor. Correct. So okay, yan, ano? So keep keep up keep up the good work. Naganon sana yung attitude nati. So in effect, in effect, uh, this is actually a uh, this may be part of a uh, larger no discrimination policy. So tama po yun. And uh, I, uh, I will support you uh, in this no discrimination policy that you are currently observing. Uh, ngayon na si Yusek Dinsing mentioned curriculum and instruction. I am very interested in that, uh, sir, kasi I, I want to, parang, I think in the... Uh, we are providing for around 200 days, no? For uh, 203 to 220 days, uh, school days in a school year. At least 203, yeah, Your Honor. Yes, at least 203 to, uh, to a maximum of 220, if I, if I, if I recall correctly, no? Uh, so I'm interested in looking at the, how the students, how our learners spend their time, yung 203 days nila. 
So that is that is largely dictated by the uh, curriculum. So is the curriculum uh, wh where is the uh, online resource that we can visit so that we can uh, study in detail the curriculum for all the grade levels uh, under basic and uh, under basic education and uh, high school education. Your Honor. Uh, if I refer this to Director Leila Ariola of our curriculum and instruction, who is online, Director Leila. Director, you're recognized. Director Ariola. Director Leila, can you hear us? Um, yes, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, I was not able to raise the, the question. Will you please kindly repeat? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, anyway, it's, I was just asking for uh, information, so maybe the DEPED can communicate with the committee and my office. Just give us the, you know, give us the uh, online resource, if any, Yung mga, anong tawag mo dyan, URL, mga ganun. And, and if, this, if the curriculum, if the entire curriculum is not online, can it be sent in writing to, the, uh, to my office through the committee, uh, Mr. Chairman? Because, uh, why am I asking for the curriculum? Meron po akong bill, uh, Yusek uh, Dinsing and uh, Director Ariola uh, to introduce... Uh, age appropriate computer programming na sa basic education na po natin ang, ang ang habol ko sana is at the earliest possible time may interest na yung ating mga kabataan ng ating mga elementary school students sa computer programming computer science uh, introduction to the computer because they will grow up in a highly technical and scientific world anyway where uh, goods may be a lot of goods may be digital already a lot of ser services will be delivered online so that is that is the uh, reason why I, I have filed this bill so i hope that the deped can study this and uh, uh, if i'm not mistaken you have a uh, curriculum committee Tama po ba yun, Yusek Dinsing? And, uh, uh, strand on curriculum and instruction, Your Honor. Yes, there is. So, can I request for uh, an immediate uh, reaction from DepEd through the curriculum committee on my uh, said proposal to introduce age-appropriate computer programming as early as possible to our learners? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, with respect to your request for links and information, we will provide the committee and your office of your request. And second, with respect to comments on your uh, proposed bill, if we can get a copy of your bill, we will ask our curriculum and instruction strand to make their comments on it, Your Honor. Yung mga issues ba, sir, sa mga libro noon na may sinasabi na books na uh, mali-mali ang information na nakalagay, um, factual statements which are not correct, and then uh, some are even expressing uh, uh, partisan uh, political leanings or expression. Medyo, medyo disguised lang nga in a way. So, nalinis na po ba natin lahat itong mga reading materials natin? Because, uh, no, the, the, the people are spending for this, di ba, through our taxes. So, dapat uh, uh, neutral lang ating, politically neutral lang ating mga libro given our learners and factually correct dapat, well-researched and factually correct and informative. Uh, Yusek Dinsing? Your Honor, the DepEd has created an error watch committee and this is led by ASEC Alma. If ASEC Alma is uh, on board, can you brief uh, Senator Pimentel of what has been done uh, via the error watch committee? Ah, wala, wala. Director Alma, you're recognized? Asik Alma. Ah, Asik Alma. Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Yes, we would like to confirm that we, uh, that DepEd had uh, created an error watch committee and uh, the committee is uh, 
uh, will uh, address all the errors, uh, alleged errors uh, as contained in our SLMs and other LRs. And uh, this uh, uh, the error watch, watch committee uh, the, the central office had also tasked the various levels of governance to like our schools, our uh, division offices and the regional offices to create their own error watch committee, po, Mr. Chair. Uh, the, I'm glad to hear that. But uh, when was this committee created, uh, Yusek Dinsing and the uh, direct uh, ASEC? Uh, Yusek, uh, when... Uh, you said, if I may, uh, when we, yes, Mr. Chair, when we uh, shifted to the use of uh, our SLMs for our uh, blended, lear uh, blended learning, we had created our Deputy Error Watch Community Paw. And that was uh, two years ago, Paw. Two years ago, okay. Two years ago. So how come how come you you still use the phrase uh, alleged errors? Ang ibig niyo po bang sabihin after two years wala pa po kayong nahanap? Uh, uh, sir, um, there were some instances that uh, the errors submitted to uh, the central office, particularly with our DepEd uh, Error Watch Committee, were not were not really treated as errors as validated by our uh, writer's fault. Ah, okay. Uh, for those errors which were validate, validated that were not really in order, these were uh, uh, corrected by our uh, the, the committee which is manning our debit error watch fault. Okay. So, so Mr. Chairman... And Chair, for that, we ah. have issued po errata. Okay, can, can Mr. Chairman, can we request for a uh, report from the said committee on what they have uh, done in two years, as uh, so your allegations and what they found out? Uh, is is this is this uh, is that is that easy to do? Uh, uh, Asek, uh, you have, you, I think you have all a compilation, naman siguro, di ba? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. sir. Okay, so please, if if that can be uh, submitted be, 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 before the creation of this committee, kasi kung two years old lang ito, bago lang po ito, di ba meron dating may high profile uh, uh, teacher in a private school yata, he was very high profile and he kept on uh, uh, pointing out the errors in the books. Uh, be, being ordered by the DepEd. Yung mga, yung mga past allegations na yon, solved na po yon? Tapos na po yon? Uh, yes. Uh... Uh, Yusek Dinsing, you, you give us the guarantee? That, yeah, that, yeah, that, Mr. Chair, with respect to your request of uh, getting what uh, the information or corrections made by the Error Watch Committee, we, for the last two years, we will commit to submit. We will also commit that we will have a bureaucracy-wide error watch where we will ask everybody to, uh, to submit all errors that they've seen on the ground, and this may also include the public. So the public may also, we will create a, 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 a bureaucracy-wide or even public-wide uh, information gathering for any potential error or comments that they have on our learning materials. Uh, Your Honor, this is part of the directives of Senator, uh, of... Uh, the Vice President and Secretary Sara. It's just we are doing this in stages. We are in the stage of organizing the whole and stabilizing the whole uh, DepEd agency, and we've done that in the last two weeks. The next step is really looking at these problems that have been recurring for many years or even decades. We will address this immediately, and that has been the, our marching orders, uh, Your Honor, uh, Senator Pimentel. Very, uh, very, very good. I, I, I agree with your uh, policy again. And uh, one one more agreement. I would like to commend the stand also of uh, I don't know if this is stand of the deped or the personal position of uh, Yusek Dinsing. Yung uh, when you said na sinabi niyo po na yung GASPE, did I did ba na GASPE po yung G A? Ano po yung acronym ng program? Government Assistance to Students, Teachers, and Private Education. Yes, G, G, G A S T P E. Correct, Your Honor. Ah, uh, that that GASPE program. 
that it should also the benefits of that program should extend to barm the barm territory even to uh, territorial jurisdiction a uh, territory under the jurisdiction of the barm kasi syempre of course this is about education this is about children helping our children so i completely agree with you so let us uh, kaya nga rin ako nagtataka rin ako doon you sick din sing that uh, in the budget process sometimes when we when we want to amend the GAA and uh, allocate an amount to the barm we are given a caution na hindi daw pwedeng tulungan ng national government ang regional government so uh, i disagree with this you know so that, i agree with your uh, opinion that uh, the national should be allowed to help the autonomous region uh, Binigyan lang naman, ginawa ng, ginawa ng constitution. Uh, we are allowed to have two autonomous regions. Cordillera has opted not to have yet their autonomous region. The bar has uh, opted to have an autonomous region. Oh, that is allowed by the constitution uh, as, uh, as uh, affirmative action, as a concession to this place para bumilis po ang economic progress doon. Uh, ma-preserve po nila yung kanilang distinctive uh, culture and way of life. Yun po yung yun po yung purposes niyan. So, helping national government, helping the autonomous region or the regional government should not be uh, prohibited. So, uh, Yusek Din Singh, pag-aralan din natin itong GASPI program, how and uh, tell us how we can categorically state in the law that national government through this GASPI program is allowed to extend the coverage of the program into the BARM uh, territory, uh, Yusek Din Singh. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we'll just look at the special provisions on this and uh, hopefully we can uh, give in to the request of BARM. Again, this was mentioned by, specifically mentioned by Minister Iqbal, that they be given a portion of that gas pay for BARM. Sige. Pero tama ba ako nung sinabi ko that you, you expressed a position on the matter? Tama po ba yan? And did, did I appreciate your position correctly? Apo. During our dialogue with uh, Minister Iqbal, yun po bilanggit ko. Kasi sabi nga sa kanila, wala daw silang gaspe. Natigil na yata noong 2020. Ang position ko po, uh, National Law ang Republic Act 8535 does not accept a, a, uh, a sta the state of Barm. I, I agree with you. And then uh, just a reminder, uh, Yusek Dinsing, to all those uh, in the DepEd right now who may have been involved in the procurement of the laptops, yung questionable laptops, maybe not in the bidding but in the acceptance of the, of the items, uh, tell them to prepare because we will have a hearing, I think, if I'm not mistaken, August uh, 25, Blue Ribbon Committee hearing on the uh, PSDBM's procurement of the Dell laptops, 1.8 gigahertz ang mga spe yung speed uh, when, when DepEd uh, specified the 1.9 gigahertz. So, pakihan, yung, pakisabihan na lang po yung mga taong involved pa na nandiyan pa sa DepEd ngayon to prepare so that uh, they will be able to explain uh, the background of the uh, transaction. Uh, we, will, we will, Your Honor, Senator yes. Pimentel. And then one last observation, because you also mentioned about the splitting of the uh, Department of Education, na tayo lang yung bansang tatlo ang uh, ahensya ng gobyerno taking care of uh, education. If, uh, if my research is correct, I think we did this in 1994. Tama po ba yun, Yusek Dinsing? When, Tama po, yun, after EDCOM. After yeah, well, well, 1994 when we created CHED and then we created TESDA. So that is uh, ilang, ilang years ago na po yun, 28 years ago. So tayo ba'y ano, uh, umasenso o umatras? Using, using not our opinion but using metrics, um, measurements. Uh, recognized internationally. Ano po ang, ano po ang uh, pwede natin maging uh, conclusion, Yusek Dinsing? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, for the agency, we reserve our opinion on that. No? <laughs> Pero if you ask me personally, having, being an educator and uh, having uh, 
monitored the K-12 since uh, it was enacted into law in 2013. I think we've worsened. And the, the metrics, there are international uh, assessments and evaluations which, which uh, tells us that uh, we really worsened since 2013. And uh, hindi po natin, uh, wag po natin itago yung katotohanan na yan. Kasi kung hindi natin tatanggapin yung katotohanan na yan, paano tayo gagawa ng mga solusyon? E ngayon, pa, pa, paano maging, uh, pa, maging uh, solusyon yung pag-join ulit? Na ilagay natin sa isang departamento lang ang the entirety of education. You think, you think this, this can help? O maganda na rin itong na... Meron ng, meron ng concentration yung tatlo. Uh, meron, nakaka-develop kayo ng expertise sa basic education. Nakatutok din kayo dyan. So, uh, ano pong masasabi nyo doon po sa, sa contrary uh, stand na yon Your Honor, uh, ang tawag po kasi dyan sa management is unity of command. So, ang education sector, sa basic education, nakakonekta po yan sa higher education. Nakakonekta din po yan sa sa TESDA. At ipo, kung titingnan po ninyo ang uh, grade 11 and 12, ganun po ang pinaka-concepto niyan. Uh, gustong mag-college. Kaya nga ang, ang sa ibang bansa dyan, sa Lamao po sa Japan, pagkatapos po nilang uh, graduate ng, uh, ng basic education, doon niya natin makikita ang mga studyanteng pwedeng mag-higher education. Doon rin natin makikita ang studyanteng ang vocational course or sa vocational courses. So kung mayroong unity of command, madali po itong magkumpas makakumpas sa mga learners po natin. So ngayon, merong dis, uh, uh, merong disalignment at kung hindi ako nagkakamali in the past, merong minsang hindi maayos na, na uh, pag-uusap ang higher education sa basic education. Mabanggit ko na rin sa isang pag-uusap namin ni, ni uh, Vice President na isa sa mga tugon kaya po galit, maraming magulang ang nagagalit na walang uh, Walang value daw ang K-12 dahil uh, nagdagdag ka lang ng dalawang taon uh, at nagdagdag ng dalawang taon ng pag-aaral bago graduate yung estudyante. E ang bagit ko nga po niyan noong 2015, naalala ko po talaga yon at pinag-uusapan namin yan, na ang maraming mga common courses sa college, sa higher education, ay ibababa sa grade 11 and 12. So dapat nabawasan na ang taon ng pag-aaral sa higher education. Pero kung mapapansin po natin, uh, bumalik na naman sa apat na taon ng higher education at uh, most probably kailangan sagutin ito ng ating kapatid na ahensya ng Commission on Higher Education kung bakit dadadagdag ito. May talagay po ako na magpapaproof yung ating mga commercial educational institutions ng additional subject at ina-approve naman ito ng higher education. Kaya nagiging apat na taon na naman ang uh, college education natin. Thereby, yung purpose na... Bawasan ang college education dahil nga ibinaba natin sa senior high school na sana naging tatlong taon na lang ay hindi natin nakakamit dahil nagkakaroon ng palusot yung mga commercial educational institutions na madagdagan o na ang nawala na subject dahil inilipat po ito sa senior high school. Siguro ito yung mga bagay na dapat tingnan natin. Kaya tuloy nagagalit yung ating mga magulang dahil ang senior high school dapat pag graduate ka, employable ka na. At dahil uh, dinagdagan ng dalawang taon, dahil yung common courses sa college inailagay sa senior high school, dapat naman nabawasan yung uh, college years natin at least to three years. At uh, ito po hindi nangyari at naintindihan po natin ang galit ng maraming magulang sa K-12 program dahil dagdagdag nga ng dalawang taon, hindi nakapagtrabaho yung anak, in-extend mo pa ang uh, unang pag-aaral instead ng babawasan. Sige, Th thank you for that input. No? Kaya, nga, kaya nga gusto ko tignan yung... Uh yearly curriculum, titignan natin ng time and motion study ng uh, the whole uh, 13 years of uh, basic uh, and high school education. Pero kayo po, Yusek Dinsing, you're, you're familiar with the educational system sa ibang bansa. Yung ibang bansa na may K-12, ilang years lang po ang college nila? For, for example, at saka anong bansa yon? Depende ko sa kurso eh. Merong uh, hmm. kung, uh, mabigat po yung kurso na akin lang ila, Honbao Engineering, nadadagdagan pa rin. Uh, hindi na five years, naging four years. Pero nababawasan po eh. At least by one year. Yun po, uh, Your Honor. I get it. I'll say I get it. So, so, uh, so yun po yun. Ano? So, uh, 28 years ago, we, we did this. And uh, so, we will, uh, we have to re-examine our educational system and I think Mr. Chairman yung 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 proposal mo yata na, na approve na po yun di ba 
yes, yes, yes. Na-approve na. Yes. Uh, so, that's... So, and for, for how long, ilang months tayo maghihintay for the uh, new recommendations po? Well, uh, EDCOM is given three years, uh, but uh, we're going to give recommendations um, hopefully shorter than three years, no? because three years is a long time for education to wait. Every year we have new graduates, so the sooner we can give uh, recommendations, the better. No? Okay, just, just to uh, organize my thoughts, Mr. Chairman, an argument in favor of uh, having just one department for the entire education, uh, education, educational system is uh, unity of command, while the argument now in favor of maintaining the uh, current system is that we are developing expertise and we have uh, an entire uh, group of people dedicated to concentrating on the sector and solving the problems of that sector. So it's a, it's a question of policy. So uh aralan po natin mabuti ito and we'll be, we will listen to the arguments uh, for and against the uh, proposal to consolidate again in one governmental entity all matters about education. So with that, uh, I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and the DepEd family for the time that uh, you've given to me. Salamat po. Thank you, Senator Pimentel, for those uh, insights. We recognize uh, once again uh, Senator Padilla for his questions. Marami salamat po, Chairman. Gusto ko lamang pong magpasalamat sa ating uh, Senador, sa ating Chairman mula sa Valenzuela at sa ating pong uh, Senador mula sa Cagayan de Oro sa pagpapatibay uh, po ng suporta sa BARM. Maraming maraming salamat po. May gusto lamang po akong itanong uli sa ating mga tiga DepEd. Yung po bang uh, alam naman din po ninyo no? dahil meron na po kayong partnership sa DOH na napakababa ng, ng vaccination sa BARM. Ito naman po ay katotohanan at merong siyang mga datos. Tanong ko po, yun po ba sa, sa pasukan na magaganap, meron po ba kayong polisiya na hindi pwedeng pumasok Walang bakuna, teacher man o estudyante? Ay, wala pong ganun polisiya. Uh, banggit po kanina, uh, nire-recognize po namin na hindi dapat i-require uh, ang pagbabakuna. So, maghahalo po talaga ang mga bakunado at hindi bakunado. Ang importante po, pagdating po sa loob ng classroom, ay naka-minimum public health standards ang setup. May ventilator. Na, naka na ilinaw po ba ito sa po, farm? Po na doon po ang meron po ba kayong pag-uusap ng um, uh, education minister nila kasi ang nakikita ko pong uh, suliranin dito informasyon informasyon alam naman po natin pagdating sa malalayong lugar sa BARM ay kailangan nyo po talagang problehin ang uh, pagbibigay ng informasyon dahil bukod po sa palaging walang kuryente doon, ay malalayo po ang lugar. Uh, talagang kailangan po ng impormasyon talaga. Your Honor, Mr. Senator, ang BARM po ay autonomous region. Opo, so, opo. Ang... Mali na po sa atin yun. Opo. Pero eh, katulad po ng pinag-uusapan po natin dito, wag natin alisin ng responsibilidad natin. <laughs> ang lalabas po nito, dapat meron silang sarili nilang, kumbaga department order sa kanilang ministro. Ang gagawin po namin, yung acting department order 34, ay ating ihain, baka pwede pong may mga provision doon na pwedeng i-adapt ng uh, Ministry of Education ng BARM. Kasi inire-recognize din po natin ang kanilang uh, independence or autonomy with respect to issuing out uh, rules and regulations sa kanilang uh, ministry or sa kanilang region. Opo, kasi hindi naman po porket sinabing autonomia, wala na po tayong pakialam. Kasi katulad po ng sinabi ng datos, napakaliit po ng enrollment. Kailangan po natin alamin kung saan nang galing ito. Kasi kung patungkol po sa pag-aaral, masisipag po mag-aaral ang mga tiga doon. Yan po ay eh, katotohanan yan at nais nila talagang mag-aral. Kailangan lang po natin itong mahukay, malaman kung saan nang galing itong noong figures na ito. Dahil napakababa po talaga nito. At dapat po siguro talaga ay makipag-ugnayan po tayo sa 
uh, minister ng BARM, uh, hindi po ito dapat palagpasin natin. Opo, Your Honor. In fact, meron kaming uh, uh, assistant secretary for special concerns at isa sa kanyang malinaw na responsibilidad ay patuloy na makipag-ugnayan sa BARM kasi gusto natin masigurado na aligned po yung kanilang curriculum sa pambansa at itong mga pag-uusap po ninyo, binabanggit po ninyo, ay maihlahad natin at masabi at magkaroon ho ng coordination para matulungan din namin sila sa pangangailangan ng BARM. Okay. Kasi yung, national government. yung uh, kung tama pa yung pagkakaintindi ko, yung data na pinakita sa atin, BARM yun. BARM. Wala po doon kung ano yung mga lugar na yun. Opo, sana malaman natin kung saan ba po yun. Magindanaw ba po yun? O Lanaw? Para makita po natin ano. Kasi napakahalaga po nito, mga mahal naming uh, kasama sa DepEd. Maraming salamat po. Meron po kaming detalye kung gusto nyo po magbibigay po kami sa opisina ninyo. Ayun, maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat. Uh, sundan ko lang po yung uh, sinabi ni Senator Padilla. Uh, uh, 89% in enrollment in BARM. Uh, so lumalabas there are about 11% who didn't enroll. Uh, that's about 114,000 students na hindi nag-enroll sa BARM alone. No? So uh, that's a challenge for all of us, including ourselves, no? including the Senate. Kasi uh, importante ang BARM para sa bansa natin. No? And I be truly believe that uh, uh, true prosperity cannot be achieved if one region will be left behind. No? So, important to be united. So, thank you, Senator Padilla, for Mr. Chairman. Giving emphasis on that. Yes, Senator Binay, go ahead. Uh, uh, but, dun sa usapin sa war, Mr. Chairman, maybe in the next hearing we can invite yung mga uh, representatives from BARM. If I remember it correctly, dun sa mga dating hearings natin, uh, na iimbitahan sila. Para we can get then an update uh, from them. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Senator Bina, you will have a special session um, because uh, the data is saying that uh, special attention is uh, needed uh, for the region. So we'll have a special session solely to uh, address BARM issues. And we'll invite uh, Minister Iqbal, who is the Minister of Education of the region. And of course, DepEd, how to find solutions to uh, help them you know, in terms of their immediate need. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And then, babalikan ko lang just for clarification, dun sa usapin ng K to twelve. Um, you said dancing. Are you suggesting na ah uh, bawasan yung number of years ah uh, ng schooling? Because if I remember it, then correctly, Mr. Chairman, di ba isa din dun sa usapin kung bakit ah uh, nagdagdag tayo dun sa number of years? Kasi may mga kababayan tayo na nag ah uh, tatrabaho abroad na hindi sila natatanggap because apparently parang kulang yung school years nila. Uh, Your Honor, uh, Mad Madam Senator, hindi po namin sinasuggest na bawasan yung K-12. K-12 pa rin pero gusto namin itama ang curriculum sa senior high school na naka-align ito sa pangangailangan ng industriya. Kasi ang uh, pinaka-objective ng K-12 ay may, may sigurado natin na pag graduate ka ng K-12, ikaw ay employable na. Ang problema lang po, nung graduate, hindi sila mag-employ kasi hindi po yun ang pangangailangan ng industriya. So, iaayusin po natin yung curriculum ng, ng senior high school para maitama ito na graduate sila, mabibigyan sila mas mataas na uh, kasiguraduhan na sila'y magkakatrabaho. Agree po, um, Isaac Densing, kasi uh, baka lang may mga magulang na magkaro na ma-interpret yung mga statements na akala nila babalik ulit dun sa uh, dati at hindi na itutuloy itong K-12. Um, sige, moving on to another topic. Can we just, kasi hindi mo nabanggit din sa presentation nyo, itong problema ho natin sa mga nagsasarang private schools. Um, di ba, last week lang, nagsara, nagsara itong Colegio de San Lazaro and then uh, I read there's a statement from somebody from DepEd uh, Region 7 na parang dun sa rehiyo na yun, 100 private schools who ata yung magsasara. Can we just get an update, uh, Mr. Chairman? And alam din naman natin, Mr. Chairman, di ba, before uh, pandemic happened, 
uh, umiiyak na itong mga private schools kasi nga uh, pababa ng pababa yung mga nag enroll sa mga skwelahan nila. Yan lang po. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, ipapasa ko po kay Director uh, uh, Masaol, Masapol yung uh, da datos ukol sa mga nagsasarang mga private school. Masapol ho, hindi Masahol. Masapol. Permission to go home, Mr. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead now. <laughs> okay, so um, thank you for the question, uh, Senator Binay. Um, yes po, isa po sa impact nung, ano, nung pandemic ay ang tinamaan ng matindi ang mga private schools. So may mga, we recorded po ng uh, uh, sure ng mga private schools from 20, 2019, 2020, 2020, 2021 na lahat uh, umabot po ng 1,024 uh, and then uh, pero po ito ay 1,179 private schools ang hindi nakapag-open pero po ito pa ay combination ng mga schools na una, may mga schools po na talagang officially nagsabi na hindi na talaga kami, hindi na namin kaya magsasara na kami permanently and then um, ito ay 398 at may mga schools naman po na uh, nagsabi na we, we will be closing temporarily. So it's a combination of permanent closure and then a temporary closure. And then mayroon pong mga schools din na pinabayaan lang na walang, hindi nagkasabit ng enrollment, zero enrollment yung mga schools na yon. Pero we don't know, magsasara ba sila o babalik pa, mag, magbubukas uli because wala silang notification. Kasi po sa DepEd, uh, we just recognize na nagsara sila if they notify us Officially, na kami po ay magsasara because of the following reason, kami po ay temporarily magsasara but we will open in the following school year. So, um, Senator Nancy, mayroon po tayong more than a thousand so nag, na, 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 na record na nagsara pero this is a combination of officially nagsara at temporarily nagsara at yung iba zero enrollment lang. And ano ho yung forecast natin? Mas madadagdagan pa itong 1,000? Um, na Nakapag-record po tayo ng mga nagsara noong uh, yung mga zero enrollment noong 2019-2020. Mayroon pong more than 200 na nag-reopen ng mga private school. So medyo po ma bumabawi ng konti pero hindi pa siya lubusan na kabawi yung ibang mga private school na zero enrollment. Okay, and meron ho bang, or gumagawa ho ba ng pag-aaral ang DepEd kung paano natin uh, mapipigilan itong patuloy na pagsasara ng mga private schools? Well, ang pinaka-main reason po, uh, Senator, uh, based on our uh, uh, conversation with some private schools na nagsara, kasi yung iba po, i-benerify namin, ano ba talaga yung reason ba't nagsara? Unang-una po talaga nag-dwindle yung kanilang enrollment. So, di na talaga kaya magpatuloy. So, nag-stop nag sila. And then, yung iba po is, uh, they are really financially challenged doon sa, during the two years of pandemic. Kaya nga po, naghihingi din po yung ibang private school ng financial assistance na kagaya ng binigay natin sa mga public schools during the two years of uh, school closure. So, um, on top of that, di po mayroon pa tayong gaste. So mayroon, pong, mayroon po tayong mga ano. Pero po ang karamihan po sa nagsara po kasi yung uh, mga elementary sa mga kinder. Karamihan sa mga nagsara. So baka nga po, factor po yung isang proposal ng DepEd na baka pwedeng i-extend yung gaste sa elementary para lang ma mabigyan din. Ng, kasi may mga marami pong mga private school na elementary lang talaga ang ino-offer at kinder lang. So ang ating assistance ngayon right now, uh, ng government is uh, was is focused on junior high school and senior high school. Sa, sa senior, we have voucher program. Sa junior high school, we have education service contracting. But we don't have for elementary. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, kung natatandaan mo, di ba, isa to dun sa... Ito yung topic na pinag-usapan natin bago tayo nag-quarantine, yung uh, konsepto ng complement, complementary between the private and... um public schools, de ba? So, uh, sayang naman kasi meron ng facilities itong mga private school. Uh, baka magandang i-explore talaga ng DepEd kung uh, ano yung kumbaga uh, partnership na pwede nilang gawin. Yun lang pa, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. 
Thank you, Senator Binay, for uh, for that. Um, uh, Director, how many schools to date, private schools to date, uh, that closed? Yung na, na record po namin, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, for the last two years po is um, umabot po siya ng 1,179 for the two years po. Nakita ko sa enrollment natin, uh, even though we have private schools that close, but our enrollment in public schools tumaas. So, yeah, the uh, obviously the effect was um, our private school students transferred to uh, public schools. No, but uh, I want to continue what uh, Senator Bina mentioned earlier to look into the possibility of uh, expanding our voucher program to use the schools. No, because um, if there are, I don't have the exact number of classrooms. If there are. 100, 1,179 private schools that closed, uh, those facilities can be used by our senior high school or even junior high school. You know? um, because right now, the backlog uh, for classroom is, if I'm not, if my uh, notes is correct, is about 80 billion you know, worth. You know? So, uh, later on, along in, in, in a different hearing, we'll look at uh, the possibility of expanding uh, uh, the voucher program to, to, to maximize the uh, facilities of uh, private schools that are not being used. So, in other words, we hit two birds with one stone. We help them operate, and then at the same time, we'll, look, we'll, we'll fulfill uh, the backlog in terms of classrooms. We'll, we'll talk about that later on. Um, I have a Another, I have two more questions, no? but I thank the senators for uh, asking a lot of important questions. This is on the topic of uh, learning poverty. And uh, let me just um, uh, show a slide. Um, in October 2019, the World Bank uh, estimated that the learning poverty in the Philippines is about 69.5%. So meaning... Uh, seven, almost 70%, seven out of 10 uh, children aged 10, year old, 10, 10 years old uh, cannot read uh, a simple story. Uh, this is pre-pandemic level. And then during the pandemic level, the 69% went up to 90%. You know? So meaning nine out of 10 children who are 10 years old cannot read a simple story. So definitely, um, the pandemic created a lot of damage in terms of uh, reading, reading and comprehension. And if you look at the learning adjusted years of schooling, uh, this is actually from UNICEF. Uh, in simple terms, nabawasan yung kanilang years of schooling equivalent. So a student who graduated uh, in grade 12 no, and took up 13 years of schooling would have only learned about 5.8 years, no? bumaba from seven years to 5.8 years. So again, the pandemic did a lot of damage no? in our um, education system. In fact, uh, my fear is the scarring effect. No? Some of them will be very difficult to uh, to repair. No? Um, so my, my question is, uh, just a quick answer from DepEd. What are we doing to improve uh, the uh, uh, to recover from the damage that the pandemic created, uh, specifically reading and the most uh, fundamental uh, skills like mathematics and reading. So, uh, what uh, what is the DepEd planning in the next uh, one year no? uh, to 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 recover you know, from uh, from from the the effects of the pandemic? Your Honor, two aspects. No? Uh, one, on the short term, uh, we will do a lot of, uh, at our level, management by exception and micromanagement in specific areas where we can improve the learning uh, capabilities of our learners and improve the, the teaching capabilities of our teachers on the short term. Uh, 
because we're trying to put up small fire, small, many small fires at the moment in the education sector. But in the long term, uh, we will be adapting the Basic Education Development Plan 2030, which was, uh, which was uh, de devised by the administration of Sec Liling uh, Briones and uh, uh, VP and Secretary Saras agreed to adopt, adopt the major principles of this BEDP. So in the long run, this is something that we will, add, we will use for purposes of improving the learning capability of our, of our learners. In fact, we already have some chart that uh, if we do not, for instance, the, the, uh, the learning capability or minimum, the proficiency, for instance, in mathematics, a specific area, if there will be no intervention and in, in, we will not uh, implement, for instance, the BEDP 2030, uh, without intervention, the learning uh, proficiency will be as low as 18.61 of our learners. However, if we are to implement fully uh, and properly BEDP 2030, the learning capability will go as high as 92 to 97%. That is in the long run. But again, to be able to do this, we have to address the small fires surrounding the education industry. And part of this is really the clogging or the burdening our teachers of administrative work. Face-to-face, uh, -face in-person in classes is very critical to our learners because it has impact in, in, in uh, psychosocial uh, learning environment. And of course, to be able to have interaction for purposes of additional learning. So this will be the small fires that we will be uh, focusing on. And more importantly, the facilities, which is very critical. We do not want really to continue with the quicksand. We want to go out of the quicksand and uh, uh, congressional intervention giving DepEd additional budget for, for classrooms is very critical. Uh, to our mind, this has been the criticism uh, against DepEd for many years, and uh, it only worsened because uh, of the misinterpretation of the DOF and the D DBM that uh, school buildings is part of the devolution under the Mandanas Garcia ruling. I would think uh, we are in the position, and this is the position of the Vice President and Secretary Sara, that it is not. And she made that clear through a letter. And uh, hopefully, if we were to be given the chance, I feel that there is that absorption capacity. I believe in the past we've done uh, a lot of facilities building, uh, despite the fact that these are big uh, chunks of amount because of the pre uh, detailed engineering that has already been set up by your owner. So these are the three things that we have to do in the next one to two years, at the same time implementing the BEDP 2030, your honor. You, uh, you said, may I suggest that uh, immediately look at the reading uh, capabilities of our uh, students, specifically kindergarten all the way to grade three, you know, in key stage one. Uh, this is very important because, as we all know, these are the early years that students uh, absorb their uh, lessons and develop skills. And um, we need to address reading. And uh, without addressing reading, it's hard to move into other complex subjects no? like mathematics, aralin panlipunan, and other things. No? So reading is such an important skill that our students need to learn today you know and uh, from the data not only the world bank data unicef data pati yung alam niyo naman ng pisa everything is pointing the same thing eh. our the students cannot read and anecdotally when i go around marami talagang bata hindi marunong magbasa no so this is a low hanging fruit that uh, the department can pick uh, in the next 3 months 6 months but the impact no is quite uh, significant because you can teach a kid to read in the, in three months, and mahaka mahaka ano na siya. He can already uh, he can already uh, move on no, to the next grade level. And uh, in Valenzuela, when I, I talk to our teachers there, and uh, talagang malaking problema in reading. So let's let's uh, my suggestion, my humble suggestion to focus on that because uh, malaking ang impact lang just by training our students to to read uh, in in three months. And you'll see the impact uh, significantly uh, for the next lifetime. No? We will do that, Your Honor. And, and my last question is on the feeding program. No? Uh, this year, 
uh, we allocated 3.3 billion pesos uh, for the feeding program. I know in the past, it, obviously, it's challenging no? because we didn't have any classes. But what's the plan for the feeding program for this school year? Uh, a lot of children are relying on that. And in fact, uh, a lot of our poorest of the poor children look forward going to school because they will get a uh, hot meal. So um, what, what's the plan uh, of the department uh, so far as uh, the feeding program? So Your Honor, I ask uh, you, Secretary Vici, to respond. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, with regard to the feeding program, uh, since face-to-face uh, -face classes uh, will be resumed uh, soon, then we're planning to uh, either will distribute uh, hot meals in uh, partnership with the uh, local government units. Uh, we have successful uh, uh, implementation and uh, practices uh, with the local go government units, example, the central uh, kitchen of the Valenzuela City. So, uh, pinag-aaralan na namin yun na uh, baka uh, itong uh, central kitchen sa mga uh, malalaking uh, LGUs ay yun yung magiging uh, principal uh, modality. And we also partnered with uh, the OST, uh, the National uh, Dairy uh, Authority, and the Philippine Carabao Center because uh, sila yung supplier natin ng, uh, 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 for the DOST, yung sa Nutribans and uh, yung milk. Kasi aside from hot meals, meron din tayong uh, milk uh, feeding program. So meron ng uh, kinoconceptualize on how to uh, implement the school-based feeding program uh, Ngayong uh, school year 2022-2023 since face-to-face -face classes na po tayo. Ito yung Nutriban, that, that project to Luisa? Yes po. Okay, and uh, that will be given to which grade level? Uh, across uh, uh, from kindergarten? Uh, kindergarten to grades uh, 3. Uh, six, six. Grade six. Uh, and uh, uh, those uh, wasted and severely wasted uh, students. Uh, all uh, students from K to six. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Senator Padilla? Uh, okay. Nais ko lamang pong itanong sa ating mga bisita. Noong pong uh, Shona ng ating mahal na Pangulo, dumating po doon ang ating uh, mahal na Vice Presidente na siya po ay nakasuot ng indigenous costume. Ano pong uh, costume ito? Mandaya po ba o bagobo? Bagobo po yata eh. Opo. Ang tanong ko po, ano po ang programa ng DepEd sa ating mga indigenous, sa ating mga katutubo, patungkol po sa kanilang edukasyon your honor, uh, tawagin ko po si Yusek Ana na kakabisado po ng IP program po natin. Wow, mabuhay ka, ma'am. <laughs> Magandang uh, hapon po, Senator Padilla. Ako po ay nakasuot ng tela ng ating indigenous people ngayong araw. At uh, pati po ang bag. Wow. <laughs> But uh, back, back to your question, uh, Senator Padilla, ang Department of Education po ay may budget line item at uh, nakhiwalay na programa na ang tawag ay Indigenous People Education. Ito po ay ginagawa natin sa lahat ng rehiyon. Meron po tayo talaga mga eskulahan na ang mga uh, tinuturuan ay mga IP. Kas kasabay po sila ng pasukan natin o yes, special po ito? Kasabay po sila kasi uh, ang ating pong ginagawa ngayon ay inclusive. Ibig sabihin ay pare-pareho ang ginagawa ng lahat. Pero meron po siyang special na treatment kasi meron silang mga uh, leksyon na talagang pang kanilang community sa IP. Uh, ito nga po ay isa sa mga palaging nabababaan yung budget na proposal. Pero internally ginagawa natin ng paraan na mabigyan sila ng suporta. Ang isa sa... So, sorry po, binababaan nino po 
ang budget. Ganito po, magpo-propose po tayo sa DBM, Department of Budget and Management, tapos bibigyan po nila tayo ng level na nasa NEP, National Expenditure Program. So usually, mas malaki ang kailangan para sa mga IP communities, pero maliit lang po ang naibibigay ngayon. But ito pong maliit na ito, nagagawa natin ng paraan na ma-implementa kung ano yung mga dapat uh, meron ng IP. So under the curriculum and instruction, may USEC po tayo na CI, meron po siya talagang opisina na ang tawag ay IP Education or Indigenous People Education, IP. Opo, uh, bilang pagmamahal po ng ating kalihim at Vice Presidente sa mga indigenous, nakita, nakita naman, siguro naman po itataas eh, nyo ang budget nito ngayon. Ano? Uh, pinopropose po namin na itaas po talaga. At uh, babalik po kami sa inyo, uh, Senator Padilla, yung po yung magandang sagot ng... Kasi ako Senator. din po ang nasa komite ng cultural community. Maraming well, uh, uh, ang, ang pag-ibig po natin sa ating mga katutubo ay eh, nag-uumpisa sa pagsusuot ng kanilang kultura at pagmamahal natin sa kanila sa araw-araw. Doon po yan magtutuloy-tuloy. Ang isa ko pa pong tanong, dahil kanina napag-usapan yung mother tongue, napag-usapan yung English, Tagalog, ano po ang pamamaraan ng pagtuturo nyo po sa kanila? Sige sir, ako sa finance po, uh, pero papasa ko na po sa ating USEC for Curriculum and Instruction kung ano po yung pamamaraan ng pagtuturo sa ating iPad. Maaari pong si ASEC Alma or si USEC Joer na nasa central office po ngayon. Uh, Asik Alma, you're recognized. Asik Alma. Yeah. Asik, can you hear us? Yeah. Mr. Chair, while we're waiting for our music and Asik, uh, kasi malaki po talaga yung suporta namin sa, sa iPad, lalo na po nung uh, nakaraang administrasyon. Isa sa ginawa natin ay mayroon po silang sariling eskwalahan na pinatayo. Ibig ko po sabihin, kasama po sila doon sa programa ninyo. Yes po. Na maturuan din sila ng Tagalog, ng English, opo, maliban po doon sa mother tongue. Yes, Kasi please. hindi naman po natin maitulak doon sa usapin ng kultura dahil inihiwalay na po dito eh, sa komite na to. Pero gusto ko lamang pong sabihin na napakahalaga po nito. Kung matatandaan nyo po, katulad ng sinabi ng ating mahal na chairman, marami na po kasing mga pagkakataon na tinatanong ang ating kabataan patungkol sa kung sino sila. At kung sino yung mga bayani, kung sino, eh, eh, hindi po nila alam kung sino. Yes. Yan po eh, malaking dagok po yan sa ating uh, edukasyon. Sapagkat may kasabihan po tayo, ang puno ay hindi titibay kung hindi maganda ang pagkakaano ng ugat. Eh, yun lamang po ang aking ano, no? Kung pag-ugat ng pinag-usapan, yan po yung ating mga IPs. Tama po. At yung atin pong kasaysayan. Opo. Uh, gusto ko lamang pong patibayin natin, ano? Bigyan niyo po kami, lalo na po, uh, sigurado ipapasa po sa akin yan ng ating chairman kapag uh, kayo po ay nagbigay ng patungkol dyan sa budget na sinasabi ninyo, Sigurado po sa akin niya ipupukul yan, ka -culture, cultural minorities. Magtutulungan po kami, katulad po ng sinabi ni Chairman. Pakibagay lang po kaagad at kung ano man po yung mga gusto niyo sa legislation na may kinalaman dito sa indigenous people. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, Senator Padilla. Ay, isasabit po namin ang aming proposal on the IP education. Isa po dito yung particular na mga learning materials na hindi lang para sa kanila, kung hindi para ipamigay naman sa mga hindi kasama sa IP para maging aware po yung mga hindi, uh, ating lahat ng mga mag-aaral na meron tayong mga kapatid na nandito sa IP community. Opo. Pangalawa po yung last mile school. Ang, ang benefit po or ang ibig sabihin, ang priority ng last mile school ay yung mga IP community. Ito po kasi yung mga sitwasyon na kung saan dahil ko konti lang ang nag-aaral, konti lang yung IP community, hindi po na lumalabas sila sa dato ng mga kailangang ipagawa ng paaralan or mga bigyan ng learning resources. Kaya nandun po sila sa last mile school program at sila po yung priority natin na magbibigyan ng mga beneficyo ng last mile school program. So dalawa po yung pwede namin isabihin sa inyo, Senator Padilla, the IPED proposal and the last mile school program. Uh, uh, kailangan po yan, ma'am, sapagkat hindi naman po linid sa ating kaalaman, ano, na 
pagdating po sa kabundukan, meron tayong kalaban dyan na nagdadala din ng edukasyon at nagliligaw sa ating mga IP. Kaya yung pinag-uusapan po natin dito ay maunahan po natin itong mga to doon sa ating mga IPs at hindi po sila makaporma doon. Uh, kailangan, kailangan po ito at uh, alam naman niyo po kung ano yung ibig kong sabihin kung sino po yung nakikipag-unahan sa atin doon. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Padilla. Any more questions regarding the school opening? Senator Binay, do you have any more uh, questions uh, regarding the uh, school opening on Monday? Um, if not, then we can uh, proceed with the uh, uh, briefing, uh, uh, a short briefing from the different uh, attached agencies of DepEd. Uh, like I said earlier, just give us a snapshot of your plans and programs. Uh, just make us uh, appreciate or help us appreciate uh, uh, what you intend to do in the next uh, six years uh, uh, under your mandate. So we first call on uh, ECCD, which is a very important uh, uh, agency, uh, Mr. Isip. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Honorable uh, Winga Chalyan, uh, Honorable Senator, uh, uh, Deputy Executive and Official, and uh, my colleagues from uh, the attached agency, magandang, magandang umaga, ah, araw po sa atin lahat. Ano ho? So the focus of our uh, presentation will be just an update, kasi doon yung naibigay sa amin yung updates for the first semester na na-implement ho namin, uh, pinaka-general updates lang po. And then the second one is the plan for the next semester and ang konting uh, issues and challenges po na kinakaharap ng aming uh, ahensya. Uh, medyo magkakaroon po kasi na kami ng problema regarding doon sa aming implementasyon ng mga mandato na nakataasa, nakaata sa amin. Okay? For the accomplishment, uh, on the access and equity, the Council has been able to implement the following PPAs in the first semester of FY 2022. This is the programs and projects that we, we uh, committed to, to uh, implement this year. No? So the establishment po of the National Child Development Center. The uh, National Child Development Center is our flagship program na we introduced to all the municipalities in the city to become a model center of our uh, child development uh, center. Okay? And we also develop and continue continue to implement the alternative mode of delivery and the safe reopening for early childhood uh, education. So as part of uh, the alternative mode of delivery, as one of the alternative delivery modes for the child learning continuity of zero to four year old children, the ECCD Council develop and, and impl implement the center-based, we call it the center-based program in alternative venue or the CBPAB. Ito yung aming ginawa during time na nagkaroon ng pandemya at hindi makapunta ang mga kabataan na nag 0 to 4 sa mga center. So, nag-develop po kami ng sistema at ito yung kanilang in-implement. Then, uh, ito yung opportunity and experience na ginagawa rin sa, sa, ano, sa, sa bahay po, hindi na ho sa center. Uh, through the help of the child development teacher and workers, uh, ginagayad po ang mga, ang mga parent para kung ano yung karapat dapat na matutunan ng mga bata para sa kanilang proper development para sa zero, nag edad 0 to 4 years old. And then another uh, alternative uh, mode of delivery, ito po yung ka-de-develop lang namin, but we already piloted this, uh, this uh, mode of delivery. The home-based ECCD program uh, become one of the most effective alternative mode of delivery for the learning during the in time of pandemic. Ito, it aims, uh, it aims to, to address the holistic needs of children at the, at the home setting because of difficulty in accessing center-based program. It is intended po para sa mga kabataan na, na located in areas that are geographically isolated and disadvantaged with limited transportation and unsafe for travel, occurrence of disaster and emergencies, and presence of armed conflict in the area. 
it also aims to support parents as their child primary teacher. Ito po naman parati natin sinasabi na sana ang mga magulang ang primary teacher ng ating mga kabataan. So ito po yung ating sagot doon para sila para ipakita na talagang kayo po ang unang-unang teacher ng mga kabataan. A guidebook was developed to help the LGU in adapting the program, specifically on the roles and responsibility of the local social welfare development officers as the supervisor and the child development worker as the facilitator and the parents as the direct implementer of this program. So ang status po nito, na pilot na ho namin to sa apat na, apat na munisipyo uh, at uh, patuloy po namin ire-replicate ito at uh, we're in fact uh, sa Cebu po nakikipag-partner na po kami sa ibang mga non-government organization para i-implement po ito sa ibang mga, mga lokalidad. Okay? And then the third one is the safe reopening of early childhood education. Then to ensure the children do not experience further learning loss, the ACCD Council has developed and issued the guidelines for the safe reopening of early childhood education during the COVID-19 pandemic that will secure the safe learning environment of the children. As uh, mentioned po kanina po ng mga ating mga uh, deped officials, kami rin po sa ECCD Council ay naglapas po ng uh, guidelines uh, with the help, uh, na develop po po with the help of the, of the Department of uh, Health na magsasubmit po kami ng kopya sa inyo ng aming safe reopening, safe reopening program para sa kabataan. Okay. And then for the for the plans and continue lang namin po for the plans uh, for the remaining targets of uh, activity, no, uh, we will continue on the access. We will continue uh, establishing the National Child Development Center. Napakahalaga po kasi dito. Dito kasi namin ini-introduce sa LGU o sa mga lokalidad yung mismong uh, programa, unang pinimodel ng programa ng ECCD Council. And then we will, uh, we will also continue the monitoring of the safe reopening of early childhood education to mitigate the development and learning loss due to pandemic. Okay? We will also continue our resource uh, development program for this semester, uh, like the induction program, scholarship program for the SEP and the LMEP, for the child development uh, teacher and child development workers, and for the supervisor who will, who will take care of the program of uh, early childhood education in the municipality. So, and uh, we also continue the advocacy program for the following targeted uh, uh, activities like the multi-sectoral collaboration with the national, international, non-governmental organization and other organization that uh, 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 the, 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 the NGO and private sector. And then lastly, strengthening the monitoring and evaluation mechanism of uh, the program to ensure the program that are evaluated and children are identified through the, the, through the following activities. So we will, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a existing or uh, developed uh, system we call it the NEMEAS. So at ang, ang status po ngayon nito ay si turnover na ng, uh, ng, uh, ng developer yung ating NEMEAS para doon magamit na po ito. Ito po yung magkukontinue ng ating uh, lahat ng database ng kanya-kanyang uh, uh, member agency para magkaroon po ng isang magandang database at konkretong database para sa mga kabataan. Okay? And then uh, for the Issues and challenges. Gusto ko lang pong iparating sa inyo yung aming issues and challenges na nakaka-apekto po sa aming implementasyon ng aming uh, programa sa ngayon. Uh, meron po kasing issue once ngayon ang ating uh, exec ang Office of the Malacanang, Malacanang uh, Office of the President through the Executive Office na uh, we call it the MC3, Memorandum Circular Number 3. So, yung... Issue once po nito, may provision under the MC3 prohibiting the OIC to enter into a new contract. Uh, nagkaroon po ng malaking implikasyon sa work and financial plan of the ECCD Council. They may discontinue or hampered our implementation of our mandated operation. Some of our mandated activities po rito, yung katulad ng establishment ng building, na ang rason po rito kasi nagkakaroon po kami ng agreement between the local government unit 
particularly yung mga mayor, magkakaroon pa kami ng, ng uh, memorandum of agreement which is considered as a contract. Plus, uh, doon po sa aming mga scholarship program na ibinibigay sa mga teacher at saka workers plus the supervisor na nakikipag-partner po kami sa mga uh, universidad na nagkakaroon po rin kami ng memorandum of agreement. Lahat po yun ay nagkaroon ng apekto when the MC3 was released, no, was issued. So, yun po yung nagiging, uh, medyo nagiging problema namin dahil uh, alam po naman natin na uh, this semester hindi po kami nakamove because of the election and uh, we try to, to schedule and plan all our uh, activities uh, during this second semester. But unfortunately, uh, since nagkaroon po ng issuance ang MC3 and we don't have, st we still we don't have the the reappointment or appointed or appointed uh, executive director, uh, uh, hindi po kami makakilos. Where in fact, medyo itong ibang slide na ta, next slide is yung aming mga activity na pinuspong na namin. And hopefully, nagkaroon naman po kami ng letter kay executive secretary na magkaroon ng exemption for the MC3 and hopefully mag -ranchon. Once na nag medyo makaka- move on na kami. Ang fear po namin kasi rito is yung tinatawag ng yearly naman, alam natin na kine-question ng, bukod dun sa mandato namin, yearly kine-question ng aming absorptive capacity. Once na hindi namin nagalaw to, parang hindi na rin namin magagalaw yung budget namin, which is uh, maraming maaapektuhan na mga kabataan at mga mga teacher para sa kanilang, sa kanilang uh, para sa programa ng ECCD Council. And the last one, uh, ito ho, eh, ilalagay ko na lang po sa context ko na, na yung yearly na ating uh, budget po for the establishment. Actually, yung budget po kasi ng ating flagship program which is the establishment of the National Child Development Center, originally, original budget po niyan comes from the the contribution of the PAGCOR, uh, a PAGCOR contribution from the Republic, from the RA 10 for 10. Ang problema po depleted na po yung ating uh, depleted na po yung ating um, budget for that tapos na po yung contribution nila. So since 2020 nag-request na po kami ng additional budget to come up para natin ma-reach yung ating total number of cities municipalities ng isang NCDC or National Child Development Center na ini-introduce yung programa ng ECCD. The problem is every now every time na nagkakaroon po kami ng um, budget with the DBM, uh, nare-reject po o hindi nila pinagbibigyan yung ating uh, budget. That's why maraming salamat po sa, sa Senate and sa Congress. Every, ta every time po na nagkakaroon ng budget hearing, nagkakaroon na lang po kami ng insertion uh, doon sa establishment of the National Child Development Center, which is our flagship program. So hopefully po uh, kami po ay eh, hingi ng tulong sa Senado para din at least po ang balak po namin is extend yung ating uh, Republic Act 10410 for the con uh, for the contribution of PAGCOR. Hindi po namin niya ipinapaamend but only extension of the the contribution of the PAGCOR para lang ho mas mabilis natin ma magampanan at maiparating sa mga sa lahat ng uh, siyudad at munisipyo ang ating uh, programa para sa mga kabataan. That's all po. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, uh, Mr. Isip. Senator Padilla, have any questions to Isip? Uh, wala naman na pong question lang po, Chairman. Medyo sumasakit lang pong ulo ko. Kakadinig ko ng budget. <laughs> uh, medyo budget, budget. Okay, budget. Kulang, ganun. Uh, <laughs> kailan po kaya tayo makakarinig ng output? Uh, yun po ang... Uh, Ano lang bang po, uh, naintindihan po namin kayo, pero gawin po natin lahat ang magagawa natin kung ano yung meron tayo, pagyamanin po natin sa ngayon, at kung ano man po yung pwede namin gawin para sa inyo, gagawin po namin, pero magkaroon po tayo ng iisang uh, misyon at ito po yung out. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, Chairman. Thank you, thank you, Senator Padilla. Talagang ano yan. Uh, hindi pa nga tayo nag ng budget deliberations. Mas masakit yung ulo doon. <laughs> At uh, maganda ka na maraming pupunta sa'yo. <laughs> uh, I think the point of uh, Senator Padilla is very valid that uh, we need to make sure that the outputs are concrete and uh, um, 
and can be felt by our constituents. Um, it's not just a matter of allocating money, but also a matter of um, of uh, impact. No, if if it's creating impact to our constituents. Um, so yung po yung punto ni Senator Padilla, which I totally agree. Um, any questions from our senators? Kung wala naman, we'll, we'll, we'll continue. I'll reserve my questions later on na lang uh, after uh, all the presentations. We call on National Academy of Sports uh, attended by um, Professor uh, Josephine Reyes who's uh, here with us virtually. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, you're you're on mute, Joe. Uh, we cannot hear you. You're on mute. Uh, we cannot uh, hear. Maybe it's your computer. Well, waiting for the Academy... Uh, National Academy of Sports. Uh, we'll go to another department, Muna, no, so that we won't waste time. Uh, the National Book Development Board, headed by uh, Mr. Dante Ang. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, Senator Gatalian and our good senators. Uh, I will start my presentation. All right, so uh, 2041. Go ahead. Go Director ahead. Anthony. All right, 2041, uh, that is our import-export disparity. We deserve our stories, but if you look at our bookstores, you look at our libraries, there are there is a huge influx of books that are not our own, um, as opposed to what we send out. We've essentially relegated ourselves and othered ourselves by placing ourselves in a Filipiniana section when everyone else has been given primacy. So whose voice do we want to give primacy to? Uh, I would like to discuss some of the problems that we have before I talk about our programs. Next slide, please. Um, again. We have a huge import-export disparity. Our functional literacy is very low in many of our areas, of course, especially BARM, which we talked about earlier. We do have learning poverty, which, uh, again, Senator Gachalian had discussed earlier. So if you look at the bubbles there, I don't know if everyone can see it, uh, our, we have low readership around the Philippines, and we consume, the way we consume is very colonial. So it's not only books, it's media, it's food, it's the way we uh, purchase. We purchase everything that is, um, we, we like to purchase imported. Another problem is that children are consuming differently as well. They don't really like to read as much anymore because they're consuming different sorts of multimedia. Okay, next slide, please. All right, next slide. Okay, what does the Philippine books landscape look like? Um, um, it, the industry makes about 4.92 billion pesos a year, and we have about 500,000 employed under the publishing sector. Uh, we have top writers and content creators that uh, their work is being exported all around the world, and our creators are working uh, with publishers you know, from different countries, America, uh, France, all of that. Um, this year, last year actually, we've had the highest number of ISBNs uh, produced ever in the history of the Philippines, and I'd like to talk about that later. Uh, next slide, please. All right, I know you didn't want me to talk about, you didn't want us to talk about this, but I, I just need to reiterate that the, the National Book Development Board is a little bit dissimilar to many of the agencies that are here because we are similar to the Film Development Council of the Philippines. Um, we, we are here to develop the publishing industry and we work primarily with the private sector. All right, next slide, please. Um, next slide. 
Okay, so who do we serve? So we serve the entire publishing value chain, meaning our readers and emerging readers. We work with our publishers, um, our private publishers. We also work with content creators and creatives, meaning the people that are behind the book, the writers, the photographers, the graphic designers, the cultural um, bearers that provide the content for the books that we read. We also work with uh, the distribution value chain, meaning all our retail spaces, um, our libraries or whatnot. And now we also work with government uh, organizations to provide them with the tools that they need so they can procure better um, in terms of books and that they have the resources they need to create better publications. Next slide, please. All right, so so what do we do? It's really all about solutions-based programming. Um, currently, for the domestic market, we are educating and we provide market access points. And for the international market, it's really all, all about content and books as an export product uh, because there is more value to the books than what, uh, you know, than meets the eye. Next slide, please. Okay, so we, we serve the publishing value chain. Again, we make sure that people are reading, that we provide market access and um, business matching for all our, the entire publishing industry. Okay, so what are our programs and why is it so impactful? We work with the readership population, okay? We have a program, and this is a very, very important program called the Book Nook, okay? So if, if you look at the libraries today, and if you look at book spaces today, number one, there aren't enough spaces. Number two, people don't like to go to libraries. They would rather go to the mall. So what we're trying to do now is to decolonize our spaces, our reading spaces, by making it more inclusive. And how do we do that? We place reading spaces in areas that people like to go to, the Palenque, the, there's buses, there's tourist centers, there's a school of living traditions, and these are places that children actually go to. All right, and what we do with this book nook is to not only do we set up the reading center, we also provide Filipino, only Filipino authored books, so children will know more about themselves and, and learn about the different cultures of the Philippines. And what we do is we train the person or LGU or any partner organization, we, we train them on how to handle um, an inclusive space, teach them about culture and arts management, library science, storytelling, and whatnot. So we want to make this place more inclusive. Um, I'd like to show you a map of what, what, what the book nook looks like. Our, next slide. All right, so to date, last year during the pandemic, during COVID, we set up 50 spaces. So if you want to talk about inclusivity, we went to the most marginalized, most isolated, um, the the communities which have been rendered invisible, such as the Iranun of Sultan, Kudarat Maguindanao. Um, these are the communities that are the best weavers. The In history, they're the pirates that have um, Traverse uh, Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia. We're in South Lubia and Tawi Tawi, where we work with the Sama. We're in uh, Paracelis um, Mountain Province. We are in Benguet. We are in many of the provinces um, where there are uh, uh, indigenous communities. And the reason why we chose to work with indigenous communities is because their language is still intact and their culture is still intact. And if they can read, these stories about themselves, it will empower them and, you know, put that, that oral tradition into print, right? Because we are such a huge um, a country that is very big on oral tradition. So um, th th these are the samples of the books that we, we um, do. This is Ed Edoy, an Ifugao folk song. We do Maguindanaon songs. We do all of these different books. Um, we also have books on Rizal, and these are by private publishers. Um, so Rizal in Saga, Life, um, a life for student fans. So the Book Nook is a, a very, very important program. Um, it serves about, with the 90, about two, 2 million people, um, that population. And hopefully we can have that this program in perpetuity. Next slide, please. So that's a readership program. Next slide. Okay, so here are some photos of the areas. Uh, can we say in this slide, please? Um, 
before that, yeah, this is an Aita community in Bataan. Um, and if we really want to be inclusive, we need to start producing books where children can see themselves. When I visited this area, they are Aita Magbukon. So there are different Aita communities. One is the Magbukon. And one of, I, I was so happy to send them all of these indigenous books and all these books, you know, about everything Filipino. And then the little girl asked me, she goes, where is my book? Where is my book on, and my story? And and I cried because I couldn't give her one. There are no books for children, for Aita Magbukon children. There are no books for Maranao children. There are no books for Iranon children. So if we want to, to really provide solutions, we should provide children books that, where they see themselves and that they can actually read. So, um, so that's one of our projects, and I do hope to get support on that. Um, next slide, please. Next slide. All right, another program um, that we do have, uh, uh, readership, of course, we have programs on readership, we have tons, so, but this is the main one. The next program that I'd like to talk about is education. So because we want to create better books, we want, we set up this year, the Book Institute of the Philippines. So we want to professionalize the book industry um, in a wider scale and make sure that people understand how to create a book, how to do design, how to market a book, how to be able to, to, to do proper copy editing. If you look at you know many Filipino publications, um, the copy editing is not on point, even our English publications. So we need to make sure that people are trained to create quality books, not only for the Philippines, but for our diasporic communities around the world and the countries that they do affect. All right, so that's a Book Institute of the Philippines. We're launching, I think, in, in a few weeks. All right, next slide, please. So readership, um, education. Another thing is market access. So again, as I told you earlier, it's difficult to find Filipino authored books in our libraries and our bookstores. Um, but well, we have so many books now. So, so now what we're doing is we're providing incentives so people can create more regional book fairs all around the country, not Manila-centric. Um, we're giving a subsidy so, so that small, smaller scale publishers can place their books online and we subsidize the discount. So we've been doing that, different sorts of subsidies. Next slide, please. Um, next slide. Okay, also, aside from working domestically, we also work internationally. Why? Because the Philippines has so many transient and diasporic communities. If you look at Saudi, the Arab countries alone, there are more than 4 million Filipino people, and there are no books that represent them. So we do um, sell the rights of the book, which is the, the content, the, the, the inside of the book, so that it can be translated to different languages. And we also would like to have our books and see it in retail spaces around the world. The two territories that we're working on is the Arab countries that we just started, the Middle East, we just started this year, and also um, the English-speaking territories. So you have the United States, um, England, Australia. So we're working on that to really expand um, the market, okay? Because we have the content. And it's, it's, it's terrible if we, we are not able to do that. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, we're also doing research. And what type of research do we do? We're actually doing textbook research right now. There have been issues um, uh, kind of within the textbook industry, and we really want to know what the problems are. And we're working closely with DEPED. And actually, our vice chairman of the National Book Development Board is Yusek Ann, and we're working closely with her. Um, and the Bureau of Learning Resources. Uh, we are also working on the National Book Database, um, which I'll talk about later, because that's that's quite exciting. Next slide. Okay. Um, so policy, policy uh, initiatives. Uh, again, we are in the closest collaboration with the Department of Education than ever before. So we've really connected the private sector uh, with the Department of Education. There have been issues with communication before, but now we've bridged that, and uh, you, it's, a, it's a daily conversation uh, working with the QASA, with the supplementary learning resources. Last year, we actually... Um, 
proposed had a proposal on automating the supplementary learning resources program so that it would be easier for DepEd to to approve and procure um, supplementary learning resources, which are these types of books um, that I'm holding in my hand. Um, we're also working on the National Book Development Trust Fund. It has been problematic, and we're revising the way the fund is utilized because this fund needs to be able to to have to produce more books, but it hasn't. So we're, we're revising that this year, um, and we're also working with the uh, the House of Representatives to amend RA eighty forty seven, which is the law that created the National Book Development Board. Specifically, we're working with um, Congressman Toff Devanesh, and we do need your help as well. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, uh, I am. All right, so we also provide grants, and um, I, I, um, we have Creative Nation grants, publication grants, um, translation grants, so that our stories can be retold to other, in other languages, not only in the Philippines, but around the world. Okay, we also have uh, incentive programs. I'm going to skip that. Um, and the awards, so a main award that we do is the National Book Awards um, and the National Children's Book Awards. This is as important, um, the recognition for publishers are important and writers and our, our novelists uh, so that they can be empowered to write more. Okay, so future forward, what, what are we doing um, in the next few years? Um, next year we to, to develop the Filipino readability tool. If you're familiar with the Scholastic Book Fair or uh, the Lexile Scale, um, these are readability tools in English, but we do not have a Filipino readability tool. So how can you gauge the level of a child when you don't have a tool to measure how they're reading and what level they're in? So this is something that we need to do um, and to share so that we can provide a baseline to where our children are at in terms of their reading their own language, their own official language, which is Filipino. Next slide, please. We are also, um, it, it, we're also focusing on really um, engaging institutions to start procuring local. So the Department of Education is the largest institutional buyers, but there are many other organizations that are able to do this. There is you know, the LGUs uh, with the Bananas Ruling. They are able to procure books, and we would like for these agencies uh, or these organizations to start looking at the National Book Development Board because we do have the book expertise. We can tell you which books are good for early readers or for um, you know grades... Uh, 11 and 12. Um, and we also would like to work closely more with DepEd regarding the SLR program, which we are already. Um, next slide, please. Another very important program that we're doing is the National Book Database. So have you noticed when you look at Amazon, if you're looking for a book and you're looking for a specific book, you can type into Amazon and you will find the book that you want. But you can't do that here in the Philippines. And the reason why is because we don't have a database. We don't have a bi we have a bibliographic database, but it doesn't tell you how much the book is, where you can find it, where which library to borrow it from, um, where where to, you know, where to buy, where to purchase. So this database is essentially a one-stop shop. Uh, for for all Filipino authored books. So if you're looking for a Mrenau author or an LGBTQ author or a comic developed in 1971, this is something that you'll be able to find. And this is democratizing all that knowledge that we have because it has not been um, documented. So if we have this, then we'll lessen the needs for books fairs. Uh, teachers can just go and start purchasing directly. Schools can go and start looking at this database to purchase directly. Um, so there. So next slide, please. All right, so amendments, I had talked about this earlier. Um, next slide. Okay, so I know Senator Padilla didn't want to talk about the budget, um, so I will skip this, and um, I will write a letter to you uh, at some point because my budget now is only $60 million, and as you know, um, I, I, I will just send you the letter, sir. All right, so why are our programs impactful? 
because you can measure it. So there has been a shift. Again, as I told you, there is something called the ISBN or the International Standard Book Number. And this is a number that you register if you have a new title. Last year, we've had the highest in Philippine history in terms of titles being produced. We're at about 9,500. So the proof is in the numbers. Um, we've also increased our registration so we can capture the entire publishing value chain. And uh, in, normally it would be about 500, but now it's at about 2,400. Next slide. And also, um, yes, so, so that's, that's my, my presentation. And thank you for your time. Center, but I think Senator Padilla has a lot of questions on his mind. <laughs> uh, yes, Paul. Yes, Paul. <laughs> Senator Padilla, do you have any questions? I'm going to get a little bit of a question. I'm going to get a little bit of a question. I'm impressed. Uh, ano po, nakasuot kayo ng uh, tribal costume? Tiboli po, tiboli. Uh, May nida bakaling. Opo, napaka, kung matututo lang po ng ganyan kagaling, mag-English uh, ang ating mga katutubo at ka kasama ng uh, pag-aaral nila ng kanilang, sabi nyo nga po, ng kanilang native language, pati Pilipino. Napakaganda po. Siguro hindi na po sila maloloko. Kasi ang, ang number one pong problema ng ating mga katutubo, kulang po sila sa edukasyon. At yung pagkukulang na yun ay sinasamantala. Sila po ay na-export. Unang-una na po pagdating sa kanilang tinatawag nating uh, sa mga lupa nila, uh, sa kanilang ancestral domain. Dahil hindi nila maipagtanggol ang sarili nila, sa pamamagitan, kung ganyan lang po sila kagaling magsalita, palagi ko walang maluloko na ating mga IPs. Ngayon, gusto ko lang mong pong itanong. Sigurado po nakakasunod kayo sa Tagalog ko, ha? Opo, sir. Opo. Because I can speak in English if you like. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Hindi po. Hindi po kayo nasa gobyerno. Opo. Uh, yung pong budget nyo na 60 million, Kami po ba ang nagbigay noon, Senado? That's from the NEP. From who? NEP. The National Budget. Uh, okay, okay. Ito po, sinasabi nyo, na, tiranggal nyo kasi, naka 300 million na ito okay. ko na hinihingi ninyo eh. Yung pong sumunod na, na datos, yun po yung output ninyo. Mataas, yung registration eh. So, ibig sabihin, very successful po yung okay. inyong programa. Na, nakarating na po ito sa lahat ng tribo? Ito pong mga libro na ito, ito pong pinakita nyo. Now, we're working with about 20 indigenous 20. communities. Sa so, buong so, Pilipinas po? Yeah, 20 to 30. So, I can I can give you the exact data. So, so from North... ganda po nun eh, uh, pinag-uusapan nga po namin ni Chairman. Kasi, effective ang libro sa mga katulad po nila na nasa malayong lugar na wala namang computer, walang internet. Iyan po talaga ang instrumento natin, yung libro. Yan po yung pinakamahalaga sa lahat. Uh, ito po ay ibinibigay nyo ng libre? Ito po ay may bayad? Wala po. So, um, what we do is we actually work with a partner organization, whether it be a non-profit or the LGU or with a school. And the, the center is provided by them. They already need to have a space. And what we do is we provide the books and we provide a three to six month training on how to operate a book nook. Um, it's not like a library because these are more storytelling spaces. They can do arts. They can they can learn about culture and reading, of course. So this is all for free. This year we have about thirty eight recipients, including areas of high risk in Lanao del Sur, oh, um, and I can tell you the towns later. So we were working with MP Maisara on that. Um, Yes, Paul. Last year, we ha we set up about 50. Next year, we would like to set up about 80. 
so that we can really cover many of these marginalized areas. Ah, uh, gusto ko lamo pong gayin yung sinabi ni Ma'am Sibilya kanina. Ito po ba yung special na sinasabi po ninyong programa ng DepEd? Magkahiwalay po ito. Ah, uh, okay. Bakit hindi po magkaroon ng bolt-in? English yun, ha? Bolt-in. Bolt-in pa, pare. Hindi. Bakit hindi po kayo mag-join force? Ba? Ba? Mr. Chair, if I may. We, we are complementary and the supplementary, uh, Senator Padilla. Kasi may hiwalay po na agency. Sila po ay National Book Development Board. Opo, opo. Malinaw naman po yun. Eh. Ibig ko pong sabihin, ba't hindi po kayo magtulungan? Da iisa lang naman po yung misyon, makapagbigay tayo ng edukasyon sa mga IPs kat yung kanila pong mga libro ay first class po yun eh. Yes. Yung po talaga yung mga nung ako po ay eh, nasa foundation ko pa nung hindi pa ako pinilit mag-resign. Nabib nagbibigay po ako ng mga ganyang libro na galing sa Estados Unidos. Opo. Ganyan po ka first class yung talagang Eh, kung maikukumpara po siya ay nire-reklamo kanina ni Senator Coco Pimentel, eh talaga po napakalayo ng mga ganyang libro. Maganda po sana mag-coordinate uh, para napakaganda po. I'm so impressed, ma'am, uh, sa inyong ano po talaga. Kasi ano po eh, yung kanyang inyong presentasyon ay eh, napaka-first world nung pagkakainyong banat. Eh, sana po ay magkatulungan po tayo kasi hindi ko po matatanggap yung magkahiwalay tayo hindi eh, Pare pareho tayong Pilipino mas maganda yung mga ganitong programa chairman, mapagbuklod po natin Opo. naintindihan niyo po ba yung buklod? Opo <laughs> Maraming salamat po ma'am, maraming salamat po Maraming salamat po ma'am, maraming salamat chairman Thank you, thank you And, and, and pursuing that topic ni Senator Padilla, I was looking at the uh, law that created uh, the National Book. Uh, it's supposed to promote the publishing industry. Tama po ba, ma'am? Opo. No, as an industry. And when you say publishing industry, the whole ecosystem from writing to publishing to distribution. Uh, I don't have data right now, no? but uh, uh, from my observation going around, uh, there seems to be um, uh, the trend is changing from reading the actual books to a lot of digital books. No? In fact, my niece uh, downloaded this app. I'm trying to remember that app. Um, that Epic. She can, uh -huh. It's called Epic. No, she's uh, 14 years old, eh, and she can download free books. I forgot the name of that. Uh, no. but, uh, and she reads it off her phone. No? So my, my point of the matter there is, uh, number one, is is the publishing industry in the Philippines growing? Uh, and when I say that, how big in terms of market value, how big in terms of the actual publishers? And then number two, uh, how do we ride on the trend of digital books? Because that's the, that's where the world is going. In fact, I don't buy books anymore. I just read it off my uh, iPad no? because it's more convenient. So, because that's also going to dictate the rele relevancy of the department, no? of your office. Uh, if the whole world is moving into this direction and the market value of uh, the publishing industry is shrinking, then um, we have to rethink whether the department is um going to be relevant and how it will be relevant in the next few years and that goes that ties into the uh point of uh, senator padillo on budget no because uh we cannot allocate budget for the sake of relevancy no? um, we need to make sure that the budget allocated is not because we want to stay relevant no? but we want to adjust to to, to global trends or to what's happening right now. No? I'm not an expert in book publishing, uh, but I'm just saying this out of my observation. So number one is the, in, is the industry growing, and then number two, um, how do we ride on the trends of digital books? Thank you for your question, sir. So the industry right now um, 
it has contracted during the COVID and, and sales last year were at about 4.92 billion. The industry is growing. Um, and the reason we know that it's growing is because we can also see a huge amount of imports. You you look at the bookstores today, but we have a growth in, in, in publishers. We also have the rise um, in the pandemic alone. We have a, a rise in uh, self-published books and authors. Um, and you could see that in our capture and our registration. So, so the reason why we need to amend our law is because we need to be able to to change the definition of a book. The definition of a book was a physical book um, before when digital was not invented yet. So we need to be able to change that because we do cater to the digital world and we understand that it's it's a whole new world for all of us and everyone is reading digitally. People don't like to read books. Um, not to say that physical books are not important because young children and emerging readers still need to have something tactile to read in for order in order for them to 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 really understand um, and learn. But the digital format, many of the publishers are already in the digital landscape. So if you look at the larger publishers like Adarna, uh, is this an Adarna book? Um, like Adarna, they're already available digitally. And many of the publishers, what they have what is called a subscription program. So you would subscribe to it at about 500 to 600 pesos a month, I think. And lahat ng mga books na available um in their backlist will be available for you to read. So many of the publishers are looking towards that, especially the pandemic actually helped them move towards the digital world because many of the bookstores were closed. So so that's what they're doing now. Also, aside from the, the, the trade books, the textbooks, they're also doing the same thing where they do provide a subscription service or where they, they work with... Amazon to provide, um, you know, books that you can read on Kindle or many of these applications as well. So we do support that as well. So all formats of the book. Um, and another thing that I want to note is that uh, a book it really is a very unique uh, cultural product because it's not only the physical book or the digital book, but it's the content as well. And this content can be adapted in different sorts of media. So if you look at what happened to Tresa, Tresa was originally a comic book, a Harry Potter. If you look how they've, they've really delved into merchandise, into music, into theater, so this is what we're trying to do to our books and, and give it relevance and give it value and really highlight the economic imprint. It is that cross-media adaptation and not just the physicality of the book. Thank you, ma'am. We'll, we'll, we'll have another oversight uh, um, committee uh, hearing. Um, Senator Padilla is the chairman of the Public Information Committee, which also deals with publishing information no so uh, the, the way the committees are divided um, center padilla deals with all information no being published digitally or on paper uh, so we'll have a joint uh, oversight on the future of books actually that is the question eh? uh, what is the future of books and is that the track that our country needs to take um, because the world is turning into digital. Eh? No? And um, that's what I want to also learn because um, uh, is this uh, department, is this, your, is this agency still attuned to uh, the trends uh, that we are seeing right now? And when was this agency created? This is a long time ago. Eh? It's not working. About 26 years 26 ago. 26 years ago. Yeah, 20, so, yeah, 26 years ago and now is totally different. No? So we need to um, check whether the mandates are still attuned to uh, the trends we are seeing in the world, basically. So with that, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Paul. Ma'am. Um, the next will be um, National, Ch uh, National Council for Children's Television, NCCT. Isang makabatang hapon po, Senator Gachalian. Makabatang hapon, Senator Robin Padilla, and uh, sa mga magigiting na senador sa, na nakatutok online sa mga execom, uh, members of the execom of the Department of Education as well as my uh, colleagues na sa attached agencies ng DepEd. 
makabatang hapon sa inyong lahat. Uh, yun pong National Council for Children's Television was created under Republic Act number 8370, no? And uh, it was in 1997 when the uh, law was created, no? Ang objective po nito is to promote and encourage the production and broadcast of uh, developmentally appropriate TV programs for children, as well as to monitor the implementation of the Act and other government policies pertaining to children's broadcast programs. May, may apat po kaming functions o mandato, no? Uh, uh, policy and research, uh, media and monitoring. Pangatlo po is program and content development. And pangapat is the media literacy orientation services. So, i-update ko kayo doon sa apat na uh, functions namin kung anong mga ginagawa ng NCCT, no? For the first function, yung policy, no? Because policy-making body yung NCCT, no? So, we have crafted the Child-Friendly Content Standards or the CFCS, no? This is a set of guidelines that helps and guides the TV content creators in making quality and developmentally appropriate children's TV programs or child-friendly TV shows. So gusto ko lang i-differentiate siguro yung dalawa, no? Pag sinabi natin uh, children's TV program, iba po siya sa child-friendly TV program. Yung, yung children's uh, TV program refers to programs uh, that are specifically designed for viewing by children. Pag sinabi natin child-friendly program, ito yung mga TV programs that are not specifically designed for viewing by children, but uh, which serve to further the positive development of children, yung holistic development niya, no? physically, mentally, emotionally, at walang harm na naidudulot. So pwede natin sabihin na pampamilya yung mga child-friendly programs. So yung focus po ng NCCT is na nandoon sa mga uh, children's TV programs and child-friendly TV programs. And for instance, ano, for child-friendly TV programs, NCCT has set the following criteria na para masabing uh, child-friendly, it should be E, educational or informative, V, value-laden, and A, age-appropriate. So para madali pong tandaan, tinawag namin tong EVA, educational, value-laden, age-appropriate. Tinawag namin nitong EVA, ate EVA, or manang EVA. We have also implemented the allotment of 15% of daily programming of TV networks to child-friendly shows. Kasi po, dun sa Section 9 of Republic Act 8370, sinasabi doon na uh, there should be a minimum of 15% of the daily total airtime of each broadcasting network to be allotted for child-friendly shows within the regular programming of all networks granted franchises or as a condition for renewal of broadcast licenses. No? So, kaya po, uh, nung mga nagdang taon, naging ano, staggered yung implementation namin, 5%, 10%, but this year, uh, nag-implement na kami ng 15%, no? kahit uh, medyo nasa gitna pa rin ng pandemic. Right now, we're also finalizing the Comprehensive Media Plan for Children, as well as the TV Violence Ratings Code. Tapos po, during the start of pandemic, we help DepEd connect with uh, various TV networks on the use of TV in blended learning. Kasi kami po yung in touch with the TV networks and then kami rin naman yung attach agency, attach agency ng DepEd. So kami yung parang uh, conduit doon sa uh, merging nito. And uh, nakita natin maraming mga shows na may DepEd TV at napakaraming mga uh, online uh, blended uh, uh, mga TV programs na naging part ng blended learning. Uh, for research... Among our published materials include the Filipino Child's Media World, kung saan tinignan namin yung role ng parental mediation sa panunod ng mga bata sa TV. And we also have uh, a previous uh, research entitled The TV Viewing Habits of the Filipino Child. Marami po kami pang research na ginagawa ngayon. Ang second mandate po namin is uh, media monitoring. No? So initially... Uh, Yung compliance ng different broadcast networks po to the observance of the minimum airtime na 15% ay dapat child-friendly ay voluntary. No? Pero we would like to you know, validate their claim. Kasi sa ngayon po, sinasap, pag nag-re-report sa amin yung mga TV networks, syempre gusto nilang sabihin na talaga silang child-friendly. No? But uh, we need to validate all their claims that their shows are really child-friendly. So a media monitoring system needs to be in place no, for us to validate their claims. No? And right now, we're in the process of procuring a media monitoring machine para gawin ito lahat. And uh, apart from the monitoring of the 15% minimum airtime, no, we also conduct a dialogue with content creators of various TV networks in the different parts of the country. Uh, bakit po ang dialogue namin with the content creators? 
tina-target po namin yung content creators kasi we believe na sila yung isa sa susi, ano? Maari yung industry ng television controlled ng mga executives ng mga networks, pero kung yung mga content creators, the writers, no, the the, the directors, no, ay eh, meron silang hand rito sa content, no? Ah, uh, makakapasok pa rin tayo, makaka-create pa rin tayo ng quality content. Quality content for children. We are also the lead agency in the celebration of the National Children's Broadcasting Day o yung tinatawag nating pambansang araw ng makabatang broadcasting, no? This is in partnership with the Kapisanan ng Broadcaster ng Pilipinas and the PIA. So, nung nakaraang uh, celebration namin, gumawa kami ng uh, week-long makabatang playlist, no? Showing different uh, child-friendly uh, uh, TV shows, no? During the week, no? And then, uh, for our third mandate, we have the program and content development. Under this, no, we have the DocuBata. DocuBata is an annual video documentary contest which started in 2015. Actually, nung nagsimula po ito, it's used uh, parang Sini Pambata Festival yung ginagawa namin. But, but then again, nirealign namin kasi while the festival was a success, no, the medium used in Sini Pambata was not the best fit for the mandate of the agency. Kaya siguro ipinanganak tong DocuBata, no, isang pagdiriwang ng dokumentaryong pang television para sa batang Pilipino. Kasi yung documentaries pwede nating ipalabas talaga sa TV. No? And uh, DocuBata seeks to provide an avenue where aspiring TV documentarists can showcase and share their talents, uh, can raise awareness no, on certain issues, at uh, uh, pwede rin silang mag-celebrate yung local talent and child-friendly TV programs, as well as to promote child participation in social issues. Nung mga nagdaang DocuBata po, we tackled uh, the following themes, environment, climate change, nutrition, health, mental health, coping with the, the pandemic, no? And, and for this year, the theme is sa mundo ng social media, ligtas ka ba? And then, under din po dito sa content uh, uh, and program development, meron kaming uh, ibinibigay na National Endowment Fund for Children's Television or what we call the NEFC TV. Ito po ay uh, with reference to Section 12 of RA 8370 kung saan yung fund na ito ay kinreate for the promotion of uh, high standards of indigenous program development in children's TV and media na, na para sa mga bata talaga. So ang fund daming galing sa PCSO and uh, PAGGOR at yung pinaka-accrued interest nito, yun lang po ang nagagamit namin. And the access to the fund was provided by the council through a grant application process for qualified producers and organizations with proven track record in the production of high-quality children's TV programs. So ang priority po na binibigyan namin dito ay hindi yung mga big networks, no, but uh, independent producers and organizations, including youth organizations that do not have access to the, res to the resources of big commercial national TV networks. Kasama po sa mga naging grantees namin dito yung mga TV programs na Uyayi, na inoproduce namin with CBN Asia, Ready, Set, Read with the Knowledge Channel Foundation, yung promotion of reading to, no? Miriam's Online World with the UP Los Baños, mga Awit Ipina with the Ateneo de Naga University, Wellness Cada with the Love Life Project, and so on and so forth. This year, we have given four or five grantees, no? We have given grant to four grantees, and most of them are independent producers kasi gusto talaga natin silang tulungan na makapag-produce ng uh, quality content for children. Um... Para po dun sa pang-apat naming mandate, yung huling mandate, we do media literacy orientation services. Ito pong media literacy ori orientation services ay ginawa naming online during the pandemic. So hindi naging hindrance yung pandemic para magawa namin ito. Kasi dati puro face-to-face -face ito eh. Kaharap namin yung mga bata, teachers, and parents. And it is often said that it takes a village to raise a child, no? So we at NCCT believe that it needs the participation of parents, teachers, and children, and other stakeholders to raise a media literate child. So tulong-tulong lahat. No? May, merong, meron tayong stake lahat dito. And to strengthen the implementation of the NCCT's media literacy orientation services, we're continuing our three media literacy workshops intended for different stakeholders. Tulad po nung meron kaming for children na media literacy workshop called Telebibo. And then we have, uh, for parents, we have katuwang sa mapanuring panunood or kasama pa. At para naman sa mga teachers, ang aming media uh, uh, literacy uh, workshop is 
UUMT or understanding and utilizing media in teaching. And through uh, these uh, media literacy services, we also serve the IP groups. No? Meron po kami mga ginawa ding mga uh, media literacy uh, workshops sa mga IP groups, PWDs, and the senior citizens. Uh, ngayon po, uh, there is in the offing no, a plan to amend the council to be more responsive to the needs of the time. So kami pong limang council members in consultation with the seven advisory committee members, nakasama po dun yung MTRCB, the NCCA, KBP, uh, CWC, the PANA, no? the Philippine uh, Association of National Advertisers, the NTC. Uh, ito pong pitong agencies, nagtutulong-tulong po kami ngayon, yung council at saka yung advisory committee members, uh, to study the possibility of amending the NCCT to NCCM from National Council for Children's Television to National Council for Children's Media. Please remember that when, when NCCT was created in 1997, TV was the prevailing medium for entertainment then. But children nowadays are more glued to their gadgets, no? watching more often than not YouTube and TikTok. At kung manunood man sila ng TV, gusto nila siguro yung nasa rilo nila or nasa iPad nila or nasa cellphone nila. But we're still trying to figure it out, no? Kasi malaki po ang sakop pag sinabi nating media, from children's TV to children's media. No? Pag media, TV, film, stage, social media, and even books. Pero syempre, no, gusto namin uh, malaman kung anong specific uh, uh, sakop ng media na, na, mag, na magiging amendment kung sakasakali. Yung medium bang magiging focus namin or yung content, no? So of course, uh, we're optimistic na magkakaroon ng uh, mga ganitong pagbabago sa aming konseho. And of course, we will be asking for your much-needed support to make it happen kung sakaling uh, mag-push through na kami with the, with the plan. That's all for NCCT. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, uh, Dr. Luis. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all know that uh, Center Padilla is a well-known uh, personality in mm -hmm. the... Uh, uh, broadcast world. So uh, I'll give him the honor of uh, uh, asking the first question. Maraming salamat po, uh, Chairman. Uh, unang talong ko lang po, nasusunod po ba yung 15% na yun na napapalabas sa mga network na may kinalaman po sa ating mga bata? Nung, nung una po, parang, uh, kasi siyempre, parang ang tingin nila kasi yung mga production na pambata parang hindi... Uh, ano pa tawag dito? Hindi masyado... Hindi pinanonood. Hindi masyado pinanonood. Pati yung mga advertisers, yung patalastas, hindi nagpapasok pag, pag mga palabas na pambata. But with the 15% policy na ini-implement namin, na, kasi mananagot po sila, hindi sila makapag-review. Opo, dapat review. silang sumunod. Opo. Opo. So, nung 2019 po, uh, 2020, nag-start kami na 5% muna yung, uh, yung implementation. Tapos, uh, naging staggered yung implementation taon-taon. Nung 2021, naging... 10% na po yung kanilang uh, compliance. And then, ngayon 2022, 15%. So, hanggang... O, dapat po ipaalam nyo sa amin kung sino yung mga network na hindi sumusunod. Uh, uh, Opo, uh, kasi uh, sabi nga po ng ating chairman, nasa uh, partnership po kami, ano? Kasi nasa akin yung public information mm -mm. para maipatawag din po natin yung mga network na hindi sumusunod. Sapat so, mm -mm. kailangan po silang sumunod dito. Apo. Mm -mm. Opo, ano pong ginagawa nila para magawa po nila itong magawa po sila mga programa? Uh, kami po, meron din kami nag, through our ano, grant system, nagbibigay po kami ng mga grants, tinutulungan namin sila na mag produce din ng mga ilang palabas, yung mga independent producers na mag-produce ng mga palabas na pambata. And then, kung wala silang avenue for uh, broadcast, uh, tinutulungan namin silang lumapit sa mga TV networks na, na sinasight namin yung 15% policy na yon para hindi na rin sila i-charge ng malaki ng mga TV networks. Kasi ang laki ho nung, kunwari, mga independent producers, magpapasok sila ng kanilang mga TV pa uh, kumbaga independent uh, productions ay papasok sa TV, medyo ma malaki yung hinihingi usually ng TV network. Eh. But uh, with a 15% na policy na meron tayo, parang nagiging uh, mas ano sila, mas uh, uh, kom karang compliant or nagiging uh, maluwag sila na papasukin ito. Po, uh, 
Tanong ko po, yung 15%, di ba po sa buong airtime, buong ano nila yun? Buong airtime. Oo. May computation po yun eh. Kung may lumalabas hours, po, ay ilang oras po yun? Kung halimbawa po yung airtime ng isang network is 24 hours, parang ang total uh, airtime dapat na child-friendly, yung palabas nila 3.6 hours. Oh, okay, ano oras po yun? Ano oras po bumabagsak yun? Uh, pero kasi nag, nag, nagtakda rin kami ng uh, child viewing hours kasi ang, ang takot namin, baka ang gawin ng mga network para lang makakumply, magpalabas sila pero madaling araw nila ipalabas or hari. Kaya ko naman yun. So wala nang manunod, hindi Pambira, po. Pambihira ba? No? Sino yan? Sabihin mo sa akin kung sino yan. Pero pa, tunog na yung bata nun. Kaya nga, Senator. Sabi namin. Kung nandun na yung mga gumagawa na ng bata. Pambihira, <laughs> o. Kaya ang kaya para ma-protect ma- ma- namin yung yung uh, hindi mangyari yung ganito, nagtakda po kami ng child viewing hours, no? So sinet namin na uh, 8 to 11 AM at saka 2 to 4 PM ang uh, child viewing hours na nire-request namin sa mga network na ito po yung oras sana dito nyo ipalabas. Kasi Pwede niyo naman yung ipagdiinan yun boss, eh, di ba? Pwede niyo ipagdiinan yun sa kanila. Apo. Mm-hmm. O kasi yun ang dapat. Mm-hmm. Marami na pong big networks naman na very compliant at uh, maski sila nakikipag-meeting sa amin na sabi nila gusto naming maging compliant sa inyong ginagawa na 15% kasi sila din naman may mga anak may mga pamangkin di ba may mga uh, kaanak na bata Opo. Ah, isang papuntanong yung pong mga halimbawa kayo po ba ay halimbawa mga teleserye Mm-mm. mga teleserye Mm-mm. Kayo po ba nagbibigay din ng mga mungkahi dyan na dapat eh, yung content ng pangbata eh. Huwag naman masyadong madrama. Minsan may mga gulpihan <laughs> dyan ng bata eh. Ano ba ang ano nyo doon? Oo. Ano mer- ang... Opo. Meron po kaming uh, pinlab- pinablish na to. Yung uh, the child-friendly content standards. Ito okay po, po yung mga naglalaman ng mga uh, criteria o guidelines na susundin ng mga TV networks para sa kanilang produksyon. Ano, sa content ng gagawin nila. So meron po ritong tinatalakay halimbawa as to the theme, values, dialogue, nutrition, pati po yung, yung language, yung sex and nudity, violence, substance yan. abuse, gambling. Violence! Mm-hmm. Medyo madahan mo <laughs> yan. Oo. So lahat po yan, pati yung advertisement, nasabi namin kapag sana palabas na pambata, yung patalastas din, child-friendly din yung oh, masama okay. patalastas. Meron po ba kayong koordinasyon ng National Book Development board kasi nadinig ko kanina sinabi niyo ipatungkol sa mga IPs. Mm-hmm. Parang pareho po kayo ng adbukasya. Mm-hmm. Kayo po ba ay merong pag-uusap patungkol dito? Uh, wala pa pero pero we can do that. At saka ako din naman kasi nagsusulat ako ng mga children's books no. So madali for me na you know uh, to get in touch with the national book. O kasi magkapatid yan ang libro at ang palabas. Kaya nga may animation eh, di ba? Dino drawing tapos pinagagalaw. Magkapatid yan pati sa DepEd ma'am. Siguro ma'am obligahin mo na rin sila na makipag-coordinate sa <laughs> Use your power. Ah uh, po. Ah uh, isa pa po, isa pa po. Sa malalayong lugar, ayos pa ang TV. Di ba? Okay pa po ang TV. Kasi okay napatunayan po namin yan nung nakaraang eleksyon. Okay, okay pa po. Malakas talaga ang TV sa malalayong lugar. Pero pagdating po sa mga interested na ng internet, ng TikTok, yung mga ganyan, medyo bumaba po talaga. No? Kahit yung mga network, yan po yung kanilang reklamo. Na bumaba ang viewership nila. Nag-concentrate na sa... Uh, internet. Mm-hmm. Po. Ano po ang uh, hakbang nyo dyan? Kasi ang internet, libre yan, boss. Uh, mm-hmm. Libre yan. Meron po ba kayong web? Ang, ang ano po, uh, Senator, yung aming sakop is the mga free-to-air TV networks. So. Hindi nyo po sakop ang social media? Uh, hindi, hindi, pa ho, hindi ho kasama dun sa sakop. Kaya siguro yung halimbawa nagkaroon ng, ng amendment from NCCT to NCCM, National Council for Children's Media, baka doon na po pwedeng masakop. Sa ngayon kasi television lang po yung coverage. Sinasabi sa, hindi sinabi yung all media. Hindi po all media kasi nung kinreate yung batas 1997. Wala pa. Oh, wala pa. Uh, dapat pa magbigay po kayo sa amin ng inyong legislative ano, agenda. Oo oh, nga po eh. Para, kasi andun po ang labanan. Oo oh, nga. Kasi oh, pagdating po sa uh, internet, walang censorship dyan boss. 
Mm-hmm. Medyo diyan po tayo nagkaka problema sa ngayon. Mm-hmm. Opo. Ah, uh, ipapasa ko na po kay uh, Chairman. Maraming salamat po. Okay. Salam, maraming salamat po. At saka siguro gusto kong idagdag yung ginagawa naming dialogue with content creators. So iniipon po namin yung mga uh, mga writers, producers, directors ng mga different TV networks. Tapos meron kaming talakayan na nagaganap. Tapos uh, do doon sa mga talakaya na yon na sasabi namin na pwede bang kunwari i-promote nyo yung uh, culture of reading sa inyong mga teleserye kung sana may makikitang bata doon na nag- ha- may hawak na libro nagbabasa or yung mga mga pangkulturang uh, yung yung ganun po may, Buta, ay, yung ganito po ka. gagawin natin makikipag-coordinate po tayo kay chairman para maging bisita po namin kayo sa committee namin sa public information mm-hmm. para maipatawag din po natin yung mga network at doon in aid of legislation yes. makausap po sila okay so, po, senators Robin may gusto lang pong idagdag yung ah, meron pa rin okay. sa akin ba po yan o kay chairman na sa inyo po ah, sa akin na okay. 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 magandang hapon po senator magandang hapon po Opo. senator Win and uh, senators tama po yung sinabi nyo uh, on your honor uh, senator Robin yun hong children's books po uh, naka-attend po kami recently ng conference na ang ipinopromote na po globally ay para safe na child-friendly TV programs ang maipalabas sa television ay galing na po sa mga children's books. Yun na po yung uh, sa ibang mga bansa, doon na po galing yung... Con- first world. Sa first world po. Ganyan na sa first world. Na po. Singapore, maganyan na po. Opo. So sana po ay uh, madala po at uh, namin sa mga content creators, sa mga TV stations, ito po ay gagawin namin ng, ng programa, proyekto para maipresent sa kanila. At napakarami pong children's books authors na pwede nilang i-translate to child-friendly TV programs. Opo, yung iba nga po kumukuha pa sila ng mga personality, mga sikat na ano, sila yung nagbabasa-basa. Opo, maganda po. Opo, uh, na, ano po yan. Maganda po yan. Ibitahin po namin kayo sa public information. Magtulungan po kami ni... Magkasama din po kami doon ni Chairman. Opa, maraming salamat po. Yes, Your Honor, salamat po. Thank, Thank you. Po. Thank you, Senator uh, uh, Robin. And uh, first, first I want to what Senator Robin mentioned is uh, the same with the books, no? Kasi iba na mundo ngayon eh. And uh, I heard earlier, um, Dr. Luis, that uh, you intend to uh, change the name to from television to media to reflect the changing habits of content consumption. No, of uh, the times. Uh, we're, we're open to that. I think as a matter of uh, I think as a matter of um, being more dynamic, uh, agencies should really take note of the changing times. Eh? And uh, f- same with the National Book Council and also with the uh, Children Television Council. Um, we're here to uh, help you update your charter if need be. So that uh, it will reflect uh, how the world is functioning right now. Um, ako napansin ko sa mga bata, especially sa urban areas, parang bihira na rin manood ng TV. Eh. Karamihan, YouTube, TikTok, no? TikTok, social media. I know this is much more complex, pero let's take that into consideration. No? Um, so that uh, uh, the agencies can respond better. No? So we're, we're open to that. And later on, uh, hindi this time, but later on, we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll go back to um, National Academy of Sports. Uh, Professor Joe Reyes, who's with us Hello? online. Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, good, good. Go ahead, Professor Reyes. Um, Chairman, um, Senator Win Gachalian and uh, our esteemed um, Senators um, uh, Bip and Dep and Michels, uh, um, good afternoon to everyone. It is my honor to present to this distinguished audience a brief overview report on the National Academy of Sports. Um, NAS as an institution 
as a workplace is built upon a robust uh, values campaign that defines our very core, our DNA. And the same campaign spans over to the classroom by championing, by championing nationalism, achievement, and solidarity to our student athletes. In the process, this creates and ensures a solid partnership between the home and the school. Can I have the next slide, please? For just for the information, it's just a quick uh, overview of this of our organization. NAS is governed by board of trustees, which is uh, comprised, of course, uh, by the DepEd secretary as a chairperson, PSC as the vice chairperson. Uh, yours truly, the NAS uh, Executive Director, POC President, the CHED Chairperson, and two private uh, representatives as members. And uh, our organization is comprised of nine divisions. Next slide, please. The NAS uh, Roadmap uh, Strategic Direction was finalized and approved last year. And with this, the NAS uh, 2020 to 2030 strategic plan has been expanded and contextualized into the NAS vision, mission, core values, into strategic goals and strategic objectives. Next slide, please. In its totality, NAS aims to become a channel, the channel for access to quality and enhanced education and high quality sports training program in world-class facilities, which shall enable student athletes to excel in their respective sports as a means to pursue their chosen education and profession. Next slide. With a given background of NAS as an organization, it is likewise my honor to present the operational highlights of the academy that constitute major milestones and achievements. Next slide, please. For our inaugural school year 2021-2022, we have educated and trained a total of 63 student athletes. These are actually our pioneer and cohort um, students. This was mainly due to the formulation and establishment of a very comprehensive admission policy and complementing procedures entitled the NAS Annual Search of Competent, Exceptional, Notable, and Talented Student Athlete Scholars, or the nascent SAS. Nascent SAS, as the Academy's proprietary admission policy, is designed to conduct talent identification among aspiring student athletes from all sectors of society including indigenous people, persons with disabilities, and other marginalized sectors. And as mentioned by our mother agency, we, uh, we advocate uh, inclusive education. Nissan SAS was promoted from April until September of last year. And through, through sports associations, uh, through the help of our DepEd regional offices and social media platforms. NAS has identified um, eight focus sports for now. Uh, these are aquatics, badminton, gymnastics, judo, table tennis, taekwondo, and weightlifting, which are all Olympic sports. And we have identified the distribution of students in these as we hope to strengthen our talent search and identification through the state-of-the-art data management system and research. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. That athletes has been. Hello. 
the Department of Education and other stakeholders in the education and sports sectors. The framework lends a unique approach with the following, a sports integrated curriculum, which utilizes practical applications in sports into the subjects to better promote appreciation of this knowledge. An athletic uh, friendly environment where schedules and activities of academics complement the training needs of our student athletes. Uh, Professor ensure... Reyes? Yes? Uh, you're coming in very choppy. Uh -huh. Am I okay now, Senator Wynn? Hello. Hello. Hello, Kat. Naputol. Hello? Yeah, naputol ba ako? No, talaga. Talaga. Teka nga. Na Nakakainis yung internet ko, ha? Ah, um, ganyan.
may pagmamalaki nila na sila po ay nakapagtapos ng extension program. At uh, unti-unti po namin uh, ibabahagi ito sa mga iba't ibang bayan na karatig at uh, kung hihilingin po ng ibang mga bayan sa ibang probinsya ay uh, gagawin po namin ito. Ngayon po pagdating po sa uh, preparasyon para sa online classes, ay ginawa po namin noong Abril ang isang araw sa Makiling, pinakit po namin ang grade 7, 8, and 9 para magkaroon sila ng uh, kahit papano ay isang bonding na activity doon po sa Makiling. At nagkaroon po kami ng one-week bubble kung saan ang mga uh, magsisipagtapos ay makakapaggawa ng kanilang mga video uh, presentation nila sa kanilang mga uh, recitals, mga exhibit, at umakit po sila ng isang linggo. Kaya na, na subukan na po namin ang face-to-face. -face. Uh, ito po ang dry run na naganap na po. Hindi po siya... Uh, uh, talagang uh, yung may normal na klase ngunit nag-concentrate po sila sa kanya mga art disciplines. At naganap na rin po ang face-to-face -face na graduation at moving up. Uh, ngunit po nilimitahan namin ang audience. Ang pinagan po namin ay dalawang magulang lang at siguro yung mga maliliit na bata. So nagkaroon na po ng ganong uh, preparasyon para sa ating uh, pag-akyat sa makiling. Plans and programs, uh, itong pong staff modification ay uh, um, inihingan pa namin ng approval to sa DepEd 13 na creation ng non-teaching personnel, ngunit uh, ito po ngayon ay nasa DBM. Uh, lima na reclassification, ngunit ito po ay hindi naaprubahan. At tatlong conversion, house parents registrar ay naaprubahan po noong June 2022. Ngayon po ang aming nihiling sa, sa Department of Budget and Management ay uh, isa pang psychometrician at dalawang nurses. Uh, mamaya po bibigay ko po mas detalyadong uh, balita patungkol dito. At ang aming uh, EO, Executive Order 420, ay sana po ay ma-accommodate ang mga um, kinakailangang mga posisyon para sa PHSA. Ngayon po, nung nakaraang linggo ay uh, kahit online ay nakagawa na po kami ng orientation para sa mga magulang at mga estudyante. So uh, sila po ay pinaghahandaan na ang pag-akyat sa, sa aming uh, eskwalahan. Ngunit sinabayan din po namin ito ng is isang serya ng mga seminar on safe spaces uh, dahil po ito ay natataon sa mga isyong ating pag-uusapan maya, maya po. Opening of classes po natin August 30 hanggang June 30, 2023. Ang ating pong plano ay blended learning mode. Aakit po ang grade 7, 8, and 9 face-to-face -face from August 30 to September 30. Tapos alternate po, grade 10, 11, 12 from August, uh, October 3 to, to 28, 2022. Hindi mo namin pagsasabayan lahat dahil ang Ara, ang rekomendasyon po ng NBI ay tatluhan lang sa isang kwarto. At uh, para din po sa ating health protocols. Uh, ngayon po, uh, issues and concerns, mabilisan lang po ito, staff modica modifications, 13 additional non-teaching staff for 2023. Tapos ito pong hinihiling namin, uh, magkaroon po ng uh, additional nurses at uh, psychometrician para maka-assiste sa ating uh, guidance counselor. Ngayon po, uh, dahil uh, naging mainit <laughs> sa balita ang PHSA uh, noong mga nakaraang buwan, uh, itong uh, mga aligasyon po na inyo pong naririnig sa uh, social media, lalong dano na po. So, ang ating pong statement po ay uh, ilabas po namin at uh, uh, pinapasalamatin po namin ng DepEd through uh, USEC ANS at actually ang ating Vice President uh, Sara Duterte na humingi ng tulong sa NBI para investigahan ang mga aligasyon at uh, meron na po kaming inulunsad na uh, hotline para sa mga alumni na meron mga reklamo, may mga complaints at doon po sila uh, maaring sumulat at uh, tutulungan din po sila ng National Bureau of Investigation kung sila po ay uh, interesadong maghain uh, ng mga kaso po. Pero po on our part, kasi ang magagawa lang po natin ay looking forward po tayo ang mga reforms 
sa ating eskwalahan dahil po tayo po ay uh, bukod sa meron ng basic education, meron din tayong arts curriculum, tapos boarding school pa tayo. So, napaka-stricto po ngayon ang ating administrasyon pagdating sa curfew hours, pagdating po sa out-of-campus activities, kailangan po ng waiver mula sa magulang, at kung ito po ay maprobahan ay meron pong school chaperone na kasama. Tapos meron po tayong uh, nililimitan na hanggang tatlo lang sa isang kwarto sa, sa dormitory as recommended by the NBI. Tapos po ang ating dormitory setup, hiwalay po ang babae. Tapos ang mga lalaki po ay sa ibang campus. At ang kanilang magiging mga chaperone din sa mga babae ay babae lang at sa mga lalaki ay mga lalaki lang. At sunod-sunod po ang ating mga uh, seminars pagdating po sa Safe Spaces Act at saka uh, Child Protection at uh, tutulungan din po kami ng uh, Child Protection Unit ng DepEd. At uh, doon po sa mga lumalapit na mga alumni ay meron po kaming uh, hiniling ng mga parents at saka mga alumni na mag-sponsor po ng psychosocial counseling sa mga uh, nais uh, lumapit at may pangangailangan po nito. Um, ito po ang uh, latest na maibibigay natin. Medyo humuhupa na po ang uh, sitwasyon at uh, patuloy naman po ang ating investigation po. Uh, so lahat po yan, mga, pati mga legal mga implications po ay kinukonsulta po namin sa DepEd, sa Office of the Solicitor General at uh, ang NBI din po ay tumutulong po sa amin. So if you have any other questions po, uh, welcome po tayong sumagot. Salamat po. Magandang araw sa lahat. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Juniga. And I uh, would like to um, again open the floor for questions. And since uh, Senator Padilla Sears also, like I said, he's a member of the broadcasting industry, uh, I think uh, it's better for him to start off with the questions. Uh, mabuhay po. Salamat po, Chairman. Uh, Professor Juniga. Yan. Tama po ba? Opo. Uh, batid naman po natin, ano? Na ang Pilipino talaga, pagdating sa arts, sa talino, sa sining, tayo po talaga eh, Umaangat. Tayo kilala dyan. Noon pa, panahon pa, nila Felix Hidalgo, nila Antonio Luna, yan ho, ano, at yung mga matatanda nating mga artista, eh, nananalo na sa mga international uh, acting awards, mga directing, lahat po yan. Ang gusto ko lamang pong puntahan ng aking usa, ng aking pong ano, ano, yung po yung bang, bang paaralan, paaralan, paaralan na, na ito pong, pong uh, pinag-uusapan pinag natin, natin, magmula, magmula po, po ba nung itinatag dito, dito eh, eh, ito po ba, ito eh, po ba eh, umaangat ang, ang antas, antas nito? nito. Uh, in the yung sense, level po niya, niya yung, 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 inyo yung inyo pong curriculum, yung inyo pong uh, tumataas, tumataas po ba? Opo, opo. Uh, pag sinabi niyo pong tumataas, tumataas sumasabay, sumasabay po kayo sa, sa first, world, first world, sa kanilang pagdating po ng arts. arts. Uh, Mr. Chair at saka uh, Honorable uh, Senator, opo. Ang ating pong curriculum ay, ay uh, hanggang, uh, hanggang uh, grade, uh, grade 12, 12 po, uh, 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 dapat tayo ng K-12. K to 12. Uh, ngayon, uh, po, ngayon po, ang arts naman arts po ay napaka-diverse. Napaka Meron po tayong, po tayong uh, uh, may mga uh, art, uh, art disciplines tayo, tayo na, na uh, um, yung traditional. Halimbawa sa, sa, sa pagtugtog ng instrumento, pagsayaw ng balay. Ngunit meron din po tayong mas indigenous tulad ng mga folk dance. At yung atyat, meron din po theater arts po tayo. So nakikipagsabayan po tayo sa... Wala po akong... Nagmagawa po kayo ng mga sarili ng stage play. Meron po ba kayong sarili na lumalabas halimbawa sa mga CCP, yung ganyan? Uh, 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 yes po, uh, uh, Senator. Uh, uh, Ang ating mga estudyante po ay, ay, ay lalo na nung, nung uh, pre-pandemic, pre 
ang kanila pong mga recital ay pinapalabas po sa CCP. Ngayon po, medyo batch up po sila, kaya ang kanila pong ginagawa ay mga performances pa lang. Ngunit sa graduates po natin, ang isang pinakatanyag na playwright o manudulat ng dula ay si Nick Pichai. Siya po ay isang pa lang ka-award. So marami po tayong mga gantong mga ano. Meron po tayong mga filmmakers tulad ni nila Jaja Arumpak, mga ganun po ang pangalan po nila. So masasabi niyo po na world class itong ating paaralan. Opo, malami po ang produto. Tulad po ni Raymond Red, isang premiado sa Cannes Film Festival po, ay galing din po sa Filipino Support the Arts po. Meron po po akong isang mahalaga tanong. At kayo lamang po ang makapagsusulat na makakasagot nito. Meron po tayo kasi sa, sa amin po, ano? Kasi makikisa amin na rin po ako. Meron po tayong uh, problema pagdating sa mga artist. Nagiging masyadong uh, affiliated sa kaliwa. Yun po ang uh, isang nakikita nating problema. Hindi po ba kayo napasok na ng uh, kaisipan ng kaliwa? Uh, actually, uh, <laughs> wala po ba kayong problema doon? Ay, kami po ay exposed sa lahat ng mga uh, ideolohiya. So, meron, pong, meron po kami mga ganun po. Sa... Ano po ang hakbang po ninyo sa mga uh, estudyante po ninyo? na napupunta dito. Sa, siyempre, yan po eh, madalas po itong uh, concern, ano, na sinasabi ng ating mga kababayan, kung sino yung mga scholar, sila pa yung lumalaban sa gobyerno. Opo. At karamihan ng mga namumuno pa dito ay yung mga nasa artist side. Opo. Ano po ang hakbang po natin dito na wag naman wag naman sa ganun mapunta? Sayang kasi ang tamang kaisipan ay yung manalo tayo sa abroad, sa mga paligsahan katulad ng ginawa nila Felix uh, Resurrection, nila Juan Luna. Nanalo tayo at sa pamamagitan noong uh, kanilang talino at kagalingan, nakilala ang Pilipinas. Hindi po kailanman pa tayo nakilala dahil sa violence. Ano, ano po ang hakbang po ninyo? Um, ang amin pong naiisip sa ngayon, ha, kasi ang uh, aming tanging uh, magagawa bilang eskwalahan ay sa mga programa. Na, for example, uh, mas child-friendly na material at uh, balansado na uh, presentasyon ng mga ideolohiya. Um, at siguro, pagdating naman dito ay uh, uh, makikipagkonsulta po kami sa tulad din nyo or sa mga ibang uh, may expertise po pagdating sa mga ganitong bagay. Po. Oh, pero hindi naman po ini-encourage. Kasi <laughs> may mga paaralan po gumagawa ng mga play na labag sa gobyerno. Opo. Actually, ako nga ay mismo nagsasabi na ang dapat na atmosphere sa ating paaralan ay uh, politically neutral. Yan. Balance Yan po ang po ang gusto po. ko madinig. Opo. Maasahan uh, niyo po sa akin pong uh, administrasyon. Ho. Opo. Ngunit po, madaming uh, ayaw sa ganoong statement ko. Uh, ngunit ito po ay at, yung pong uh, pinaghihirapan na magkaroon ng gantong atmosphere po sa ating eskwalahan. Opo. Opo. Ang pagyamanin po natin ay yung kanilang talento. Yung po ang dapat natin, pag hindi po yung uh, rebelyon o pakikipaglaban sa gobyerno. Maraming salamat po, okay. Professor. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Senator uh, Padilla, for those uh, very important questions. Uh, Dr. Siniga, uh, sundan ko po yung inyong update kanina on the uh, controversy that came out. No? And uh, it's really uh, heartbreaking and at the same time, uh, I felt a lot of anger no, on the news reports because, number one, it happened in a government facility. And then number two, the, uh, the description being used on uh, the news report is um, culture of abuse that produced a generation of abused students. No? So... In other words, it, it didn't uh, happen just one time or it didn't happen just overnight. 
it's a culture meaning it, it's been happening for a very very long time no? and uh, and it produced a generation of abused students so it, it, it means that it's not only one student or two no? but a generation meaning that's a lot of students and um, it's quite uh, no, it's quite um, uh, uh, concerning and also um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm very uh, concerned with uh, what's happening in the school uh, like I said it's a government school no? and it's so it's supposed to promote uh, the arts and it's supposed to uh, uh, inculcate in students discipline as well as uh, love for country and also respect for one another so um, I won't go into the history of this issue, but I just want to focus on, number one, uh, uh, an update on that particular case. And uh, meron na ba hong na demanda, na kulong? Because we cannot just leave it open and um, just being investigated, then the culture will not break. The only way we can break the culture is someone will be uh, responsible and someone will be put in jail if need be. You know? And um, the only way we can change the image of uh, uh, the school is if we, uh, if, we um, uh, if justice will prevail. You know? so, so my first question is, uh, ano na po ang update dito sa kasong to? Sino ba ang mga mananagot? Nanagot na ba ho sila? And then what are the safeguards no, that you have put in place uh, in order for this to stop and not repeat? Because we don't want the PSA to be known as the Philippine High School for Culture of Abuse. No, it's not... Uh, uh, hindi ho maganda, lalo na mga high school students ho to eh. No? At kami ho mananagot because kanina nga si Senator Padilla has been looking at the budget. We are the ones who are allocating the budget. No? So kami ho ang mananagot sa taong bayan because we're representatives of the people. So just give us a, a quick update and uh, um, uh, just get, let us know kung uh, justice have been served. And um, what are the safeguards that you have implemented? Yes, po. thank you for Mr. Chair. Uh, ako po ay uh, naitalaga noong August 2019 lang. At ang mga aligasyon na to ay lumabas uh, recently lang. So ang ating pong uh, pinapakinggan, ang ating mga alumni na may simpatya po tayo para sa kanila. Ngayon, dahil po uh, kamakaidan lang po nire-raise ang mga complaints na ito at tapos sa social media pa, ay uh, nag-uumpisa pa lang po yung kakumpisa pa lang po ng investigation. So meron po tayong committee on decorum and investigation para uh, magkaroon po ng uh, investigation po sa uh, ating pong uh, kaso na ito. At ito po ay uh, magiging administrative case lang po. Ngayon isa isa po 'yan. Ngayon yung yung iba pong ano, yung ibang allegation po, meron po tayong uh, uh, allegation na uh, concerning isang uh, teacher na uh, namatay na po siya. So, uh, wala na po siya, uh, namatay po siya last year. So, ayun po ay uh, kinunsulta namin sa NBI na uh, uh, sila po itutulong po kung meron pong maghain sa kanila, sa kanila po. Ngayon, yung iba po, karamihan sa social media lang po nagkakwento, uh, nag, uh, ini-encourage po namin sila na lumapit para uh, magkaroon tayo ng uh, tamang proseso para pakinggan natin ito. So, unfortunately po, ang nangyari po dito ay naging uh, trial by media na. So, para, para natin maging, para maging malinis ang ating uh, proseso po ay idaan sana natin sa, sa tamang paraan, sa tamang forum. At uh, ito po ang ini-encourage po natin. And then at the same time, uh, kung meron po mga lalapit na magsasabi na victims po sila, ay gumawa po tayo ng uh, intervention, psychosocial intervention para sa kanila. Ngayon, yung, safe, yung, ano po, yung safeguards po na ginagawa natin ay 
na-implement po natin uh, matagal na dahil panahon naman ng pandemya. So, uh, ang mga estudyante ay nasa bahay nila at ngayon pa lang sila aakyat. Pero pag aakyat nila, mas stricto na tayo doon nga sa nabanggit ko, curfew hours. Pagdating po sa yung ating bantay system ng mga house parents na magbabantay sa kanila. Separate na um, facilities for female and, and male students. Meron po tayong uh, mga roving guards na uh, 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 to make sure na ang mga sudyante po ay na talagang nasa mga uh, dormitories nila. Tapos po ang out-of-campus activities, dito po ang maaaring magkaroon ng problema ay kailangan pre-approved at may waiver ng mga magulang at meron po ng uh, chaperone mula sa eskwalahan at ini-encourage po natin ang mga parents, mismong mga magulang na sumama sa mga out-of-campus activities para nakikita rin nila na uh, ligtas ang mga kabataan po. Uh, unfortunately po, uh, ang PHSA po ay nasa 45 years na. So, ang interpretasyon po nito ay uh, napakalabak na po. Ang dami na pong mga, mga batches, ang dami na pong mga alumni na, na nasa kanilang mga profesyon at mga karamihan po ay world-class artists po na lumalabas sa eskwalahang ito. So, hindi naman natin mababantayan lahat ng mga batches na dumadaan. And for me, ay mag-graduate po of PHSA, hindi ko na-experience yung gantong kultura. So, maaring yung culture of abuse na sinasabi ay isang pananaw po ng sumulat na yon. Ayun po. Right now po, nasa ang status ng case and investigation is with, there's no case, no? Just investigation? Uh, meron po tayong ano, yung uh, uh, Committee on Decorum and Investigation po. Doon, meron po doon. That internal niyo yun? Yes, internal. And Ngayon, there's also an NBI yes. uh, investigation right ang now? Ang update po ng NBI ay wala pong nag-formal complaint sa NBI. Yeah, but they can all, that they can still investigate. Opo. Uh -oh. Opo. So, so lahat po yan, I think tinawagan ng NBI yung mga ano, uh, yung mga may mga uh, complaints. Uh, actually, hiningi sa amin yon. So sila nag-follow nag up ng mga lahat ng mga yan. Not, even, uh, not only the NBI but also the local police po. Uh, yung mga, mga nag-post saka nag-complain, nagbigay ng statements? Ayun po, tinawag, hinonta po yun, hindi po lahat sumagot. Pero may sumagot? Meron, meron po yatang ilan, pero hindi raw, hindi, hindi mag-file. Hindi. Tinatanong ni Senator Padilla kung yung namatay, natural or was it a natural death? Uh, well, <laughs> siguro po uh, pag-usapan na lang po natin pagkatapos ito. Uh, okay, I guess it's not. No? Kasi ho may... Uh, or foul play. Uh, ano controversial ba? ho yung ano. Yung pagkamanay niya. Wow, na-detect mo ka agad ah. Hindi ko nga na-detect yun eh. No? Ba talaga pag nasa industriya, no? mabilis yung isip eh. Hindi ko nga na-detect yun eh. Uh, well, I, I won't go into the details of the case. No? Uh, that will take a lot of time. But, uh, we'll do that on a separate hearing. But then again nga, no? every time, uh, it's not only me, it's not only Senator Padilla, but when the time comes, especially during budget season, this will crop up again. Yes po, opo. No? And uh, we're all answerable to the people. You know? We only work for the state. So uh, on a later, or a later date, we'll, we'll uh, ask for more information. But most important to, for now is to give us a detailed action plan on how to prevent this from happening anymore. Yes, we should be able to assure the students and the parents that uh, the Philippine High School for Arts have implemented safeguards. You know? And us, kami mismo, uh, we're confident that those safeguards will prevent from yes, these things from happening. Of course, I won't go into whether totoo yun, hindi totoo. Uh -huh. uh, we'll leave it to the NBI for now. But uh, what's important is moving forward no, to prevent it. Yes, may I add, uh, Mr. Chair, um, katatapos lang po namin na nabanggit ko, yung series of uh, seminar on, uh, kasi po itong Safe Spaces Act na bago, 2019 lang, na, na uh, promulgate, so, ginawa po namin ay uh, kasama po ang mga parents sa seminar ito para lahat ng mga estudyante ay aware sa mga gantong mga uh, pangyayari at anong mga penalties. At ganun po, gumawa kami ng uh, sarili naming uh, uh, on-site seminar uh, para sa mga empleyado. Uh, so, uh, magkakaroon po ng follow-up yan taon-taon at magiging klaro din po sa mga estudyante anong mga polisiyo natin pag meron po mga mga complaints sa mangyayari po. 
So um, unfortunately, uh, parang blessing in disguise and uh, it's a time for uh, yung bang uh, reiterating yung mga policies natin at uh, kung ano po ang mga reforms na sa tulong po ng DepEd ng ating pong Child Protection uh, Unit at ng NBI po ay makakamit po natin ito. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Siniga, for that. Just submit to us uh, a comprehensive um, uh, action plan yes, on, uh, uh, on your safeguards and also on uh, uh, preventing this from happening again. Yes, yes po, Mr. Okay. Chair. And then, uh, again, for the last time, the Philippine High School for... Uh, Philippine Academy of Sports. Uh, I think we're having problems with the connection, but... Uh, for the last time, um, Executive Director um, Joy, uh, Joy Reyes. Yeah, hi, hello, uh, yeah. Senator. Yes, go ahead, uh, ED. Yes. Uh, you can just yeah. cut and go straight to your uh, plans and programs uh, because the okay. connection is quite uh, unstable. Yeah, uh, apologies for the inconvenience, uh, Senator, uh, Senator Wynn, but I'd like to continue my presentation. Uh, you know, as uh, we have uh, 60, 63 pioneer students already and have uh, placed under the NAS curriculum. Uh, with the, of course, with the assistance of the DepEd and other stakeholders in the education and sports sectors, uh, the framework uh, lends a unique approach with the following, no, which is a sports integrated curriculum which utilizes uh, practical applications in sports into subjects to better promote appreciation of this knowledge. And, or, and uh, the athlete-friendly environment where the schedules and activities of our academic complement the training needs of our student athletes to ensure that both aspects are equally prioritized and none is bound to be uh, compromised. And also an application of the principle of flexible learning. Can I have the next slide, please? We have a uh, support services that caters to the, you know, to to, to the guidance and mental, um, yung aming uh, support sa aming mga estudyante uh, uh, with, with this transition, 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 program, transition program that aims to equip our, our students with the basic and foundation and skills for independent living once the NAS campus opens and face-to-face -face -face classes, classes also resume. So modules are carefully uh, selected to address the needs of our students, which uh, issue containing specific topics on nutrition. So yeah, and, uh, sports nutrition is very, very critical in our, in our, um, in our service to them. Uh, also the health and medical care, uh, mental health and performance with, um, with uh, worksheets that would encourage independent learning and active participation of the parents. We involve even the parents in our uh, in our in our uh, in uh, in our programs, no, just to make sure that they're also engaged with with their kids, and uh, the support services division um, uh, has health uh, promotion and maintenance programs as well, and activities for students uh, such as uh, lectures and webinars, health monitoring and appraisal, online medical consultation, nutritional services, including uh, lectures and webinars, no, um, so. We also give guidance and counseling services, which are likewise available for all student athletes. So with the Home to NAS uh, transition program, students are being prepared to understand more about the discipline and independence in terms of self-care and housekeeping. Um, can we have the next slide? The NAS training model, as developed and implemented by our Sports Science Training and Athletics uh, Athlete, uh, Athlete Services Division, ensures that the athletic development follows its maturation level, utilizing the principle of evidence-based practice. So this division also conducted a focus group discussion on online fitness and sports training delivery to ensure the remote sports train that, that the sports training is responsive to the needs of our athletes based on the best practices experienced by the industry leaders. So um, I'm, I'm proud to say that we are uh, we have a good you know profile of coaches, uh, trainers, and mentors are all qualified to help ensure that the success of our athletes during their stay their stay in NAS. Next slide, please. 
the successful synergy of the most uh, suitable academic framework, sports training program, and support services has resulted in impressive performances from our student athlete, athletes as they competed in various events, both in local and international. So can, can I have the next slide? Our student athletes deserve all the credit and accolades for the, all the hard, hard work and dedication in both academics and training. Their achievements are, the, are our testament of the synergistic collaboration and full partnership between the home and the school. In fact, uh, as of this uh, as of this moment, uh, Senator Wynne no? and 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 and, uh, and the rest who are listening, um, um, out of the five uh, five students, no, um, na na pasama ngayon sa who will be competing in the world in the Asian World Taekwondo Championships. Four of them came from our new batch of students now, no, uh, for 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 the school year 2022 to 2023. So I'm I'm just so happy to announce this to you that even our you know yung mga incoming students talagang uh, tama yung aming naging uh, proseso pag you know when when we admit them, as we really um, had the tedious uh, qualification standards of our students. So we are very happy to 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 add on this on on my updates that four of our new new students are being selected now in the national team to compete for the taekwondo championships next week in fact no next week in vietnam um next slide please as means to enhance the operations and service delivery of our of the school benchmarking activities both here and abroad have been completed as this offered a glimpse into the best practices of the school and other organizations that run parallel to our offerings. International linkages and partnerships have likewise been initiated to help propel future collaborations. Next slide, please. For infrastructure, um, the NAS Ad Hoc Committee drafted the NAS System Main Campus Site Development Plan as approved by the NAS Board of, Board of Trustees uh, uh, last December of 2020. So this was sent to BCDA for implementation with the same office acting as our procuring agency. Next slide. Phase one includes the academic and administration building and the multipurpose gymnasium. So the current, the current progress of the infra of phase one as we speak is at 98% completion. So ito na po, yung nakikita nyo ngayon sa screen, this is already the, the developments now in our in the NCC, in our NAS campus in Kappa Starlock. No? Um, next slide, please. Uh, I, th I think this is really worth mentioning that last, um, last June 14, uh, distinguished guests have been invited to the inspection as a preview of the NAS main campus in the new Clark City Kappa Starlock. In his speech, uh, former Pre President Rodrigo uh, Duterte commended NAS and all the government and private partners that contributed to the construction of this new and significant institution despite inherent limitations of the pandemic. And I would like to quote him of, of saying, this National Academy of Sports is envisioned to be a world-class facility that would serve in the forefront in our efforts to provide a conducive environment for the academic and sports training and character development of our young athletes. It is therefore my hope and maybe my prayer that the pioneer batch of student athletes become well-rounded Olympians and champions who will carry our flag in the international sports arena and inspire a deep sense of patriotism among Filipinos." Unquote. Next slide, please. NAS has uh, continuously engaged with private individuals and entities for sponsorship support to aid the academy in its, and, and its stakeholders, especially in its organizational stage. We are still in the budding stage. We are experiencing uh, a lot of birth pains, but these birth, birth pains we convert in, into opportunities moving forward. Next slide, please. In terms of enrollment, uh, I, I, I believe we have uh, submitted this also to our dear uh, chairman, uh, Senator Wynne, and we have just completed our second cycle of the admission process. 
And as we enter our second school year, this 2022-2023, we expect to welcome a total of 119 student athletes. So yan po, no? grade 7, we have uh, uh, 36 uh, students admitted uh, this school year. And then uh, for grade 8, we have um, 40, no, 30, 37, 37 grade 8 as our lateral entry. So we have a total of 83 students now in grade 8 with a total of 119 students uh, in NAS no, for two grade levels. Next slide. Our report, which reflects our journey so far, would not be without its own share of challenges. During the past year, NAS hasn't had enough organic personnel to form its bids and awards committee. To help address this challenge, NAS has, has signed a uh, memorandum of agreement uh, with the Department of Education for technical assistance and support for NAS procurement activities in 2021 and 2022. And under this agreement, the DepEd will be the procuring agent of NAS for 2022 until NAS is already capable of putting up its own uh, back. So, and uh, as everyone has been continuing to deal with the aftermath of the COVID-19 uh, era, there were limited sports events in both local and international level, which consequently limited the exposure of our student athletes to competition platforms. However, all these are bound to change as we slowly ease to the new normal and with the resumption of face-to-face -face learning. Next slide, please. Looking ahead into the horizon, NAS has forecast its plans to align with the fulfill corresponding sustainable development goals. Next slide, please. NAS futures thinking include additional investment in sports science research and applications, expansion of local and international partnerships, collaboration, and benchmarking activities. We also um, uh, would want to increase our focus sports, increase local and international competition, promotion and uh, inclusion of para-athletes in the program, expansion of the NAS system from other regions of the country, additional investment on the digitalization of, of the teaching and learning and sports training. With this in mind, um, NAS looks to respond to the call for sustainable development goals such as good health and well-being, quality education, industry, innovation and infrastructure, partnership for goals, among many others. Next slide, please. Mostly, NAS will invest in its people and in the synergistic relations that engineer these programs into fruition. I am much honored to be working alongside these men and women who possess the dedication to succeed, the passion to innovate, and the heart to serve. Next slide, please. On behalf of the entire NAS family, I thank you for your time and, and your attention. Apologies for the inconvenience because of, of my, in, my connection uh, uh, problems. Yours in nationalism, achievement, and solidarity. Magandang araw muli sa inyong lahat. Uh, maayong hapon. Mabuhay ang Senadong Pilipino. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you, Edie Joy. Uh, I don't have any any questions because I'm always there in NAS. In fact, <laughs> during the uh, last um, uh, formal opening by... Uh, inspection. Informal inspection by former President... Uh, yeah. Uh, Duterte, I was there uh, to to join him. So, and Center Padillas also has no questions. Also, so with that, we finish all the attached agencies. Agencies, and uh, my last comment, um, Yusek uh, Densing, is on that. I heard earlier that uh, you mentioned about trifocalization. No, and uh, again, I won't comment into this. Uh, um, uh, this concept, but I just want you to um, take a look um, because uh, undoing trifocalization will take time, and I think it will also we will also encounter a lot of emotions. 
and uh, the administrative activities of undoing it will really be complicated. No? So, as a matter of recogni recognizing the problems of coordination, we actually enacted a new law, the Excellence in Teacher Education Law. Uh, the Excellence in Teacher Education Law gave DepEd a lot of powers in so far as teacher curriculum in pre-service level. And uh, the IRR has not yet been promulgated and uh, would like to, again, um, uh, follow up to the department, the promulgation of this IRR, uh, because this IRR uh, will operationalize the law and at the same time uh, put harmony in the Teacher Education Council and, and make it more effective. Right now, it's, uh, it's there, but it's not so uh, active. No? So with this law, it will make it active. Uh, DepEd, as a chairman, will be empowered to have a lot of voice in the pre-service side. And uh, this is actually one of the reforms that we pushed during the 18th Congress. I uh, would like to encourage the DepEd to take a look at this law and and hopefully in the next few months promulgate the IRR because this is actually uh, a faster mode of uh, putting the three big agencies of education together. You know? So with that, um, Senator Padilla, thank you very much for joining the committee since 10 a.m. Uh, amoy Clorox na tayo. Actually, wala nang panlasa in bibig ko dahil sa Clorox. You know? But uh, thank you. Thank you very much for joining this committee. And I would like to thank uh, Yusek Densing, Yusek Sevilla, uh, Yusek Chan, uh, si Director uh, Masapol, and si Yusek uh, Escobedo, and the rest of the DepEd agencies. Uh, thank you very much for physically joining us. Uh, it has been a very fruitful afternoon, and uh, this is not going to be the last, of course. Uh, this is only the beginning of uh, the 19th Congress, and we will have uh, many more uh, discussions later on, specifically on your mandates and other issues. So maraming maraming salamat po. This uh, hearing is uh, hereby adjourned.